before his death. Now, let me bring the hadith and then I'm going to also show you why hadith dogmatism is problematic and pro I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs> Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Today as you see our topic is about the death of Muhammad and who killed Muhammad. First of all disclaimer it's not me. I wasn't there because you never know. The Muslim they might accuse you of anything. <clears throat> Secondly it is not uh, America and this time, according to the story, it was a Jew. You know, the Mohammedan, they claim anything happened to them, they blame the Jews always. You know, if, if a guy, he went to the bedroom, he could not do boom, boom, he will blame the Jew, you know. If there is no electricity in their houses, they blame the Jew. Uh, if, uh, you know, if a guy, uh, his wife, uh, he married a woman, she thought she is something because she is wearing burqa when he took the... The curtain from her face then he find a uh, uh, half man half women he will blame the jews this is very normal behavior but this is story here is different in this story they can really blame the jews so let us make it clear however because this story <clears throat> uh, bring a lot of an embarrassment to the muhammadan a lot of an embarrassment some of those who they try to defend and they find their religion is full of embarrassment, always they try to oppose. If you remember before, <clears throat> we have this guy, his name uh, Abu Muhti Abu Layth, who could not accept that his God Allah is going to ejaculate and this is how he will reject resurrect people from death including his prophet and when the muslim they read their books they go crazy i don't blame them but you go crazy or not who care this is what your prophet said and this is what you have in your books allah will say now <laughs> i have to translate this so brace yourselves people <clears throat> Allah will send, there's a fluid from beneath the arsh which will ejaculate like the sperm of men. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, whoa. Isn't it amazing that Muhammadan, they are laughing at their own religion? Do you see what the internet is doing to Islam? 
If I am the one is laughing, the Muslim will be so upset. This is a Muslim. He is laughing at the stupidity of his prophet and the stupidity of his religion. His God is going to ejaculate, and this is how he will resurrect people from death. <clears throat> and Muhammad himself, he is going to be resurrected by the sperm of Allah. Oh, people, let me repeat, look at it for yourselves. Thumma yursilu Allahu ma'an. Allah will send down on earth, shower down on earth, fluid from beneath his arsh. So beneath his throne, there's a collection of fluid which is kamaniyir rijal, which is like the sperm of men. <laughs> this is going to shower down on the globe. And what's going to happen is this is going to then give birth to, uh, to once again life. So sperm, <laughs> so for that people, I had to, had to, yeah. so, <laughs> do you see how far this religion goes and do you see what happened to a human being who is a muslim who start thinking and look at the books behind him and the funny, he don't accept that. He, he want to say to you, I don't like this hadith. I don't accept it. But he have it in his book. So why you buy? You spend money for these books. So, you know, the garbage of this religion is beyond the imagination. And the Muhammadan, they agree about not to agree about anything in Islam. So when one of them, he says something, the other one, he say, I don't agree. Pay attention. Just from the language of the Quran and just from the context of the Quran, we give it the presumption, but not the certainty. <laughs> so that's the strong inkling, strong suggestion, Jesus. So for one person, it's a strong for the other person. It's not a strong for one person. It's correct for the other person is not correct. So how in the world anyone can follow such a stupid religion if we can correct religion? Now let us go to the story which this person is going crazy over it, not the ejaculation, but the story of his prophet death. Present to you something which I call the war wager hadith paradox. So what is that about? People, stay tuned. Stay tuned, stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So first of all, this hadith. So right now, the, there is a there is a notion people that the prophet was poisoned and died as a result of this poison now many ex-muslims and atheists and islamophobes have taken it to social media saying that look the prophet died a humiliating death uh the prophet of islam having been poisoned no this is not the reason we are making fun of it the reason we are making fun of it because the women she bought three dollars poison from Home Depot, some they say from Walmart, and then we find that the Muslim, the Muhammadan, they die to prove to us that Jesus was saved by Allah, and then we find that their best, his best prophet Muhammad, his most beloved prophet Muhammad, he died by a poison from Walmart or Home Depot. If we ask the Muhammadan, how come Muhammad he died by poison by the hand of the Jew? And yet Allah he saved Jesus from the death by the hand of the Jews, but he refused to save Muhammad from the death by the hand of a Jew not in four hours crucifixion process or five hours or six hours this is four years of death if we go to the hadith which this guy is talking about and he's trying his best to uh, to to fight it we will find this
I will open my uh, Skype soon. <clears throat> And the funny is that this hadith is in Al-Bukhari, in Muslim, etc. You know, it's all over. So how anyone can say it is not accepted? You know, and suddenly now Al-Bukhari is a book of lies. So the prophet in his element in which he died used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar, which is this is confirmed now who killed him, the Jews. Uh, 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 I still feel the pain caused by the uh, food I ate Khaybar, and at this time I feel as if my orta is being cut, in, cut off from that poison. Muhammad and they have many attempt to fight this story, but always they come to a failure because especially the scholars they confirm it and they say this is accurate. As an example, this is here Islamic website, very official. I think it's coming from Qatar. And here, fatwa number 193515. And this is the date, this is the number, etc. And the question is uh, about, uh, you know, the, the guy who's asking, uh, like uh, how, how you can say the prophet, he died by poison. And it says it's cutting his artery. When the Quran says, if Muhammad did lie, Allah will cut his artery. And he said, this is very dangerous, which means the following, the prophet was not protected by Allah, and he was not a prophet. The answer for this question, well, first of all, this hadith is very accurate. This hadith, is very accurate. And you cannot deny it. And it's against, not against the Quran. And the death of Muhammad by poison, it is confirmed, famous, Go to fatwa number 50756. We can use Google Translation here. So you can read. So look how, how, how painful this is, is to the Muhammadan. The question itself saying it clearly. Well, if this hadith is true, that means Muhammad, he was not a prophet. And he is not protected from Allah. Why he isn't a prophet? Because the women who gave the poison, when Muhammad, he asked her why you did that, she said, well, if you are a prophet of God, then God will protect you. If you are just a king, like any king, you want to rape, etc. Well, you know, uh, then you will die. So the poison was an, a, a test of the prophethood of Muhammad. Now the woman, she can claim whatever she want. She can say, and then Muhammad died, but this not, will not prove him to be a, a false prophet. But when Muhammad, he says, Allah will not allow you to do so, he confirmed what she said. Muhammad, he said to her, Allah will not allow you to succeed, which means to kill me. Why? Because simply you just told us why you are trying to kill me simply because you want to show everybody if I am a prophet or not, so Allah will not allow it to happen. And then when Muhammad, he said, after suffering from his pain and his, uh, uh, etc., when he said, well, I am dying because of this poison, so he confirmed it. And here you see the answer of the sheikhs, the, the scholars, not kids in YouTube, the evidence of this text of the hadith, it does not contradict the Quran. And it's famous and it's confirmed that he died by poison, as you see here. And as for the death of the Prophet, may Allah pray on him, not for him, as Mimi Hijab said, from the effect of the poison, it's well known, established matter. So don't go there. It is absolutely 
صحيح. And here he says go to fatwa number 50756. So this story here bring uh, some horrible news for the Muhammadan. Number one, Muhammad died by poison. Number two, the man who's asking the question, he is quoting the verses from the Quran where it says that if Muhammad, he died, Allah will cut off his artery. So is it a coincidence? If we go to the Old Testament, and actually this is the chapter the Muslims always they mention to us trying to claim that this is about prophet and I find it very very uh, very good location to Muslim to say that this is about their prophet uh, because in chapter 18 in, in the Old Testament uh, uh, Deuteronomy book it says uh, the Muslim they say to you I will raise a, you know one from you between you etc from your brother to be a prophet etc and then this is what the Muslims always they make a child speak about it that this is about Muhammad must be about Muhammad but then you will see in the same chapter it says that the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not command to him to speak or that shall speak in other the names the name of other gods even that prophet shall die How clear is that? Muhammad, he spoke in the name of other gods, and Muhammad, he gave us tons of lies. The Muslim, they say to you, as an example, Muhammad, he predicted that the Roman, they will be defeated. But Muhammad predicted that the Roman will be defeated by the Arab, not by the Turkish. Actually, he, the, uh, Muhammad, he considered the Turkish as the people of Gog and Magog, or a branch from them. And he says, stay away from the Turkish as long as they stay away from you. He never predicted the Turkish will take over. He says, you, speaking to the Arab in the front of his eyes, you are going to open or control or occupy al Constantinia. You. False prophecy. Muhammad, he predicted that the Roman, they are going to be the majority of mankind. And for sure, this is very stupid. Rome is Italy. And if you go check right now, I think Italy is not even more than 40 to 50 million inhabitants. They are not even the size of a city in China. So when Muhammad, he says such a claim and he claimed to be a prophet, obviously he is a false prophet. Let me try to find you the hadith about the Roman. Then the Muhammadan they say, oh, when the prophet he say uh, the Roman, he mean the Christians. He mean the Christians. But the Quran always, and Muhammad, he called the Christians Nasara. He never called them Roman. There's a chapter in the Quran speaking about the room. It's called the chapter of a room. When the Roman get defeated, this is not the Christians, this is the Roman. Because there is Roman, and there's, there's a Christian in Ethiopia, there's a Christian in, in, in India, there's a Christian everywhere. So when Muhammad, he says that the Rome or the Roman, they are uh, going to be the majority of mankind. And I will put for you the hadith in the screen.
And as you know, the room, the Roman, first they are European. Second, Rome is there, still there. And Muhammad making a false prediction. As you see in the front of your eyes. When the hour will come, the Roman would form the majority of mankind. False prophecy. When Muhammad he says, you are going to uh, occupy Constantinia, again Muhammad, he failed because he predicted that the Arab in front of him, they are the one who is going to open and uh, uh, the, the city. And how we can prove that? The hadith is, not, we know we can pause it for you and show you. <clears throat> Muhammad, he said, clearly speaking to the Arab, that you are going to open this city And all those hadith confirm that. Actually, let me give you another hadith which is uh, more clear. Uh, this one I think is better. Mm, I cannot find it in the in the English translation. Give me a second. See a different one. Uh, Here we go. <laughs> you know, the, the nice thing about Muhammad, that he is a big mouth person. He never shut up. And the more he speak, the more he do poo poo. I cannot find this one in the English too. Translation. Um, let us see. All right, let us see this one. According to Muhammad, the army which is going to invade Constantinia is going to come from the city of Medina. Read this one. From the city of Medina. Do you see it? The last hour would not come until the Roman would land. He named the name of uh, the land and uh, the field of Dabiq. An army consisting of the best soldier of the earth at that time will come from the Medina. But all of us, we knew that the soldier who attacked Constantinia, our city, which we will take it sooner or later back, was not from the Arab and never was, not even a soldier from them, from the city of Medina. So Muhammad, again, he lied and he failed in every prophecy, even the one who part of it become true, like now the Muslim, they occupy the city. Muhammad, he never predicted that Turkish will become Muslims, actually the opposite. He says, leave the Turkish. Let us find you the hadith. Stay away from the Turkish as long they left you alone. Let us go and find the other hadith. Here we go. Stay away from the Turkish and the Ethiopian as long they leave you alone. Muhammad, he never predicted that the Turkish would become Muslims. Actually, Muhammad, he made fun of the Turkish. And in different books we found, and we mentioned, we made a video about it before, that Gog and Magog are people from of Turkey. 
they are a group of the people of, of, uh, of the Gog and Magog. And we can't find you. The reference, give me a second. I don't like to say things without proofs. And I hope the admins are posting for you the reference so you can save them and take a note about it. Uh, <clears throat> Let us show you this one here. And again, Muhammad, he failed, not only with his prophecy, but with his racism, proving to us that he is very racist evil. The judgment day will not come until you fight the Turkish people, who their faces would be like hammered shield wearing clothes of hair, walking with shoes of hair. You will notice here, Muhammad, he says the Muslims will fight the Turkish. So obviously the Turkish are not the Muslims. And this is something have to have to come to exist before the judgment day. While the other hadith he mentioned, speaking to the people in front of him, saying that you are going to attack Constantinia and you are going to conquer it. And the other hadith says that the army which is going to attack Constantinia is going to come from Medina. And all of us, we knew that the Turkish, they never have even for a day, for an hour, for a second, a caliphate in Medina. The Sultan never lived there. And here you see how Muhammad making fun of their look and their eyes, describing them in a very, very racist way. Their face is like hammer shield. And Muhammad, he go more in details that the people of Azerbaijan, the Turkish from Azerbaijan, and they're from Armenia, which means the ones who occupy in Armenia. I cannot find this hadith in English but we can't find it in different place. Let us see. Always, if something I could not find in English, I could not find in English because the Muslim did not translate it, not because it's not there, you know. Not because it's not there. Now give me a second and we will show it to you. All right, let's see this one. I found the tafsir. Um, we can use actually this fatwa here. And it says that this is a hadith is approved to be sahih. Sahahahu al-Alabani. Let us use Google translation. It says here. Uh, let us see.
the Messenger of Allah, he said, that Gog and Magog, they try every day to open a hole in the dam, which is mentioned in chapter 18 in the Quran. And those people, they are between two mountains in Armenia and Azerbaijan. Use Google Translation. Between IE two mountains, which are Armenia, Armenian and Azerbaijani. So those are Gog and Magog, who they will be ever, forever, the enemies of Allah. So Muhammad, again, he failed. The Turkish, who they are from Azerbaijan, is the one who they are people of Gog and Magog. They are Muslims now. And they are part of the Turk nation. And this is why Erdogan, he died to defend them against Armenia. Armenian are not even Asian. They are white European. Showing you the ignorance of Muhammad that he thinks that Armenian are Turkish. So if we want to keep going and showing you more and more evidence that Muhammad, he failed in every prophecy, not for sure not to mention historic mistake, a grammar mistake in Arabic, uh, uh, language mistake, names mistake, uh, Mary is the sister of Aaron, and Mary is the daughter of Amran, which is the father of uh, Aaron and Moses. The sperm is coming from the backbone of the man and the, you know, and the, the ribs of the women. Then we want to find that Muhammad, he died by the poison which he ate at Khaybar. It confirmed one more thing. That Muhammad, again, he is a liar. And his lies is working against him. When the Quran says, if Muhammad is lying, fabricating Quran. In chapter 69, verse number 46. Certainly will cut his the artery of his heart. Certainly we will cut the artery of his heart. And this is exactly how Muhammad died. I'm going to open my Skype to give the Muslim the, the opportunity so they can refute us if they can, if they wish. And as you see, we are not speaking from our own. We are showing you a pure Islamic books with reference and names, names of the books, pages, hadith number, etc. Can the Muslims deny that? According to Muhammad, his death proven that he is a false prophet. And there's a question no Muhammadan ever dared even to explain why Allah would save Jesus, but he would not save Muhammad. Give me a reason. If you are a Muhammadan, you like to speak to us, only Muhammadan, please. Don't send me a text saying hello, etc. those things. I will block you. If you are a Muhammadan, would you, you know you would like to call? Any Muhammadan? Soon we might have a nice debate, just stay tuned, with a, a bunch of sheikhs.
the sheikhs do not know that I am going to debate them. They think somebody else. So we will ambush them, as they say. And they will be very sorry. Do we have any Muhammadan? Would like to call us and tell us how it happened that the Quran is consistent with the story of Muhammad's death, which is proving that Muhammad is a fraud. My Skype is open if you like to join us in the conversation. Any Muhammadan? Do you know the hadith about Muhammad being raped by black guys? Well, Muhammad, he claimed that those black uh, zinj, they uh, rided him. They did not rape him, they did ride him, which is very weird. I mean, what do you mean they did ride him? I mean, this guy is very funny and very stupid. Actually, this is one of the stories proving Muhammad to be an idiot. Hello? Um, I just want to say this. Um, you want to say just this uh, only? No, no, this is only. Equipment. Only this. Um, so why, why only this? You don't want to talk about the topic? Yeah, yeah. I'm not really not. I'm not really like which are into those topics. You, you know? are not what? I'm not into those topics. Why you, you are into what? Like cartoon? What are you into? Why you are calling me then? Uh, theology, but yeah, you're not in those topics. Can I ask you a question? You are not what? You know, why the, why the Muhammad? And we, I'm speaking about the topic for the last 45 minutes, and you call me to tell me, can I ask you a question? I was spinning your mouth now. Why you don't want to tell me what happened? Speaking for the last 40 minutes, introducing a topic, and then you call me, you say to me, I'm not into this topic. So what you were doing, watching Mickey Mouse? Clear proof that they have no answer. Otherwise, they will be all over me. I mean, this religion is very weird, funny, and stupid. By the way, uh, uh, you know, do you remember the story of the cat, the who do not walk in the Quran? And uh, sadly, not all of you. Uh, did they like to to join the experiment, which is Muslim, like the, the Muslim is the one who in, like in, introduce us to this uh, such an experiment. The Muslim they claim that nobody can really no no cat will walk in the Quran, and they have video shared by millions around the world, and we see many of those who they are evil liars, and they may like make video reaction. Do you want to see the reaction of a Christian prince about the cat who don't walk in the Quran? One of you sent me uh, uh, this video uh, of, uh, I think the hand show, it's a, a lady hand, uh, of her cat and what she did with the Quran. No cat can walk in the Quran. No cat, brother. What a cute cat. Uh oh, she is getting closer. She is stepping in the Quran. Can you believe it? She is standing on the Quran. She have like she is even licking now her tongue and she is enjoying. Now this cat, by the way, she sent me an application to work uh, uh, here with us. You know. She said, as long as I can prove Islam to be false, and she is just a cat, well, why she cannot work here with us and uh, help us to defeat Islam? So she have a picture. She sent us a picture of herself. She is wearing a tie, looking for a professional, interesting job. 
So we will see, you know, uh, if we will approve this new uh, new person, which is helping us to prove Islam to be false. All right. Let us see. We have a caller. I don't know who is calling. This is okay, hold on. So what do you think, guys? Should we hire? <laughs> Should we hire this cat? I'm not sure really. I mean, she have a qualification to be honest with you. She is smart. It took her two seconds to prove that Muslims, they lie to us when they speak about uh, miracles. I mean, how they spread this cult to the point they are trying to seek the aid of a cat. Their God could not help them. Mrs. Cat is a solution. I'm not sure. You can tell me what do you think. About it. Later when we finish in the comment section, please let us know if you think she is qualified. You know, I mean, she is ready. She is wearing a nice tie. I don't know where she got this tie from, but I mean, you know, these days you can purchase anything from Amazon. And look, I mean, look. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. She is beautiful. She is professional. And she has, uh, you know, good appetite for walking in the Quran. So everything is there. Nothing is missing. Any Mohammedan? I mean, do you see how cheap this cult is to the point they are trying to seek a help of a cat to prove that their God is God? So their prophet is a false prophet. We prove it in everywhere from their books. We don't use anyone's books except their books. And then the Mohammedan, they go to seek help from cats, from the animal world. And then they make a video, editing the video, obviously, that the cat, she is not going to walk in the Quran. And now anyone at home, he have a cat or a dog or a rat, you can try it. Muhammad will intercede to those who die in Medina. Allah will rise him first. What does this have to do with our topic, Harun? I mean, this is the, exa the best example of the Muhammadan. You talk about hummus, they talk about, uh, you know, how to, uh, uh, you know, to change diaper. It's like we send the message to the wrong person. Hold on. Any Abdul? Where is those people? Who is a Muslim would like to join us? Anyone? How you explain to us that Muhammad's death is in total agreement with the Quran that if he is lying, 
Allah will cut his artery. Now somebody might say, somebody might say, well, uh, if you are saying that Allah, he cut his artery or his liar, then that make Allah a true God. No, my friend, I believe that my God is the one who make the lie of Muhammad happen to prove him to be a fraud. Prove me wrong. Somebody is saying, can you show me where the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, he says, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls? Well, this is proof to me that you people, when you watch my videos, you don't save reference and you guys are lazy. And then you come to me, can you show me this? Can you show me that? Maybe I should say no. Because if I say it once and twice and three times and 20 times and 70 times, it's enough. But still people, lazy. You know, they believe that Christian Prince is always there for them. He will give them the reference, brother. Why we want to save it? We need no need to save it, right? It doesn't matter really how many times we show it to them. Muhammad, he says, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls. And this is exist in many, many, many location. And we can actually, let us see if we can find it in English hadith. But if you open the interpretation books of the Muhammadan, you will find the story. And actually, I don't know why people are so lazy to the point they don't want to search even in Google, because I believe if you search in Google in two seconds, did Muhammad say attack the Roman and get the blonde girls? I'm sure you will find it. But people are lazy. They don't want to find anything. They want Christian prince to find them anything. Like, you know, we have a Christian prince. He is nice. He is I find us things. This is Tafsir at Tabari. Page number 287, variant number 14. Trust me, tomorrow I will find that maybe even the same person saying to me, can you show me where they know? Yeah, talking to myself. It says here that the Prophet says, tabuk, banat al -asfar. Attack the Roman, you will get the blonde girls. Hadith number 6785. Who? What book? At-Tabari. Tomorrow they will come to me and they will ask me again, where we can find this? And this is, by the way, not only in this hadith, the hadith after it, the hadith after it, the hadith after it, the hadith after it. All of them, they are saying the same thing. But as usual, they don't listen. What website is that? Watch the chat. You will see the admins posting the website for you. And I will post it. But it is in Arabic. So this is Tafsir al-Tabari, we can show it in other Tafsir, doesn't matter. And this is again additional proof that Muhammad is a fraud. There is no way a prophet of God who believe in God, who is claiming to be decent, he asks his followers to attack the neighbors just because they have a blonde girls. And when a man of the Muslim, he said to Muhammad, don't tempt us by women, Muhammad, he called that man a hypocrite. Debate Ali Dawa. Who is Ali Dawa? I did not remember. Is that the person who was wearing a circus uniform, speaking to apostate prophet? And then there is a girl, she came and she put some grape in his mouth. Is that the same person you are talking about? I mean, how in the world even you mentioned this kid? This kid, this is the one who will, uh, who will debate me? I mean, I could not believe it that there's an idiot wearing a, wearing a circus, uh, uh, like, he looked like a joker with this suit. And how in the world you claim to be a Muslim who you blood and you're wearing a suit? And the suit is what? It's a joker suit. And then the joker, when he is talking, supposedly defending Islam, he is, he have a girl 
I'm so grateful that he didn't, and she did not lick his fingers in the video, as the prophet said. She is putting some grape in his mouth. Do you even respect your religion? A person speaking about Allah, he do this? And as long as you are asking me to call him, well, hey, here we go, give me, I will call him. Shall I? Do we there? We will give him a grape if he, you know, if he speak to us. So who is a Muhammadan would like? Debate with Daniel. My friend, don't send me those stupid messages. Bring me the guy to debate. What do you want me to do? Go chase him in their house? Debate this guy? Can you debate this guy? What about debating the other guy? Well, I'm here. What a nation of potatoes. Not even one of you is a man. The only one who called me is a guy. His name is Ultimate Fort. Who this guy who say whatever he want? He's a crazy. He's mental. Your Muslims who claim to be uh, knowledgeable in Islam, etc., they don't call because they knew their size. They will call only someone. It will not make them fry them. So who is a Muhammad and would like to call us and tell us how Muhammad died and why Allah killed him? You know, remember, the Muslim they say that anyone die is by the will of Allah. By what? By the will of Allah. That means that the women who killed Muhammad, Muslim believe in destiny. So the women who killed Muhammad, she was doing the will of Allah. It is not allowed for any soul to die except by the will of Allah. So the woman who put poison for Muhammad, she was for sure practicing a punishment coming by Allah. Chapter 3, verse number 145. Now the Muslim, they will say to you, this is Da'if Quran. This is Da'if Quran, because Islam is Da'if. Muhammad is Da'if. Muslims are Da'if. Bukhari is Da'if. All of you are Da'if. The only strong is the cat. The one who step over the Quran and Allah could not stop her. Brothers and sisters, we had the cat. Did you see the cat, brother? The cat did not walk in the Quran. Do you know, brother, why? Because the Quran is the book of Allah. What are you trying to say to me? The cat, she is a Muslim too? Is that why? Hmm? لا يأل عما يفعل. My friend, your Arabic is funny, Mr. Yasin. You missed a big letter there. Yeah, لا يسأل. What يأل? Is that Arabic supposedly? You made me dizzy. Almost I stepped on the Quran because of your question. In Arabic, which is broken Arabic, I'm, I, I think you got it from Google or somewhere. Do we have any Muhammadan? You know, we have to put or to uh, like think about Islam as something uh, uh, special.
Two days ago, when I went online, a Muslim woman, she called me, and she insists that she wants to do breastfeeding for adults. She called me live on air. And me, myself, I do not know what to do. Take the offer, refuse the offer, say yes, say no. I was afraid if I say no, Allah will punish me. How you can say no to the teaching of a holy God coming through a holy prophet? And the Muslim women, the Muhammadan women who called me, she was very serious and she continued sending me text messages saying that the offer is still standing firm. And I put the word firm between two brackets, you know what I mean? Because we are talking about breast. And some people still until now question if Muhammad is a prophet. If Muhammad is not a prophet, how in the world come with such a teaching, beautiful teaching, that a Muslim woman, she shall have her breast given to strange men so strange men can sit with her? Isn't it amazing, astonishing? Who can come with such a teaching beside Allah? Nobody. I don't know which okay, time in the video. Yes. Yeah, here we go. Yesterday, this lady, she called me and she offered her breastfeeding. You don't even know what Christianity is about yet. You are following Allah, the devil, the verse in the front of your eyes. Where is the... I'm trying to find when this lady she called. And she offered me here. Why you try to contact me, my friend? I talk only to Muslims. Let us see. Maybe now I see. Any Muhammadan? Do we have any Muhammadan? Hmm? We have Eliza is calling, the one who want to do breastfeeding for me. I'm not sure why. Hello? Are you talking about breastfeeding? Yes, uh, you are the Muslim Eliza, correct? Do you want me to breastfeed you? No, thank you. I'm not interested. But do you do that usually? Yeah, I say bismillah and then I breastfeed. Oh, okay. How many men do you breastfeed a day? Around 22. Okay. Is that for free, like a charity or for money? It's because we're allowed to. Oh, just because you're allowed to. Okay. Can you explain to us why your prophet he allows such a thing? Because... He wants us to be happy. How oh, that make you very happy? How would it feel when, you know, like a man, he do breastfeed you? Like a man you never met before, he come to your door and he knock at your door and you give him your holy nipples. Well, do you want to find out? No, I don't want to find out, so I'm asking you. Well, I can breastfeed you if you want. No, no, I don't want to find out in this way. I want to tell you, you, you I mean, look at this, look at this. We buy a new microphone. And then the first caller from the Muslim nation, if we can call them a nation, as Muhammad, he called them a nation, is a Muslim lady offering me her boobs. But it happened that at that moment, I was not interested. But I might rethink it.
because speaking too much about Islam will make you pervert. Pervert, you know, pervert. Actually, I find it very funny that even the Quran claimed that the one who made Satan pervert is Allah. Can you believe it? And if somebody makes somebody pervert, that means he is a pervert too. Don't we agree? If somebody made you, if you accompany somebody and he's a pervert, you will end to be a pervert. So the Quran confirmed that shaitan, he accompany Allah. And due to the accompany of Allah, as we see in chapter 7, verse number 16, it says, Shaitan, he said, now for thee, perverting me. Do you see it? Do you see it? Who is the one who makes Shaitan pervert? Allah? And then you ask yourself, why Allah want to make shaitan pervert? The one who is saying to me, debate this guy and this guy, bring him. Bring me your child. I'm not responsible for what is going to go missing. So if you are a person entrusted to see me debating a Muhammadan, well, go and call him right now and ask him to call me. He's welcome. A disclaimer after he called me he will look like a pervert because whoever defend a pervert he end to be a pervert too any Muhammadan you know the the Muhammadan they get upset I'm showing you your screen this is your this is your translation this is your Quran. Why do you get upset? Why the Muhammadan get so upset? I'm not. I'm not saying anything. I'm just showing you what it says there. Here we go. Shaitan. He says to Allah, "You are the one who made me. Uh, you know, uh, he made Shaitan pervert." A Muhammad and his name is Yasin. He keep repeating the same thing. He says, Allah is going, he is not going to be asked about what he do. That's because you're an idiot. This is because you're an idiot. Because you're a coward. You don't dare. We dare. Why I cannot ask Allah about what he do? When Allah, he says, he will insert you in your anus a chain. Shouldn't we ask Allah why he is a pervert? And this chain each ring of it each ring of this chain is equal to all the iron in the world. Isn't it a pervert? Torture? What do you think if somebody starts inserting things in your anus? Isn't it this is a pervert behavior? He could not find any torture except inserting chains in your anus? Is that really what God do? Chapter 69, and the funny is, look, this is a miracle, by the way. It's chapter 69. Once I was uh, debating a Muslim, and people in the chat, they start, oh, 69, 69, I don't know what. I said, what is that 69? What do you mean? Did I miss something? And they explain in the chat, was 69 present. Your God Allah doing 69? 
If we go to the book of Ibn Kathir, in chapter 69, verse number 32, look what Ibn Kathir, he will say. And guess what? It's a miracle. I did not even open Ibn Kathir since two days ago, and we have it on 69 chapter miracle. Like, what the heck? And then we go to verse number 32. What Allah will do, why this uh, thing is not working? Let us try again. Here we go. So according to Muhammad, obviously he have a pervert God. He says, Allah, he says, then fasten him on a chain where off the length of 70 cubit. What does that mean? Not sure. Kabul Ahbar said, every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of the iron in this world. Al-Wafi reported from Ibn Abbas, from Ibn Juraj, both they said each cupid will be a four a for for uh, for uh, forearm forearm length of an angel if, 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 if this is how big it is brother ibn juraj reported that ibn abbas said fa'asliku then fasten him it will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth Take a note here, in the case of Muhammad, what happened is the opposite. The poison enter his mouth and exit his buttocks. That is for the sake of the wisdom of Allah. Which means vice versa. So it will be entered into his buttocks. Allah will push it there. In your buttocks. And he will take the chain out of your mouth. Then we arrange it, arrange on chain, just like Loctus. Who are going arranged to be stick in a stick to be roasted or roasted. It will be run, it will run into his behind until it is brought of his nostrils. Excuse my English. When the guy start try to stand up, he will not be able because the pain in his anus is so strong. And look, Muhammad here is speaking from expert, obviously. Something happened to him to the point he knew exactly what happened if you have a pain in your anus. Otherwise, how Muhammad knew that if you have a chain in your anus, you will not be able to stand up. Isn't it this is a pervert God? Isn't it this is a pervert penalty? And now what you will say, it doesn't say that, CP. This is your Ibn Kathir, and this is your translation, and this is your Muslim website. And look at the fiction. Every ring of this chain have equal iron to all the iron in this earth. In the world, actually, the world is even bigger than the earth. So imagine here, you have one inch maximum anus. And then Allah will insert a chain in the anus, and every ring have more iron than all the iron in the world. Zero Muslim caller. Zero Muslim caller. They don't dare to speak about how their prophet died. 
isn't there to speak about how he gave all those false prophecies? And one of them, he called me, he says, I have a question. Okay. The only ones who call me, really, to give some help in the topic is a Muslim lady. She want to do breastfeeding for adult. Who are you? How you feel? You, sir? It feels very good. I feel very good. And what is the purpose of this breastfeeding for adult? Well, it lets you sit around with me. Guys, when the Prophet, he ordered Muslim women, and this is additional proof that he is a pervert, he ordered the Muslim women to give their boobs to strangers. The Muslim lady, she explained it, saying, well, to allow Muslim, to allow men to sit with me. Look, brother. It's a very conservative religion. You cannot sit with a true Muslim believer unless she give you her boobs and you have to suckle it for 10 different times in 10 different days until you are satisfied. Even if you have a beard, it doesn't matter. Even Aisha, the wife of Muhammad, she ordered her sisters and her nieces that no one can enter upon me unless you suckle him from your nipples. So Aisha, she have a room of secretary who have their like breast open for the clients who is coming to see Aisha. And supposedly, the reason for that, a man, he can sit with her, even though he's a stranger, after he suckled the breast of her nieces. But if you ask the Muslims, well, what this breast suckling will do? Is she, is she, is she became forbidden? They will say no. Can he have sex with her? They say yes. So what the point? Anyone can tell me the point? Any Muhammadan? Do you see how this cult is in this ability? Simple question. With simple question, Muhammad, he lose his tail. Allah, he lose his right chin. And his two arms. And his tongue is bitten by his own teeth. The one is asking about the hadith about Muhammad being righted by those uh, 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 black. You know, see some stories, depending on the story. Some story they say that those black are genie. Those black, they are genie. And they were riding Muhammad. And yes, he was in pain and he was so exhausted. But we know we cannot do what the Muslims do. We cannot say they were raping him. It doesn't say that. So it says they were riding him. And writing him mean many things. I don't know. So we cannot we cannot add our own, you know, we don't want to do what Muslims do. The Muslims are always, they fabricate, you know, uh, uh, opinion. As an example, a Muslim once called me and he says, did Jesus says, drink my urine? I said, where says that? He says, he said, the one who drink my water. <laughs> we don't want to do the same as the Muslim. So as long as the story is saying that they did ride Muhammad and Muhammad was exhausted, we have to stuck with it or stick with it. We cannot add things. We cannot say they raped him. He was very exhausted. They were riding him. And you can use your imagination. I don't know. I cannot add more. I cannot take less. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Any Muhammadan?
We can make a special video about those genie riding Muhammad. So they are human in the same time. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to tell us why Allah he killed Muhammad? Remember, the Quran say clearly that no person, no person, not even one will die without permission from Allah. And it is being fixed by writing, which means it's a destiny written in the book of Allah. It's a destiny written how you will die, when you will die, who will kill you, you die normally or whatever, even car accident, it is written by Allah. This is what the Muslim believe. So as long the Muhammad and they agree that Allah Prophet, uh, Mr. Muhammad, the one who prays Allah and Al-Uzza, which they are very sexy, I don't blame him, and you know it. He died by the will of Allah. So based on this, the Jewish women who sent to kill Muhammad, it was sent by Allah. Anyone disagree? Anyone dare to disagree? We, we will make a video about it, uh, my friend Matt, about Azut. Azut. I mean, this Arabic language have a lot of crazy stuff. Zut Zutri. Hatti Hatti. Muhammad Muhammad. Yahchi Khrutri. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us and tell us how Allah, he did conspiracy, how he did destiny, and why he did that, that the Jewish women, she will kill Muhammad by poison. I mean, this is not even an honorable death. There is no arrow involved. There is no blood involved. He was not a slaughtered, you know, to be a murderer. It's a poison. And Muhammad, he was suffering for four years. You see, one of the funny things, Muslims, once a Muslim, he says to me, that the Prophet, he healed, somebody he was injured, the Prophet, he healed him. I find this a very stupid story. As you see, Muhammad, he's dying and he can't heal himself. And he is not only dying, he is suffering badly. A horrible death. I don't know if any of you ever had some uh, food poisoning, poisoning, which is not really, I mean, it's not that much dangerous usually, but you know how much painful it is going to be in your, in your stomach. This is just for maybe a few minutes or an hour or two hours, and then after that it goes. But this guy, he is suffering like that for almost four years. And you will notice in the hadith it says, he used to say, he did not say, he used. So the man who used to say such a thing, he is suffering from it every day. It's something we used to. Every day, Muhammad, he say that. Why Allah did not heal Muhammad if Allah is the true God? And you know, even if you want to cause his death, why he is causing him this pain? Any Muhammadan? We take a break to talk about our new employee. We have a new employee. She applied to work with us in order to defeat Allah and the Muhammadan lies. She is a cat, and I think she lives in Europe somewhere, you know. She is very handsome. I don't know, this is a male or female, I'm not sure. I'm not expert with cats. She is professional. She proved to us that she can defeat Islam in less than 10 seconds. The owner of the cat put some food in the top of the Quran. This cat, she did walk in the Quran without any hesitation, proving that the Muslim, they lie to us when they say, that cats are Muslims and they will not walk in the Quran. I have her resume. She said she killed many rats and mice during her lifetime and she is expert with using his, her nails. 
And this is how actually she did nail the Quran and the lies of the Muhammadan about cats don't walk on the Quran. I'm not sure about her salary. We are negotiating to see how many cats, how many mice we have to pay her a day. I'm not sure about that. And then there's the issue about where I can provide her with mice when I have none. We need some donator. Translation is being wrong. Who cares? Your translation, you know, the, when the Muslim they say translation is wrong, by this and that, this is their translation. I mean, this is a stupid religion. What translation is wrong? This is their translation. So now their hadith is wrong. This in CP. This hadith is reported by Dudu from Fufu, from Susu, from Nunu. However, Yunus, he said to Zuhri, Zuhri, he said from Urwa, Urwa, he said from Aisha, Zuhri is very well known to be a homosexual. Therefore, his hadith is not valid because it's coming from his uh, somewhere. Arwa is very well known that he is a person who steals iPhones. And we have document and proof that he does that. Yunus, don't tell me about Yunus, please, because Yunus was a person who used to eat falafel without paying for it. Therefore, all this hadith is rejected. Well, this is Sahih Bukhari. Okay, Sahih Bukhari. Bukhari is very well known to be a person who was blind. Then how a blind he can witness for a story he cannot see? Get you busted. This is how the Muslims refute us. It is written in their book, it's called authentic, and then they try to prove it's not authentic, we laugh. That means they are a bunch of liars. How we can trust you anyway? If you are saying to me, your scholars are lying, then who are you? You are a liar too. Those are, those are big names in the history of Islam. Those are the companion of Muhammad. If the companion of Muhammad are a bunch of liars, then Muhammad, what kind, what kind of man he is? Imagine if I say, well, Peter was, etc., and, uh, and uh, uh, John was, etc., you know? So what kind of companion uh, Jesus he have? How the companion of Muhammad, they are a bunch of liars? It's an embarrassment. Anything is an embarrassing for the Muhammadan, they will try to deny it. And as you see, we showed you the fatwa. We showed you the fatwa where it says that this hadith is a very, very authentic, very, very accurate, and nobody can say it is not. Nobody can say it's not. And this is again, this is the Islamic scholar website run by the Islamic government, islamweb.net, as you see. This is the question, the topic or the title, and this is the fatwa number, 193515. And here he is saying, the guy is asking the question, I have a problem with this hadith. Because if it is true, that means Muhammad is a false prophet then. Especially the Quran says, if the Prophet, he is fabricating Quran, I will cut his artery. And he's saying what is important, what is dangerous about this story, how was this hadith correct? And God, he said in the Quran, if Muhammad he gossip or make fabrication against us, we have taken his orta, you know, uh, artery. This is the Muslim question. And then right away we say the same person who's asking the question saying, there is another hadith, authentic hadith. It's authentic. So he is crying out, please help me. How in the world this is authentic? Because if it's an authentic, obviously Muhammad is a fraud. The sheikhs, they did not give him the help he is looking for. He was expecting them to say it's not authentic. They said to him, my friend, you have to accept it. There is a lot of evidence about this hadith. And this hadith 
it does not even contradict the Quran, which means both in total agreement. Yes, they are. Quran says if Muhammad he lie, we'll cut his artery. The hadith says Allah cut his artery. And then here they can you know confirm that this is a very well established matter. And as for the death of the Prophet, may Allah pray on him by the effect of the poison. It was it is very well known, established matter. You can read Fatwa number 50756. Then when a Muhammadan, little Muhammadan, all of them they are little, those who try to deny, they make videos saying, no, he did not die poison. Let me tell you why. Have you ever heard of somebody he drank poison four years ago and then he died four years after? Have you? Well, this is a question you give it to your stupid prophet, not me. Because it is him who said that, not me. Are you saying to me that your God Allah, he inspired your prophet? And isn't it the Quran says, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Which means nothing Muhammad he say, but an inspiration from Allah? So the question then, if Muhammad is wrong, we'll say it. Be a man and say Muhammad is wrong. They don't dare to say, oh, this hadith is wrong. But as you see, their scholars confirm that this is a very authentic story. Actually, let me post for you this link here, even though it is in Arabic, and I'm using Google Translation for you, but you can use it, whatever your language is. Let us shorten the link. So we can share it, because the title has some Arabic, uh, you know, in the search, and usually Google don't allow posting if the web address have Arabic. Let us do that. All right, let me post it for you. So this is the link. This is the website we are show. We showed you from the screen where the Muslim cleric, the scholars, showing you the reference. Bella asking me why CP don't show himself. Bella, why you wanna see myself? Are you looking for a date, Bella? Why you wanna see me? Why CP don't show himself? Why? Why? Look, why Allah don't show himself? I am Allah. But in better version of it. Why Allah don't show himself? Hmm. Any Abdul? I mean, they cannot answer the stupidity in the religion, and now they are worried about showing myself. I don't want to show myself. What's your business? Maybe I'm not good looking. This is embarrassing, man. Why are you asking me those questions? What if I look scary? If I show myself, look, I have now almost 1,300 people watching. If I might show myself, not even one would be here. The only one who stay is me. And if me, myself, I have a mirror in front of me, I will leave too. What's your business? So they cannot refute me, they cannot answer me, and the, 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 the excuse now, why he didn't show himself, huh? Why he didn't show himself? Why you don't ask the same question to your God? Your God, Allah, he says, Allah, he will never speak to anyone except from behind a veil. This is where the word hijab is coming from. Allah never spoke to anyone except from behind the veil. Chapter 42, verse number 51. I'm not wearing a veil. I'm just using a computer. Your God, he wear a veil. Do we have any Muhammadan want to say, look at this. I mean, look how dead they are. Not even a single one of them want to give us any answer about anything. All right. So, guys, it's confirmed that Muhammad, he died a horrible death because he's a fraud. 
Allah does not show himself because he does not exist, dude. I don't know about if he exists or not. Why not? He can be exist. Satan, he has many names. Why not? Maybe he doesn't exist, maybe he exists, but it doesn't matter anything. Do we have any Abdul who would like to call us and tell us, refute us about anything we said? And by the way, this verse here is, is, uh, uh, is weird. I will tell you why. Because if the Quran is saying, in different, you know, two days ago, uh, a day, two days ago, we made a, ver uh, a video about they tried to extinguish the light of Allah, remember? Try to extinguish the light of Allah, the Quran. So Allah is a light. Okay. And nobody can stop the light of Allah. No problem. Then how the light of Allah can be stopped by a curtain, by a veil? All right, Samara, I'm happy for you that you left Islam. So guys, do you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? If Muhammad is, if, if Muhammad is a person is speaking about Allah, that he don't speak to anyone except from behind a veil. And then Allah, light, nobody can stop Allah light. As you see, a veil can stop the light. We can't see the light of Allah. A little veil can hide Allah. So the glorious light of Allah is hidden behind the curtain made in, from Walmart? And why Allah he need the material to hide himself? Can't he hide himself without material? Let us see, maybe we have Abdul. Hmm. We will see if we have Abdul for today. <laughs> if you are a Mohammedan, you like to speak to us, please feel free. We would like to hear your knowledge. Uh, I think we have a female Muslim woman. She want to do breastfeeding for me. Get out. Healthy. Potato. Do we have any brave Muslim? Would like to call us. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? I mean, additional to the ones who want to give breastfeeding for me. Anyone? You see, Islam is a very convincing religion. Think about it. Women, they have to wear a burqa but in the same time, they can give their boobs.
No, there is no sound, sorry. Uh, yeah, you guys, you, you did not miss much. Okay, no, no problem. I was playing the video, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Uh, do we have any Abdul? No sound. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Any Mohammedan? Who is a Muhammad and would like to call us? Hmm? Anyone? Can you talk in the fraud of the last sermon? Well, the last sermon is, you know, that this is the funny thing about Muhammadans. When they want, they say to you the last sermon, everywhere, when they want, they say those hadith are uh, daif, and they are rejected, not only daif. I like the last sermon. Who dare to call me about it? We will laugh. The last sermon. By the way, as long as we are talking about the last sermon, do you know what the last thing Muhammad he did before he died? As long as we are talking about his death? Who remember what is the last thing Muhammad he did before he died? Think about it. A person is dying. And he is a prophet of God. What is the last thing he will do? Yes, he peed. And here I need to ask myself and yourself a question. Why? The last moment in your life, shouldn't you be busy talking about something really important, something special? How the last thing you do? Shouldn't you say Shahada? He obviously, Muhammad, he did not know he's going to die. You know, people, they're saying that when your death is coming, you feel it. So how about a prophet? Has God took him into surprise? Any Muhammadan? And as you see, this hadith is sahih. The last thing Muhammad he did, he grabbed his penis and he pissed. Anyone? You can call me only if you are a Muslim. If you are not, please don't. I will not take your call. Any Muslim can explain to us? Why a person, he is a prophet of God, you know, now he is in the stage of death. He did not notice that a second from now he will die. And instead, he's asking for a dish to piss in it. Anyone? Any Muhammadan? I mean, everything, everything the Muslim they write down for us is really horrible about this man. And imagine the one who is talking is the Muslims. You see, if this is a hadith written by a Christian prince, okay, I will say this guy, Christian prince, is fighting Islam, right? Who 
who is the one who reported this? Aisha. And here you ask yourself, even if this is what happened, why Aisha, she is going around and telling people what the last thing he did when it's a piss? Why they are obsessed with those details? What that will do a benefit for the Muslims, that the Prophet, the last thing he did, before he died, he piss. Does that mean every Muslim before he die he should pee? Because we follow the steps of the Prophet? Aisha is very well known. You know, like, you know, after studying, you know, if you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will find that this society is a very open society, a very sexual too. Uh, as an example, they have no limitation of anything to speak about. Like this one here. Aisha, she reported that one of the wives of Allah Messiah joined him in itikaf. You know, he's in time of a prayer, etc., which is usually he grabbed his testicles. And she noticed a blood and yellowish discharge coming from her. I'm not going to say the word here. They're trying to be supposed to, to hide it. So she put a dish under her when she prayed. Imagine you have a wife, she go in YouTube or in Facebook and she publish that my husband, his other wife, when she was praying, his wife, she, one of his wife praying with him, she noticed that there is some blood and she described even the color of the blood, which obviously an infection, because why she have a yellowish discharge? I'm not a doctor, but I did search it. This is an infection. This woman, she is suffering from sexual disease. So she have a yellowish discharge coming from her part. What that will benefit Muhammad and what that will benefit Islam? And why even she describing the color of the things coming from her private part? What about saying, okay, she was, she have a period maybe. But no, she have no period. This is not period. I mean, can you find one thing in this cult is, is right? It is anything in this cult is right. His death is wrong. His life is wrong. His birth is wrong. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody born four years after his father's death? And then the Muhammadan to solve the problem, they come and they say, well, you know what? Yes, it's true. A Muslim woman, she can be having a child even after 10 to 12 years after her husband's death. You know, and if I show you, if I say, if, if a Christian prince saying things from his own, Muslim, they will say he's a liar. That's not true. Then Christian Prince, he go to their websites and he show what is written in their website, and then still they say he's lying. He's not. This is not true. Islam, a question and answer. This is one of the highest sheikhs, and he is a member of the Islamic, uh, uh, let us say, uh, a scholar council in something they call it something like that in Saudi Arabia. The max period of a woman having a child or carrying a child. We can use it, you know, Google translation so you can see. And this is the number 140103. Google translation. What is the longest? A question is. What is the longest? Longest. If I ask you the question, you will say what? Nine months? 11, 10 months? Here, read with me and love. The answer, thanks to Allah. And then he start counting the opinion. 
Some scholars they say the normal one is nine months. The second scholars they say the view of Muhammad and Abdul Hakam it is one year. Now we go to the heavy duty scholars. Those are where schools named after them, like Hanafi and Shafi'i and Hanbali, etc. Two years according to Hanafi. School of thought. The Muslim Sunni, there's four major sect. This is one of them, Hanafi. So it's two years. Three years according to the view of al ibn Asad. Four years according to Shafi'i and Hanbalis. Four years. Shafi and Hanbalis, we are talking about majority of the population of, of Egypt now. We have Hanafi, we have Shafi'i, and we have Hanbali. What is left? Maliki. Now Maliki, we have more extreme. Five years which narration from Imam Malik. <laughs> Five years. Are we done? No. Six years which is narration from Az-Zuhri and Malik. Are we stopped? Are we done? No. Seven years, which is the opinion of uh, uh, Rabia, whatever his name. You know, in English, the names come wrong in Arabic, like uh, translation. And another uh, narration from Zohri and Malik. Look like this Malik, he is not sure. A second ago, he said six years. A second after, he's saying seven years. So it's possible this and that. And then he says, there's no limit of a woman she has been in pregnancy. And, and this is the view of uh, Abu Ubaid and Shawakani and Said, some commentary of some sheikhs, blah, 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 from As Suyuti, was Sanguti, I don't know what is that, Ibn Baz, Al Uthaymeen. Those are big names in the Islamic uh, scholarship. There's no limit, my friend. No limit. So we start with nine months. We go to one year, two years, three years, six years, seven years, and then we go with no limit. So imagine your wife, she call you. Let us say you divorce this woman. Things happen. And then after five years or seven years or even more, this woman she called you from the hospital saying, Come and pay for the bill of your baby. You say to her, What baby? I divorced you 10 years ago, seven years ago. The wife, she will say to you, you stupid idiot, don't you know that a Muslim woman, she can, she have unlimited years after you have sex with her to give birth from you? Don't you know? There is something not weird about this cult. Everything about this religion is a stupid. Literally stupid. And this is why the Mohammedan didn't dare really to discuss their books. The only smart one of them is the one who says, I don't accept this. I don't even accept the interpretation of the Quran. I don't accept what Muhammad said. And then I said, okay, so what do you accept? He said, I go only, you know, only by the Quran. I say, okay, let us read the Quran. I say, I don't accept translation. I say, okay, what translation you like? He said, I don't accept any translation. So do you know Arabic? He said, no. What is that? Don't say sex, my mom, in the room. 
Oh boy. He just did. You remind me now of Joe Biden. Joe Biden, they write for him, Mr. President. Stop reading and don't continue, please. This is the end of the statement. Joe Biden, he continue. Mr. President, stop. Please stop reading. This is the end of the statement. Dot question mark. Now it's time for you to leave. Don't answer the journalist. And the journalist looking at him like, huh? And then it says here, no, no, don't read that. This is not for them. This is for you. Okay, don't read that. Okay, I'm not going to. Okay, okay. Actually, this reminds me of, of uh, Joe Biden. Remind me of Muhammad and his followers. I will explain to you why. Muhammad, he said in one of the hadith, if any of you write my hadith, erase it. If anyone, anyone write down a hadith from mine, erase it. Look what the Muhammadan did. The guy, he just told them, don't write anything I say except the Quran. The smart Muhammadan they wrote down, the prophet, he said, don't take down anything from me. And he who took down anything from me except the Quran, he should erase it. Like, idiot, he just told you, don't write it down. I mean, have you ever heard of a stupidity more than this? The guy, he just said, don't write what I say. They wrote down, the prophet says, don't write what I say. The prophet, he says, you idiot, why you are writing down what I'm saying? They wrote down, the prophet, he says, why you idiot, why you are writing down what I say? The prophet said, you are driving me crazy. I just told you, don't write down what I am saying except the Quran. The Muslim, they write down, the prophet says, you crazy, stupid idiot, why you are writing down what I am saying to you when I say to you, write only the Quran. I mean, do you see the super, super intelligence? Welcome to Joe Biden world. What's wrong with those people? And look what happened. Because they keep mentioning what Muhammad said. Today we are laughing at what Muhammad said. And then you see a guy, poor guy from Africa, this guy like this Mr. Fort. May Allah plus his fault. He go crazy. I don't accept the hadith. Allah, you know, this is Arab. They are liars. You know, saying they are liars. They are liars. What about the Quran? They are liars too. You know, I bought a steak. Staff, staff, not a steak, really. Because I'm planning, if I feel like I'm going to die one day, I will go live. And I will hold my staff when I am live. And then none of you will notice that I am dead because I'm holding the staff Until the termite eat my staff as the Quran says. Have you ever heard of such a knowledgeable story? That the guy, his name is Solomon, he dies standing and nobody noticed that he is dead. Until the termite, they finish eating his staff and took them almost a year. The guy, he have tons of wives. The guy, he have thousands of servants, soldiers, ministers, general in the army. Nobody noticed that he is dead because he dies standing holding a staff. I mean, even Joe Biden, he moved his eyes. Nobody noticed. And then the termite is the one who ate his staff. And who is talking as Allah? Are you going to say this is a weak hadith?
Do you remember the Abdul who called me once? And I said to him, I will tell you a story about my grandfather. And I told him that he died holding a staff. And the guy, he said, this is silly, doesn't make sense. He didn't know that this is in the Quran, you know. He said, why? You are hurting my feeling now. <laughs> the, guy, the guy, he said, well, sorry, this is, doesn't make sense. This is a stupid story, sorry, you know. What do you mean he died and took stand in for a year? You know, his body would decay. And now the Muslim is thinking. The second you say to him, it's in the Quran, you say, I believe it. A second ago, it was silly, stupid. <laughs> what are you talking about? The second you switch the mood, you say, this is in the Quran. You say, oh, no, I believe it. And I know it's true. If Allah says so, I believe it, yeah? Must be true. Who can disbelieve in Allah's stories? Nobody. And here you see that the termite, they are working for Allah. So I think what happened, Allah sent only one termite, because if 10, they will eat it faster. So Allah, he called the termite department. He says, can you send me one termite? And Allah, he calculate. So how long is going to take this one termite to eat the staff of Solomon? Conclusion, 12 months. Okay, send me now three termite, because I don't want him to stand there for more longer. And by the way, here, as long we are talking about Muhammad was killed by the poison which he ate in Khaybar. How come Muhammad could not stop the angel of death? Do you remember the story of Moses beating the angel of death? And he took his eye out. How come Muhammad could not do the same? And here you see the story, by the way, about Moses. It looked like Moses, he was a ninja or something, you know. I mean, the angel is coming to take your life. And now you are taking the angel eye, beating him by using your martial art. Are you sure that this Musa in Islam was not a Buddhist monk? And he play a ninja? Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, reported that the angel of death was sent, reported from Muhammad for sure, that the angel of death sent to Moses. And then Moses, he come, when he come to Moses, this angel of death, Moses boxed him and his eye was knocked out. Boing! Me so easy. The angel of death coming to take your soul. What do you need to do? Ching! Ho -ho! Ching! You know? I believe that Moses, he did learn a lot of karaoke. He was a karaoke guy. So he knocked his eye out with one, like he boxed him. And do you see? This angel, he have no idea he's playing with who. First, he's a Jew. Secondly, this is Mushas, Mushay. The poor angel of death, he come to Mushay, say, Habibi Mushay. Habibi Mushay, don't use your martial art with me, please. I am just a servant of Allah. I came to take your soul. Mushay, he said to him, stupid. I cannot stop, close my bank now. I have to collect more money. The angel, he said, but I cannot go back to Allah without taking your soul. I'm the angel of death. Moses, he said to him, stand your ground. If you move one more step, you are, only Allah knows what will happen to you. The stupid angel did not listen. He thought that Moses is bluffing. He walked 
one more step and Prophet Musa's beast be upon him, he used his martial art technique, which is called shuku shuku. shuku kuku. And then, and then he took the eye of the angel out. The angel, by the way, did not just stay there. He went back to Allah, asking for justice. So the angel of death went back to Allah and he said, you send me to a servant who don't want to die. You send me to a servant who don't want to die. Allah, he scratched his ass. He thought about it. He said, okay. So Allah, he restored his eyes. So his eyes goes from boing to bing. So now it is in location, in the proper place, which is in his nose. And then Allah, he said to the angel, go back to him and tell him, if he want to live, want life, he must place his hand on the back of an ox. I mean, look at this. In the back of an ox, not a camel, not a donkey. Wisdom. Hindu. And then he would have granted you as many years as the number of air covered by his hand. And now I understand why Allah did not say to him, place your hand in the top of a cat. Here we go. Hello? Uh, hello, Christian Prince. Um, what are you talking about in your video? No, in the street. What I'm talking about? You don't listen? You're not listening? Oh, I'm listening. I listened to some parts of it. Uh, you're talking about Muhammad Sallallahu death, correct? Yes. Mm, I see. Uh, can you point your arguments? I can what? Like, uh, can you point some hadith, please? Like, I just well, your prophet, he said he died because of the poison he ate at Khaybar. Yes, he did not die in there. After he ate the poison, no. Yeah, so he died because of the poison, right? You could say he did, yeah. Okay, so I, here we need to, to have some questions about this. As you see, Moses, when the angel of death, he came to him, he knocked his eye and he sent him back. So you can reject death and you can stop Allah. Uh, secondly, I mean, Muhammad did not, wasn't able to do that, maybe because he's dying, I don't know, I'm not sure. But why Allah, he saved Jesus in Islam, but he did not save Muhammad from the horrible death of poison? Is this like a type of argument that we're read? No, excuse me. Excuse me. I think what I said. So are you saying that uh, when Allah saved Isa, he did not say Muhammad? I'm not saying. This is what the story is saying. Allah, did Allah save Isa according to Islam and he did not save Muhammad? Yes, yes. He did save uh, Isa. Okay. Did he, did he save Muhammad? Obviously, no. No, no. He did not. He oh. let him die and will be in Jannah. Okay. So why Allah did not save Muhammad from the death by the Jews? Allah, he saved Jesus. Yeah, a Jewish woman, the one who killed him, she but she went to Walmart, mm -hmm. she bought some uh, can call, poison. Can you call the hadith? Yeah, it says here, the prophet in his, Aisha, she said, the prophet in his element, which he died, he used to say, Oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate at Khaybar, and at this time I feel as of my aura being cut off from that poison. Khaybar is a Give Jewish a tribe. Uh, Give me a second, I've seen a refutation of this. Give me a second. You have a refutation for this? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a notation of the notation. Oh, okay. Okay, give me a second, my friend. Hmm. Oh, my days. I have like a notation of this hadith. We did a refutation. Uh, do you mind I can show you? No. I see, I can't find it. Hmm. Um, well, well, I'll say I cannot answer that. Excuse me, sorry. Okay, thank you for not answering that. I mean, do you see what is that? What I would do with this wisdom? That's so much wisdom, brother. That's. Did you hear the answer? I cannot answer that. I don't know what to say. I'm out of words. I got refuted. I cannot answer that. 
So they scream day and night that Allah he saved Jesus, Allah he saved Jesus, Allah he saved Jesus. And who is the most beloved prophet to Allah? Muhammad. Brother, who is the most beloved prophet? Allah, Muhammad. Actually, if not Muhammad, Allah did not even create the earth, the hadith says. Even his chair, the chair of Allah is created just for the sake of Muhammad. The tablet of Allah, the pen of Allah, the angel of Allah, human being, everything created for the sake of Muhammad. And then Muhammad died by poison from Walmart and Allah is not even there. This is remind me of the brave Joe Biden, you know, he claimed that he is a friend to the Ukrainian. When the Ukrainian need him most, he go to Walmart. And he said to the American, leave the country, leave the... Have you ever heard of a friend, he leave the country when people they need you? I mean, that's a very good friend, unbelievable. What a hero. What a scumbag. And this is the same as Allah. Muhammad now is dying, he is suffering with pain. At least give him some uh, Advil. I mean, at least... The guy, his arta is cutting off from pain. What a coward God. I mean, even he did beat Joe Biden with his cowardness and his stupidity. This coward Joe Biden, he claimed that the Russian, they are going to invade Russia. And he said to them, we will not uh, find, we will not, we will take our soldiers. So to come in, we will take our family, come in. We will take the Americans, so come in. What, what is that? I want to know who is the donkey who made this person the president. Just I want to know. Is it the termite who ate the election papers, maybe? We have another donkey in Canada right now. His name is Trudeau. Where are those people coming from? I mean, is the earth now is ruled by aliens? They look like ones. Trudeau. I mean, even his name is Trudeau. What do you want more? Trudeau, Joe Biden, Muhammad. The three musketeers. Any Muhammadan? Okay, forget about any Muhammadan. Any, any two Muhammadan? Because look like one Muhammadan is not good. Anyone? Do we have any people here from Canada? Who is here from Canada? Hey, Canadian, where have you been all those years? I mean, you are waiting all those years for this garbage guy to be there. How in the world this guy is elected? You tell me, how in the world this guy is even there? I mean, this guy, he looked like a boy. He don't even look like a man. What the heck? How do you call in? First, you have to have a call, and then you in, you know? And that's it, you know? This is the explanation of Joe Biden, peace be upon him. You know the thing? What do you mean how you do a thing? You call in, you know, we are using Skype. Do we have any Muhammadan? Yeah, he gave Taliban $85 billion weapon. And he gave the Ukrainians some rifles. It's not even $1 million. The German, they gave them hat, 5,000 hat. May Allah bless Germany, brother. A bunch of garbage. What a bunch of garbage. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? 
why Allah did not save Muhammad from the horrible death of poison bought from Walmart and what is make bothering me really that this poison did not even cost her 10 cents I mean do you know even how this Jewish woman she got the poison cheap poison anyone my brothers and sisters i hope you are enjoying my new microphone and uh, when i bought this microphone they told me this microphone can speak spanish so i hope if you are spanish by the way you can switch the language now you can hear me in spanish because this microphone can uh, speak spanish portuguese german uh, uh, Af Af afghani you know afghani you know like let me speak to you afghani uh hello how are you and uh allah knows best that's afghani now I switched to English. Hello, how are you? Allah knows best. This is now English version of what I said in Afghani. And your side, because this is a very good uh, microphone, you will hear it in your language, okay? Don't forget to switch the speakers because we have like every speaker will speak in different language. I mean, even when Jesus, he sent his disciples, they spoke tongues. Muhammad, he needs seven tongues in Arabic to explain the Quran and to have the Quran given. I mean, how dummy this is at. I mean, the same language, we need seven Quran, but a person from Pakistan, he can understand the Quran and he don't have any of them. Seven Quran to understand the same language. Unbelievable. Oh, our friend Eliza, she just texted with me and she said the, the, the offer is still standing. I'm not sure what does that mean, standing, Eliza. Eliza. Hello? Hello? Well, I can't hear you, Eliza. Your microphone is muted. The offer is still standing. I mean, you see in YouTube, there's people who review cameras. Cam company, they give them free camera to review. Somebody, he do like hunting. So they can send him some animation for free. Two bucks, three bucks to review. Even guns. Uh, I, me, because I speak about Islam, I receive nipples to review. This is not unfair. I mean, this is not, not fair. The one who reviews Sony TV, they send him a free C T Sony TV. The one who review a camera, they send him a free camera. Review phone, they send him a free phone. I get nipples to review. Life is not fair. I told her to call because the first call did not go through. Eliza, you know, she is trying to offer she have maybe different uh, options with this offer. <coughs> well, we would like to save her from the cult of Islam, but she have to change her mentality, you know, of this uh, faith religion. What do you mean best right job? Reviewing nipples is the best job? What's wrong with you? Ar Arakil. Are you jealous? No, she is not. You know, this is what they believe. Why is it trolling? You see, so when Muhammad, he said, women, they can give their breast, he was a trolling. 
This is serious, my friend. What trolling? Was Muhammad trolling when he said that a woman she can give her breast to a stranger a sacred ten time? Even he claimed that Allah he sent verses about it. So what do you mean trolling? And I wish this filthy God did not eat the Quran. And I find that this is very suspicious about the goat eating the verses because from the whole Quran, this goat, she chose certain verses. All of them, they are sexual. Who in the world want to believe this? That the goat, she go, she flipped Muhammad from his bed. He's dead now, as long as we are talking about his death. And look what happened after his death. After his death, a goat, she go inside the bedroom. Aisha, she said, the verses of stoning and breastfeeding for adult ten time revealed. And the paper was under my, under my pillow. So this is the Quran. And now Muhammad is dead. The goat, she go inside the bedroom of Muhammad. She jump in the top of the bed. Still, she cannot get the Quran because Muhammad dead, his head on the pillow. So the only way for the, for the goat to get the Quran is to push Muhammad from the bed, make him fail down in the ground, move the pillow, and then she flipped the pages of the Quran, and she chose certain verses, because she did not eat the whole Quran. And then she ate the breast feeding for adult ten times and stoning to death, and both of them, they are sexual. And here you need to ask yourself a very simple question. The goat, she ate the Quran. Did she eat the memory of the Muhammadan about the verses? Don't the Muslim, they say that we recite the Quran by heart? Okay, we got it, we got it. The goat, she ate the Quran. Did she eat your memory too? Who is the Muhammadan who can recite for us the 10 time breastfeeding for adult? That's why I'm saying that there is something fishy about this story. Obviously, the Muslims is the one who ate the verse. Not only the goat. The goat did eat them, maybe, you know. But the real one who really ate the verses is the Muhammadan. Because we cannot find them no more. And this is my challenge. I challenge you to show me the verses about the breastfeed for adults in time. Hmm? And we don't want to mention now that when Muhammad he died, the Muslim did not bury him for three days until his stink and his belly. The hadith says, batnahu, which means his belly become full of gas and fart, and he starts farting. I don't know if you know this. If a person he died, and if he stay out for a few days, his stomach will become so big, regardless where you put him, even if he's in the water, his stomach will become so big because all the gas from the bacteria, which is consuming the food in his stomach, whatever food he have, they will cause gas, and that gas will not be able to be revealed because I mean relieved because now he's dead, so he don't have control of it. So his stomach will keep growing, 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 growing. That's why the hadith says, وَقَدْ بَطْنَهُ His stomach, his belly becomes so big, full of fart. And then Ibn Abbas, he said, إِدْفِنُوا صَاحِبَكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْسًا كَمَا يَأْسَنُ الْبَشَرُ Bury your friend, he stink like all a human, they stink. And now if we ask the Muhammadan, why you did not bury Muhammad for three days? No answer. Are you hoping that he will be the same as a Christ? I can tell you the answer for this. Because one of the lies of Muhammad, that prophets of God, when they die, their body cannot be consumed by the ground. So the Muslim, they said to themselves, why will we bury him? If his body will not be consumed, his body will not be decaying, why we have to bury him, leave it as a miracle? 
And this is the hadith, as you see, is Sahih. Muhammad, he said to them, pray on me every Friday, not send a blessing, pray. Invoke your prayer to me every Friday. They said to him, Prophet, uh, uh, how our Prophet will sub be submitted to you and your body will be decay? Isn't it going to decay? The Messenger of Allah, he said, well, Allah has forbidden it, the earth from consuming or consuming the bodies of the Prophet. So everything about the death of Muhammad proven to us that he is a fraud before the death and after the death and during the death. Everything. It's a clear sign of a fraud. Who is here first time? Join us today in the, in the program. If you are first time, I feel sorry for you because you will become addicted. And then if you become addicted, nothing can help you to leave. Nobody can make you leave our program unless a superstar go in TV like Joe Biden. Because you know, according to study, when Joe Biden go in TV, the whole world get astonished. And by the way, Joe Biden is the one who caught the one who he called him prophet. And he said, Prophet Muhammad said, if one of you see something wrong, change him by his hand. If he could not, then by his mouth. And if he cannot, then in his thought. I mean, the guy is asking the Muslim to do jihad. Do you see how stupid this idiot is? Can you believe it? Would this guy even know what he's saying? Change it by his hand? Are you sure? They start saying, Dictator Biden, sorry, Dictator Putin is invading other nations and you are making fun of Joe Biden. You are a disgrace, Tester. Your Joe Biden is a disgrace. He is the one who's asking them to come. If I am a friend of Ukraine, I will not say, hey, American, leave. You are telling the enemies, I'm not going to fight for them. And he said just yesterday, not a single American soldier will fight the Russian. In disgrace, you are a disgrace. It's your scumbag, Joe Biden, the disgrace. If you have a friend and you claim to be a friend to somebody, you don't leave his house when he is in danger. You stay there. Your Joe Biden is a shit. Excuse me. I have respect to shit more than your Joe Biden. I never heard of somebody he leave his friends when they need him. That's what they did to those Ukrainian people. When they need you most, you leave. They are closing their embassy. What a bunch of cowards. This is the time where you say we will stay. If you come here, you are going to hurt our citizen and we will stop you if you do that at least as an excuse. But coward, sons of Muta, they are the ones inviting Putin to come. This guy, if he see anyone standing for him, he will not. But now he knew. We don't have leader. We have a boy in Canada. We have a guy, he loves his hair to be like a, like a bushes in England. And he claimed that he is supporting them. And he just said, we are going to close our embassy. What the heck with this? At least next time, elect a cat. She dare to step on the Quran like this. Holy cat. Not a stupid Joe Biden.
in case you do not know, this cat, she applied to work with us because she was able to step on the Quran and get the Muhammadan busted in two seconds. The American there are doing honest work. Yeah, you were doing honest work all the time. Exactly, honest work. Aha. Uh -huh. It was honest work when we left $85 billion weapon to Taliban, but we don't have a million dollar to Ukraine. $85 billion. I mean, can't you even burn them? Have you ever heard of somebody leave those weapons? You cannot take them, burn them. And they are preparing to leave for the last four years. Why you have $85 billion equipment? You know, we have honest work. You have a garbage work, my friend. What honest work? Dummy. This is a president. This catch, he can do better. And now he is going to sign agreement with the Iranian because the price of gas is going crazy. And the first day he took the office, he stopped the oil production in our country. Do you know that now we are buying oil from Russia? Do you know that? Do you know it's Russia who can put sanctions on us, not the opposite? I mean, those people are fooling who? This is why this Putin is laughing. The stupid Biden, the first thing he said, he did... Okay, we will close the pipeline. We will stop oil production. We are going to buy. Why would I? Why, why you do that? So we buy it from Russia. Unbelievable. Even a stupid Allah did not do that. How are you, cat, doing? I don't know where she got this uh, tie, by the way. This tie is something. I think we will make this uh, cat an admin. At least she can scare Joe Biden if he show up in our chat. Because obviously this guy, he gets scared even from a cat. She will say to him, meow, and the mice will run. Anyway, forget about those dummies. They make me angry. So are we out of Mohammedans? Are we? Please stay in your field. You know very little about politics. That's deep. You know a lot about politics? I don't think you know a lot about politics. I think you know too much about politics. Stay in your field. Don't talk about politics. We heard their feeling. They love Joe Biden, you know? I mean, obviously, yesterday I went to Walmart to buy some chicken. There's no chicken in the shelf. I asked the lady, when we are going to the chicks? She said, we did not get for the last week. I said, why? He said, I don't know. Ask Joe Biden. I mean, even chicken he cannot provide. Gas price is like crazy. Inflation. Prices. Please don't talk about, you know, don't, don't okay? Don't talk about politics. Stay in your uh, field, okay? Are you enjoying your field? A bunch of dummies. Nations destroyed by their presidents and leaders. And whatever happened to those countries, they deserve it. It's what happened when you have a donkey as a president or a king for you. Garbage in, garbage out. Did you ask yourself why this guy did not move his ass when Trump was in the office? Here we go, Ukraine is there. The problem is there, nothing changed. What happened? Very simple, they, they all, all, even terrorists did not move their ass for four years when Trump was there. The guy, he left right away, to, things is messed up. Even there is many things I don't agree with the Trump, but at least the enemy, they, they fear him. 
This guy, everybody's laughing at him. <sighs> How you confront Muslims who just say Quran only understand and search in Arabic? <laughs> Ask him, do you know Arabic? The one who's, who's saying that to you? <laughs> Secondly, as long as the Quran only understood in Arabic, so how the Quran can be a book for somebody who does not know Arabic? <laughs> is that something for their benefit or against their benefit? This is, they are, this is a stupid argument. But those things can work if you are a person who don't always, always use the Muslim argument to defeat their argument. Muslim argument is stupid. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, because he wants us all to live in food stamps. Anyway, guys, I think we are out of customers for today, even though we have 1,400. Let us see. Maybe there is a Muslim here. Let us see. No, this is a fake one. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? Final call? If you are interested to go to Jannah and get 72 versions, each one of them, her private part is endless, fitting for your endless penis. Don't hesitate to call us so you can get rewarded. Hmm? Anyone want to get rewarded? Anyone? Putin, he invade innocent country like Muhammad to steal land, but Biden, you have a problem with? Yes, I have a problem with Biden because he is the one who is inviting Putin. When Biden, he sent his son to suck the blood of the Ukrainian to get a salary he don't deserve. Do you have a problem with it? Can you tell me why the Ukrainian, they give a job to the son of the vice president? This guy is even kicked from the army, which means he is not qualified even to work in the post office. Isn't it obvious that this guy is a fraud? Him and his family? Is that how you defend the innocent people by sending your son to take a salary from them for a money he don't deserve? Can't Joe Biden give his son a job? No, he cannot. He have to send him to Ukraine so he can suck the blood of the Ukrainian. Innocent people. How in the world anyone would like this stupid Biden? Do you know this family, how much money they made from China and Ukraine and all the corruption and all the garbage? I mean, they have his computer, they have all his emails, and then now he is not arrested. Garbage in, garbage out. But you know the thing. Putin will invade Ukraine. We send 200 soldiers to Lithuania. What? What? Why are you sending soldiers to there? <laughs> the invasion is in Ukraine. <laughs> what the heck is that? <laughs> you know, imagine there's an invasion in California. We send our soldiers to Alaska. <laughs> To the other side. <laughs> what a dummy garbage. I mean, this guy is telling him, and he said in TV, we will not do anything. Our soldier will not fight you. So what you would do? Sanctions, you cannot put sanctions on them. They will put sanctions on us. We are buying their oil. We are buying oil and gas from them. Not only, not only us, all of the NATO. All of the NATO. The Russian, they can make you freeze as we speak now. And then he start begging the, 
Qatari, please, can you, in case uh, Putin, he stops sending us gas, can you send gas, please? Why you do that? We have a lot of gas. Please don't tell me about this garbage, please. One day, this country will open a museum. It's called the Museum of Idiot. And I believe that Joe Biden will take number one between all the idiots we have, because the rest are not better, by the way. I mean, all those presidents until now, we don't have, in this country, we have just a bunch of idiots like Muhammad. God is not a human, no animal. So what, he is a transgender? Guys, a Muslim boy, he says, God is not a human and not animal. Talking about his God, so what is your God? Can you answer? If Allah is not a human, neither an animal, what he is? How you can confirm that he is not a human and he is not an animal? If there is no way you can confirm that to us? No, I'm just asking how you can confirm. Okay, let us, let us think about it. When God, he say, if you believe in me, I will make your endless, your penis endless. Is that an animal thinking who love his penis? Or this is God thinking? Are you there, Muslim boy? If Allah is not an animal, why his promises is animal promises? Because this is the interest of animals. What animal he have? A donkey, he eat grass and his penis. That's, that is, that's life for him. Your God, he promised you the grass and he promised you the penis. Is there anything else? We have, a, we have a person, he claimed to be a Hindu. This guy is upset from me because always I make fun of this stupid sad guru. So look, this Hindu, what he said to us. This is a very, this guy is a Hindu. He respect Islam, brother. Hmm? This guy is a Hindu, he says. His name is Gadan Chan Banatu, vegetarian. I think you are a funny guy, but I think you are not be fair with Muslims. I am a Hindu, and I think I believe, respect all a human. Abdul, isn't it you who just today announced that women who they are wearing hijab, they cannot go to school in India? Where is the one who respect the Muslim? The Muslim wear hijab. We respect Muslims, okay? We are Hindu, we respect Muslims. So why a Muslim woman, she can't wear the hijab? What is bothering you? Can a Hindu woman wear hijab? Can she wear a scarf? Hypocrite, potato. Just you're, you're upset because I make fun of your sad guru. Relax. I want you, all of you now, to sit in your ass. We are going to practice yoga. I want you to focus with me. Sadhguru, this is you. This is the sun. You are now in focus and the sun sending energy. And now imagine yourself a solar system. And you are observing the sun. And now your soul will become a spiritual soul because you are vegetarian. And now the sun will go inside the cells of the vegetation inside you. And that will transform into energy. And now, 
We have to redirect our energy. Not there. No, this is the window of your neighbor and she is taking off her clothes. I said direct your energy, but I did not say the window of your neighbor. Now we direct our energy. For now we have two things, the two essence. We have the light, we have the vegetation. Oh, now our energy is going to go relax. Now focus with me. Next to you, there's other human being. And he is not a solar like you. You can make reflection of your solar to his unsolar body. And that positive energy is going to reflect solarization of solarism, which is coming from Sri Lanka. So he will receive from you your energy, which is a pure energy coming from the sun. And that will make you a solar production product who can save mankind. And now this person here, he feel your energy. And then he will be transformed into a solar. So we started with one solar and now we have two solars. Sadhguru, thank you very much. This is what Sadhguru he say. He sell nothing, he say nothing, he speak nothing. And those people, they listen to nothing. And after you listen for two hours, what you learn? Nothing. Nothing. So he is not, you know, what so if you are a Hindu, I'm a Hindu. Don't force me to eat the to, to eat beef now. Stay in your place. I will give you 100 pound for life debate one hour. Why you don't call me right now? I will give you solar system if you debate me for one hour. All what you need to do, just sit under the sun and hold your staff and we will see if the termite will come. Yeah, I misunderstood, misunderstood your belief, absolutely. I know. Uh, do we have any Mohammedan? We debate all kinds of stupidity, including Joe Biden. If you can, if you can bring me Joe Biden, I will, uh, you know, I will really give you a good reward. Anyone? Since you support Putin, why you do like this guy here? I support Putin now. Harun is a so smart, he come to the conclusion I support Putin. I mean, no wonder you are a Muslim. <laughs> and no problem why you are causing yourself, calling yourself Harun. That's mean you are a male cat. Do you know that this cat is a male cat like you? I mean, how in the world you call yourself Harun? Anyway, do we have any Abdul, Mehdi, last call? Anyone? Any half one? Nobody? So we have 1,400 people and not even one Muslim want to call us and tell us how Allah did not save Jesus, but he did not save Muhammad.
a Muslim man saying to me, if you are a man, show your balls. Too much, too much. Are you sure you are not a female? Because this is sound like a female request. If you are a man, show us your balls. A Muslim challenge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Abdul, listen. I don't know you are, if you want to talk about balls. Is it true that your prophet, his balls was not working, and then he invoked his God Allah, and then he sent him a dish of shish kebab, and he ate it, and he got the power of forty men? Call me, and I will show you how the balls of your prophet never work. What say you? Challenge with reference. Muhammad says, I was the most weak person between all mankind until I invoke my God Allah and he sent me a dish of shish kebab. I ate it, I got the power of 40 men. And then after he got the power of 40 men and what make it more funny that Fatima, she ate with him. So I don't know what she got. Bulls. Do your prophet have bulls? Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. Obviously those cowards, they will never dare to call. And as you see, this is stupid religion. Nothing in it makes sense. Even the death of Muhammad, even the life of Muhammad, everything about Muhammad, proven Muhammad to be fraud. Everything. Everything. And this is why they don't dare to call and answer. And when they call us, they say, we do not know what to, how to answer you. That is the truth. Uh, a Muslim, he's saying here, you see, Muslims, why you don't call me talk about per pervert? Uh, a Muslim, he says, I don't know, the, the text is gone. I don't know what happened with it. But uh, he said, the Christian prince, the prince is a pervert. The pervert is the one who ordered your wife to give her vagina to him. And he make a verse in the Quran claiming that is God who said that. That is a pervert. The pervert is the one who made shaitan a pervert according to the Quran. Allah in the Quran saying that shaitan says to him that shaitan he became a pervert by Allah. Is that true? And this is the verse I will put it in the front of you in the screen. So when you mention the word pervert, we need to ask who is the first pervert ever? Who created pervert Allah chapter 7 verse number 16 Satan he says now for thee perverting me I shall surely sit and ambush to them your God Allah is a pervert when shaitan he accompany a pervert like Allah he turned into a pervert and this is why we see Allah the pervert ordering his prophet the pervert to have sex with a child. She is six years old. So how in the world you dare to use the word pervert and you are a Muhammadan? Look who is talking about pervert. Chapter 65 verse number 4 in the Quran teaching to divorce children. The book of Tahrir al-Wasila, it says that it is allowed for a Muslim to have a sexual joy with an infant without intercourse if she is under a certain age, even if she is an infant, by putting his private part between her legs. Have you ever heard of a sick God pervert more than this? So you are a Mohammedan and you are talking about a pervert? Have you have enough or you want more? Do you want more? Just say the word pervert more and I will give you more reference. And look, when the Muslim, they say something to me and then I flush them with all this garbage, they change the topic. They say, okay, I just talking about the Trinity. Okay, forget about the pervert. Like, hold on, why do you want to talk about pervert now? I challenge you to prove to me the Trinity. Like, Abdul, you are the one who mentioned the word pervert. Why do you want to talk about it now? Prince and Prince. God is not a man, okay? Abdul, but you opened the topic as a pervert. 
Meet him in person, Sheikh Uthman. You know what? When Sheikh Uthman he met in person, David, what, do you know what the first thing he said to him? He said to him, You are six foot tall, mashallah. Pervert. Is it true that the first thing he said to him, go watch the video? He said to him, You are six foot tall? And he was looking like, Wow, mashallah. Pervert. Why in the world the man he said to a man, you are six foot tall, mashallah, and this man is the enemy of Allah. Why a man he admired how tall David Wood is? Go watch the video. It's posted in his channel. So if he see me, what he will say? You look tough, mashallah. You look like a real man, man, mashallah. What a pervert. I never heard of a man flirting with a man like this. You are six foot, mashallah. And the guy is a Christian guy. He is the enemy of Allah. He is coming to you to discuss about religion. And then you say to him, you are six foot tall, mashallah. I'm so glad he did not ask him more details about other things. You guys are just learning Islam from the worst place. Adam, Abdul, why you don't call me my friend? And I will be happy to learn Islam from you. Is that fair, guys? I will give you a chance, Mr. Adam, to choose a topic, and you are the one who teach us about it. And I will just ask you a question about what you say. That's all. What do you think, people? Do Mr. Adam dare to call us? I will not ask you anything. You speak about something, teach us something, I will ask you about whatever thing you said. That's all. Explain it to us only. What do you think? Are you there, Mr. Adam? I'm giving you opportunity to teach 1,400 people now and 1,400,000 people later and millions later because my videos were going to be translated to all languages, including Indonesian. And do you know how many Indonesians live in Islam every day because of my videos, my friend? Do you know? You have no idea. So why you don't call instead of complaining? And by the way, you can open your camera and you can tell your wife to give you some grape like Ali Dawa, and you can wear a joker circus, from the circus suit just to convince us that you are a civil person. Still, you cannot explain anything. Go ahead. Why you don't call me? Okay, forget about calling me. Tell me why Allah did not save Muhammad by poison killed, but he saved the Isa. So, you know, saved Isa. Do you know? If you don't dare to answer by calling, we'll answer in chat. How many translation of my Bible days? All languages. What's your is that in is that causing you pain? So why you translate the Quran then, Mr. Sufyan? When we say version, we are speaking about translation because the same translation exists in the same language many times. So, when you Muslim translate Yusuf Ali, is that in your Quran? Yes, it is. Because Muslim translation is totally different from each one. As an example, the verse in the front of us here, chapter 7, verse number 16. If we move to different translator, we will see the word perverting is disappearing. So you are the one who have different version of the Quran. And not only that, you're a prophet, he said, I received seven Quran, seven real versions, not translation. Why? Because, because my people cannot handle it. Is that true? Here we go. This is the hadith. I will put it for you on the screen. Allah, he sent one Quran. Allah, he sent one Quran. Muhammad, he told Allah, 
You are stupid. My people are so dummy. One Quran will not work with them. They need more Quran to understand. It's in front of you. He keep asking Allah for more Quran, more Quran. So he sent him seven Quran. Now I challenge you to recite for me the seven Quran. Any Abdul? Look, look how many Muhammadan in the chat. They are calling me names. Unbelievable, but none of them dare to call me. Why Allah need to send seven Quran for people who speak one language? Why Allah, you know, the Muslim, they say to us, the Quran is an Arabic miracle. You see how miracle it is to the point I need to write the book seven times. So then maybe they will understand. This is a big failure. Imagine I have my book, one of my book, The Deception of Allah. I write it first time. Then people, they say, uh, your English is so good, but we could not understand. So, okay, let me write it again. So I write in the second time and I publish it. And then they said to me, we could not really get it. This is not, you know. So now I wrote two books, the same book, twice. Still, they did not get it. So I write it for the third time, and then the fourth time, and then the fifth time, the sixth time, and then the seventh time, and until now, the Muslim can't understand the Quran. After seven time, the Muslim did not understand the Quran. Do you see how good the Arabic of Allah to the point after writing the book, rewriting the book seven times? And still they cannot handle it. And look what Muhammad says. He says, my people are not capable of. Capable of what? His people are not capable. Do you see it? My people will not be able to do so. One Quran, my people will not be able to do so. Two Quran, my people will not be able to do so. Three Quran, four Quran, five Quran, six Quran. So how many Quran? And this is the book which is written in a clear Arabic? We need to write it seven times? Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan would like to call me? Muslim boy, he said, show me one mistake in the Quran. Well, all the Quran is a mistake. Which one do you want me to start? Why you don't call me and you choose the chapter and I will show you the, the mistake from any chapter you wish. Anyone. This is how, my, how strong my challenge is. All the Muslims are crying in the chat for very simple reason. We make Muslims leave Islam as simple as that. And you can do nothing about it. Who is a Muhammadan would like to call me and get me busted as long as it's so easy. I find it very funny when a Muslim he says, show me one mistake in the Quran. Like what? The sun set in murky water. He found the sitting place of the sun. He found where the sun rising. The sperm coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Look like your God, Allah, do not understand that man have a testicle, not as a decoration. I think your God, he think that those testicles are like something to hang on the Christmas tree. Your God, Allah, he never heard of testicles? Hmm? Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muhammadan would like to call us? Who is a Muhammadan? You see, they don't want to talk about the topic. They cannot answer about our topic. And now they don't dare even to talk about the topic they are asking us to talk about. Who is a Muslim would like to call us and prove to us that Muhammad is a prophet anyway? Anyone? Your Bible said the Messiah would not die in Jerusalem, but the historians say he did not. Well, this is because you're an idiot. In Jerusalem, all killing was done in that area. Why? Because it is considered as part of Jerusalem. 
This is why it's called the Juljula. You are an idiot. All the killing. So when they mention the killing, they talk about that area specifically. This is where all the killing happened. You are a dummy. Secondly, if no prophet will die in, unless he is dying in Jerusalem, then your prophet did not die in Jerusalem. So your prophet is a fraud. Number three, if Jesus, does Jesus die out of the gate of Jerusalem, according to you, this is out of Jerusalem, but this is confirmed that Jesus died and your prophet is a fraud. Number three. Number, three. number four, the death where Jesus was crucified is not even 600 meter from the location of the court. How that is out of Jerusalem? <laughs> When the Bible says Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who killed the prophet, it's not Jerusalem who killed the prophet, it's the authority of Jerusalem. And this is where they do the killing. They kill it in that area called Al Juljula. So you are a dummy like your prophet again. Any Abdul? Why your prophet did not die in Jerusalem? Is a false prophet? Do we have any Muslim? Hmm? In the same time, Muhammad, he went to Al-Aqsa. <coughs> According to Muslims. So if the place where Jesus was crucified is not inside Jerusalem, that's me, Muhammad, he did not go to Al-Aqsa. He did not go to Jerusalem. Because Al-Aqsa is out of Jerusalem, based on your statement. Do you see the stupidity? Go right now and see where is the Aqsa is and where is where is the the church of uh, of uh, uh, of the empty tomb of Jesus. They are very close. So if that area was is not inside Jerusalem and this is not Jerusalem, that's mean your prophet Muhammad never went to Jerusalem. Ever. Dummy. Who is next? <clears throat> Quran came and Jibreel to Muhammad. Bible, he is unknown. Okay. So Mr. Muslim boy, he is saying that the the Quran came by Angel Jibreel, but there is there's any witnesses for this Angel Jibreel? None of the historian uh, uh, the one you are talking about, they are saying this is out of Jerusalem as a contradiction. They are saying this is out of the gate. But this is not out of Jerusalem, because this is what Jerusalem is. Jerusalem is not just a wall, and what is inside it is the land belong to it. So a few hundred meters from the gate is not considered out of Jerusalem. All the killing of Jerusalem will happen there. So if somebody killed in Jerusalem, they will say he was killed in Jerusalem, but in fact he killed in that area. Why it's called Jerusalem then? Because this is the authority, the judge, the court, the ruler, and this is the area of killing. And your, and your stupid prophet, he took the, the word Jahannam and he put it in the Quran from that name. Jahannam. If we ask the Muslims, what Jahannam mean? They say this is the place of hell. If I ask you what Jahannam mean, you do not know. This is where garbage was burned and where dead body was thrown. What Jahannam? Any Muslim can explain to us what Jahannam? Are you going to be gathered, all of you, in Jahannam next to Jerusalem? Do you see it? Do you see it? <laughs> so according to you Muslims, the hell is next to Jerusalem too. Look what's happening around Jerusalem. <laughs> and here Jahannam is a stolen from the from the our book. Muhammad is a is a thief. He steal. He put words in his book. I don't know what he's saying. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? <clears throat> Anyone? Any Abdul? Mayday, Mayday. 
who is a Abdul would like to call us and get rewarded. <clears throat> Anyone? They don't know what to say. And you know, by the way, how come your prophet Muhammad in the Quran, he says, I confirm what is between their hand. And this is what is between our hand. So you Muslim, you say this is a contradiction and your prophet, he confirm it. And his God, he confirm it. Who is this stupid here? Huh? Is that your Quran? Huh? Is it? And every, every translator, he tried to hide the truth, confirming what is with them. Some Muslims, they try to hide it. They say, oh no, what was with them? <laughs> So you Muslim do not confirm it. Your prophet, he confirm it. Hmm. CP, prove you are a man. Okay, well, I can prove it. Very easy. I'm going to do muta if you send me somebody, you know. And I will do Muta, and then she will come back to you with some twins. Is that will satisfy you because you insist to prove to you that I'm a man? And at the same time, your prophet was not a man. And I can prove it in a second. Your prophet could not have kids. Your prophet could not make his wife have orgasm. And this is the proof. If a man, he is having sexual relationship with his wife, and then the wife, she never experienced orgasm. So what the man was doing? Huh? As you see, this is your prophet wife asking the prophet, do women really have this charge? This is the wife of Muhammad asking her husband, is she serious? Women, they have discharge. Women, they have orgasm. She could not believe it. Does that really happen? Women, she had discharge. Muhammad, he said, yes. So that proved that Muhammad is not a man. What he was doing in the bed. Why his wife, she never had this charge, you tell me. Are you there? And as you see, this is all is sahih. We are not making things up. Was he a man? I mean, if he use his nose, he can make her have this charge. What the problem of Muhammad? He is suffering from da'if intercourse? Is that da'if intercourse? When you're a prophet, he says, I was the most weak person between all mankind in sexual intercourse. And then I invoke my God, Allah, and he sent me a dish of shish kebab. Is that a proving that Muhammad, he have no proof that he is a man? You see, I'm going with your logic. For me, I don't care if he have a penis or not. That is not really a problem. I mean, because some people, they can be born with defect. Maybe he don't have, he, maybe he cannot. But that will not make him, for me, a reason to uh, say he's a liar. That's what your prophet says. He was the most weak person between all mankind in sexual intercourse. Then he asked, invoke Allah. Then he sent him a dish of shish kebab. He ate it. He got the power of 40 men. And what is driving me dizzy, how Muhammad, he measured his ability in bed for 40. Did they have competition and Muhammad, he won? 
How you know 40? How you know what not 41? How we know it's not 39? Why Muhammad is stuck with 40 and Alibaba? Is that Alibaba's story? Alibaba and the 40 thief? And isn't it you, Muslim, you say, if Allah wants something, he say, be, is going to be. So how come Allah needed to make a dish of shish kebab and he sent it to Muhammad to fix his penis? Can't Allah say to Muhammad, penis, boom, and his penis is booming? Why he need to send a dish? Have you ever heard of God? He fix an illness by a dish? Any Muhammadan? What happened to those who want to speak about proof to us that you are a man? Anyone? You blocked my screed, coward? No, I did not block your screed. We are laughing at you. Why you don't call me so nobody can block you, Muslim boy? By the way, your mother, she gave birth to you after two years, three years, four years, seven years, six years, eight years, ten years. Choose one. Sister, get out of here, potato. You have no time for kids. Let them print. You support dictator to get donation. Huh? So now if I support dictator, they will donate for me? <laughs> I just received donation from Saddam Hussein. Hold on. Hello? Vladimir? Vladimir? No kidding. How are you doing, my friend Vladimir Putin? You want to make a donation? Okay, listen. If you want to make a donation, please don't deposit by a ruble. Make it in dollar, okay? How much? No way. 10 rubles? Thank you, Mr. President. Dictator. We do not know what to do without you. Those dummies. I mean, where, where we get those creatures from? Somebody tell me. I support dictator to get donations. Somebody told you that those guys in the chat, they are leaders of countries. What a stupidity, man. And which dictator I support? Which is that? What the heck? That's deep. Hold on. I have Olga. She is calling me from Russia. Hello? What's your name? Olga from Russia? R from Russia. Okay, well, what I want to do, Olga? You want to donate? What? You want to donate your eyelashes for Muhammad? Ah, because he used to put eyelander in his eyes three times a day thank you very much hey guys we just received a donation from olga from russia she decided to donate her eyelashes to prophet muhammad who used to put eyelashes eyeliner three times a day and you are talking about proving who is the man have you ever heard of a man he is a prophet putting eyeliner three times a day and he pissed like a woman are you there You will go to hell, I can prove it. Why you don't call me and prove it? Go ahead. I can prove to you that the Quran says all Muslims will go to hell. Will take me two seconds. Do you want to see it? Wama minkumu illa wariduha. What the heck? Yes, brother. Wama minkumu illa wariduha. Not even a single of you one Muslims. But he will enter hell. وَكَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبُّكَ حُكْمًا مَقْضِيًّا It's a must. It's a destiny. So when your prophet says that not a single one of you, just go to the verse. Hold on. <laughs> when, you're, when you're city God, he say that not even a single one of you, but he will, not, but he will go to hell. Chapter 19, verse number 71. Why you are saying to me, I will go to hell? I'm not a Muslim. And look at the fake translation. There is not one of you, but will pass over it. 
But in Arabic, it says, Waridoha, which means you will get in. How we can get them busted? Let us do it. Chapter 19, verse number 71. And this is the translation or trumpetation. Read and love. Brr, 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 brr. All of you will go to hell according to the Quran. Brother, read it. Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, said, There's not of you shall approach it. Translation There's not a single of you, but in the exclusion of the Prophet and messengers, save that he will enter it, i.e., hell. It's a fixed destiny. Do you see it? So, according to your religion, if we can call it religion, it's you who is going to go to hell. Do you see it? Who's next? Yeah. Sufyan, he's getting smarter. He's saying, stop taking verse out of context. I just showed you the explanation made by you, Mr. Contest. What's, what's wrong with those people? I'm showing them the interpretation made by their prophet cousin. The only one their prophet named him who can explain the Quran. And he prayed to Allah to explain the Quran perfectly. And he said to me, stop taking the verses out of context, okay? Then you stop doing that. Stop doing that. You remind me of your prophet when he said to his cousin, why you don't believe in the, the Lord of the star? The cousin, he said, I don't want to believe in the Lord of the star. Your prophet said, aren't you afraid that the dog of Allah will eat you? Sufyan, do you like to call me and give me details about the dog of Allah? What's wrong with this religion? How come the dog is so filthy yet Allah, he have a dog? The dog of Allah will eat him? Sufyan, be honest with me. Do you think today the dog of Allah will eat me? The dog of Allah? Why in the world Allah have a dog? Hold on, I receive a call. Christian Prince. I'm going to get butted. Hold on. Stop spitting. First, learn how to say the greeting of Islam. Isn't it Islam say Assalamu Alaikum? Christian Prince, first of all, the greeting of Islam would you give on the Bible? Ah, oh, okay. I'll get the point there. When the angel came to Prophet Muhammad, they did not say to him Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, Zakir, why the angel did not say to him to Muhammad Assalamu Alaikum? Because simple. The angel, he came and he had a dog of Allah. And when he have a dog of Allah, he can say, Assalamu alaikum. So he came and he have the dog of Allah with him. Where do you get this from? He left it out in the door. So the Prophet, he come with the dog of Allah with him. And because he have the dog of Allah with him, he did not say, Assalamu alaikum. What is the connection? Prince and Prince. First of all, there's a very strong connection. Uh -huh. Explain to us. First of all, stop interrupting me. Zakir Naik, I'm giving you the microphone. You are giving the microphone. I'm using my microphone. And you are using your microphone. Stop lying. Zachar Naik, I mean, I'm giving you the microphone, which means it's your microphone. Christian Prince, I paid for my microphone. And this is not your microphone. Stop lying. You did not give me any microphone. Zachar Naik, this is not what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm, it's microphone is yours, so speak. Why you are getting upset? Christian Prince, you did lie. You said you are giving the microphone. And I swear by Allah, I bought this microphone from my own. Zachar Naik, take it easy. I did not say I bought a microphone for you. I said, it's your microphone. So go ahead and talk and explain to us the point. Forget about it, Christian Prince. I can't forget about it. Because you get died and I get you busted. You said the microphone is yours. And you're claiming that you're giving microphone. In fact, the LT, this is my microphone. You get your microphone, I get mine. Ah, Zachar Naik, remind me of the chapter of Al-Kafrun, where it says, you got your religion, I have mine. Exactly. Yeah. So are you saying when Allah he says that, he means you got your microphone, I got mine? Exactly. Because I can I are trying to change the topic. I ask you a question, and obviously you are in the corner, and this is why you don't want to answer it, and now you switch the topic to talk about the microphone. Prince and Prince, first of all, I'm not taking the microphone. What? 
I'm not taking the microphone. Uh, Zachar, I said the topic, not the microphone. Oh, sorry. I did not take the topic because the topic is the microphone. What the heck? Okay, as long as the topic is the microphone. When Allah, he speak to Zachar Naik, I mean to Muhammad, did he use a microphone or he use his voice? Christian Prince, Allah Alam. What does that mean? That means Allah knows best. What the heck? Okay, when Allah, he spoke to Moses from the tree, he was speaking by his voice directly or he will use a microphone. Christian Prince, Allah Alam. Okay, hold on. When the Prophet of Allah, he did pee before he died. Do you think that Allah inspired him to pee before he died? Because he didn't want to take him with his soul full of piss? Breath and breath. Allahu Alam. Like an egg. Are you sent by a guy his name Allahu Alam? Because until now you're not answering me. So listen, Abdul. Who is the Muslim who have different answer from Allahu Alam? Who is the Muslim who can tell us what Allah he knows? Obviously your God Allah he knows nothing. 1400 people watching, not a single Muslim there to call me. Where are you? Hello? Low level? Eh? You want to talk about low level? Muslim boy, you want to talk about low level? Why you are always making fun of Muta when some of us are okay with it anyway? Make no sense. We heard the feeling of Eliza. Eliza, can, do you like to call me and tell me why you like, you know, what, what do you mean? Explain to us the details. Do you like to call? Do you like to call and tell us why? Why always, Eliza, she said, Why you always make fun of Muta when some of us are okay with it? Explain to us what do you mean we are okay with it? What does that mean? How far your okay is? Do you want to call? Just give us a call. So you know, maybe that will encourage some Muslims to call after they hear your voice. Because usually this is what make Muslims call. Last time you call me right away, tons of Muslims start calling because they want to show you that there is men in so you can add them and talk to them. I know what the point. Suddenly, every Muslim is calling after she called. Before that, no Muslim is calling. The second they hear a Muslim female is calling, all the Muhammadan, they call. That is the fact. So if you call us, you will encourage some many Abdul to call. What do you think, Eliza? Thank you, Wayne. Pray for all of us, my friend, in the church. Any Muhammadan? I mean, I can stay longer. How long we are here now? Three hours, 23 minutes, and already I have a headache. Anyone? Anybody? No? No, we don't block them, my friend. Let, let people, the point of us speaking about Islam here is to show what Islam is. So you block them. Uh, Christian Prince, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse number two, speak about private part. Hey, uh, Sufyan, I would like to fight with you, my friend. And do you think it's okay for you as a Muslim if your wife, she grabbed my balls and my private part? What do you think? Sufyan, what is the opinion of Islam if a Muslim woman, she grabbed the balls of a man? 
So are you saying to me that in Islam it's okay for a Muslim woman to grab a balls of your neighbor? I'm waiting for your answer, Sufyan. I like this religion, Islam, very much. The only religion allow Muslim women to grab the balls of the neighbors. Your wife, Sufyan, she will come back home. And she put her hand around your eyes. She want to play with you, you know? And you sniff. What is that? What is a smell? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I was holding the balls of the neighbor. <laughs> Are you there, Sufyan? Are you there? As you see in the Bible, it's forbidden for a Muslim to hold someone else's private part. In your religion, what is the rules? She can? Obviously, she can. Otherwise, you will not complain. I'm not going over. I just posted for you. Here we go. I'm asking you, what is the rule in your religion? If your wife, she grabbed my balls. CP warp it up, please. My friend, what I can do? I want to leave from two hours ago. Trust me, I have a headache. Uh -uh. Uh, there's nothing more to say. Muta is allowed, so no need for a call. Oh, okay. You got a the point there. You see, Muslim women, Muslim men, they are upset because the Bible punishes a woman if she grabs the balls of a stranger. But Muslim women are grabbing the balls, the penis, kissing, whatever, licking, whatever, you know. It's okay. Not like the disgusting Bible. A Muslim woman, she can do even breastfeeding for adult. Do you see how disgusting the book of the Jews? Muhammad was a prophet of the hippie. He was a hippie tippy. Everybody have to share the balls with each other. Muslims, according to Sufyan, when he sat with his friends, his wife, she grabbed the balls of his friend. His friend, she grabbed his balls. Because there's no punishment. Hey, by the way, Sufyan, what is the penalty of marrying your mother in Islam? Guys, do you know that if a Muslim, he marry his mother in Islam, there's no penalty? Can you believe it? Who want to challenge me? There's no penalty if you marry your mother and there's no penalty if you marry your daughter. Who want to challenge me? But in the Old Testament, if a woman, she grabbed, uh, even if she is defending her husband, she is not doing it because she is sexually trying to do something, but because this is a filthy behavior of her, and it's not a fair fight, the punishment is severe. In Islam, if you marry your mother, no penalty. Who want to challenge me? <laughs> any abdu you know when when you hear this stuff uh, it's hard to believe that there is any religion in the world can believe such a thing can teach something you know something like that You can't believe it. But yes, this is what it says. What is the penalty? Any Muslim? Go search right now. Al Imam Abu Hanifa, one of the greatest Imams, and this is Hanifa, you know, this is a Muslim sect. The Muslim Sunni, they have four sects. Hanafi is one of them. This is taken from his name.
لا أحد على من تزوج من أمه أو ابنته There's no had had mean severe penalty like you know something extreme any Muslim What kind of religion this religion is? Any Abdul? Any half Abdul? Anyway, potatoes, 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 da 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 da. I like to dip the skin. I like to fry it in. I like to da 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 Betito, 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 ta 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 ta. You know, you need to remember that. Oh. Hello. 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 Hello? All right. You know, when Muslims, they mention anything about the Old Testament, as an example here, when they say in this verse in the Bible, uh, any verse regarding uh, adultery like this one, or, uh, uh, you know, anything. This is showing you how conservative the Jews are and how lousy Islam is. Hello? Hello? Do you hear me? I hear nothing. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with her. I feel sorry really for the Mohammedan. They are really desperate, trying to find a solution. While Muhammad he allow muta, the Old Testament is extremely, extremely tough in any things. There's a huge difference between the Old Testament and the garbage of Muhammad. Hello? Hello? Yes, Eliza, what, uh, what's up? Why are you complaining about Muta when we're allowed to do it? Okay. Why are you allowed to do it? Because it says it in the Quran. Why it says that in the Quran? I mean, what the point is of, of this Muta? I don't see why okay. there's a problem with it. So if you have a daughter and she said she found a guy in the elevator and she did have sex with him and he gave her $10 in return, that is okay for you? But what difference does it make to you? I'm not, to me, I don't do it. I'm asking because I believe this is very stupid and very wrong. This is prostitution, isn't it? No, because they're married. 
what married? He just paid her money for, for sleeping with her for temporary time. For a few days. It can be 10 minutes. Who said three days? What difference is going to be uh, if it's three days or three hours? But why does it make a difference to you? Because obviously it's prostitution. Does she get paid for sleeping with the guy? Yeah, but it doesn't make a difference to you. Uh, it's not about me. I'm asking you. Is it okay in prostitution in Islam? Is it okay? Well, it's not really. What What is the prostitution? Prostitution is a woman. She got paid for sex, correct? But they both agree to do it. Yeah, but the prostitution too, they agree to do it. Right? Uh, when a man, he see a woman and she is a hooker, he asks her how much, she asks him for how long. They agree, they go to bed. So you are saying to me that your prophet, he allowed prostitution. Well, they made it that word. They made it what? They called it prostitution later on. I don't understand what? We're allowed to do it, that's all I know. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking to you. Don't you want to use your brain? Isn't it, this is what prostitution is? A man, he pay a woman for sex in return she get money and this is for preset time they agree but we're both happy so why not oh so as long you are happy and he is happy it's okay and what what if the guy he uh, he you know uh, he have uh, he made you he caused you to have a baby from him during those few hours of sex is that okay for you too there's something called abortion oh you uh, so in islam it's okay to do abortion now Since when was it haram? It is haram. So now you slept with this guy in the elevator, he gave you ten dollars, and now you will have his son. Why you do that yourself? I don't know. You don't know. But we're allowed to do it. That's all I know. Yeah. Did, how, like, do you really do it always? We already talked about this. Oh, I forgot. So you did it or not? It's not really murder because there's no baby. No, I'm saying, did you get paid for, you know, did the Muslim come to you and he offer you money to sleep with him to do muta and you agreed? Did you practice that? Mm, no comment. Why you don't want to say? Is it a shameful thing? Not really. So why you don't say? Either you say yes or you say no. Yes. So you did it? Of course. How much he paid you? And don't worry. I'm not worried. He's the one who paid. I'm just asking how much money. I'm trying to find out how much money you make. Mm, I don't know. You forgot how much he paid you? I'm just calling because you said that the others are too scared to call you. So you are the only Muslim who is brave to call and you are a female. Isn't it? This is very funny. But they're going to call you afterwards. Ah, they will call you because now you called. You are trying to encourage them. Why are you not calling from the beginning then? We are here because for three I'm hours. Because I'm not scholars like them. What do you mean you are a scholar? You are, you are a scholar. Here we go. You practice muta. You have experience in muta. You practice uh, all kinds of things. Breastfeeding for adult. So you, you are, you know, you are really uh, very devoted. A believer who practices Islam very well. But it's my religion. It's your religion. Where are you from originally? London. Okay, you live in London now, but originally you are from where? Don't worry. Oh, yeah, I know this country. It's, you know, don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. Be happy. I saw it in the cartoon. It's a country. It's a very nice country. Uh, yeah, I like this country. So in the country which is called Don't Worry, you learn that muta is okay. But okay, but isn't in London? Is it is it uh, is it okay to work as a to do muta without license? Yeah. You can do that with no license. It's allowed over here. Yeah. There's a there's a guy. His his name is Mimi Hijab. I don't know if you know him, and uh, 
he get upset from Muslim women who give their breast for adult. Why? I don't know. You know, he was upset from a sheikh. He says to him, can I suck your tits? And he said to the wife, you know, did you ever speak to him as long as you live in London? I know who he is. Did you meet him? Not really. Okay. Well, is it okay if you see him next time in London? You ask him what is the problem and you record it. Why you are against breastfeeding for adult if the prophet he allow it? Mm, I can ask him if he wants to do it with me. He do it with you what? Oh, you mean breastfeeding for adult with him? Yeah. Okay. Look like you are open for all, uh, all customers. Uh, okay. But this is not what I'm asking you for now. I'm asking you because this guy he go around and he don't want to believe his prophet is doing that and he was making fun of a sheikh saying can i uh, okay I'm, I'm reading his quote here he put post that in twitter he says okay can i suck your wife tit to make her haram so this guy he's against this supposedly and he don't want to believe in his prophet teaching so how can you believe in it he don't believe in it because he's looking at the hadith he's not what He's looking at the hadith. Yeah, the hadith says it's okay to do it. No, it abrogations it. Oh, it's abrogated? For some people, yeah. It's not abrogated for you. It's abrogated for him. Because they believe in a different version. Uh, okay. And why, why it's abrogated? And why Allah he gave it and then he abrogated? What's the point of this? I don't know. Mm. Okay. What what else you know about Islam? Something you like? Additional to muta and breastfeeding for adult. Mm, I told you already. What? You said respect, but we showed you there's no respect in Islam. Islam says you have a half a brain as a woman. Do you accept that that you have half a brain? But that's in the hadith. Yeah. Well, the Quran says a witness of one man is equal to two women. And the hadith come from that is what make it, make the women half a brain. I don't really care about the hadith. Uh, but you are the one who just practice in muta and practice in breastfeeding for adults from the hadith. Mm, but there's some of them only. Uh, so you like only some hadith which is have like to do Bukhari. with... Bukhari Sahih Muslim. Uh, Bukhari Sahih Muslim. Well, okay. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, so you like only Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. If the hadith written in a different book, you don't like it. Why is your chat making fun of me? I'm not making fun of you, but because the hadith we are talking about actually is in Al-Bukhari. You just said you accept Al-Bukhari. So when, when your prophet, he says women have half a brain, that is in Al-Bukhari. You said you Where? accepted Bukhari. Where does it say? Yeah, I will put it for you on the screen. Here we go. Let me give me a second. Can you send me the link? Uh, yeah. I will send you Al Bukhari himself so he can practice breastfeeding for adult too. Oh, no. This is Al Bukhari. As you see, it says Al Bukhari, narrated by etc. And this is the hadith number 304. So if you accept hadith from Al Bukhari, well, this is Al-Bukhari, the prophet of Islam. He says that women, they have deficiency in their intelligence and mm -hmm. their religion. When they ask him, what is our de deficiency? He says, isn't it the women uh, uh, as a witness is equal to women equal to one man? They said, yes. He said, don't the women, they have, uh, and they said to him, uh, he said, this is the deficiency of your intelligence. And when they ask him, what is deficiency in our religion? He says, you have menstruation. Well, that was in the olden times. So today, Muslim women, they don't have menstruation no more? No, because back then, only the guys used to go outside. Yeah, but this is not outside or inside. He is saying that you have half a brain because, and you will go to hell because you have menstruation. So do you Muslim women these days still have menstruation or you lost it? No, it says they can't pray. 
Okay, they don't kind of pray because they have menstruation and he considered that a deficiency in her religion. That's why they will go to hell. Do you think this is right? What is your no, fault? No, it only says they can't pray. No, here we go. If you read in the top, it says, He said to them, O women, give alms. I have seen the majority of the devourers of the hellfire are women. Do you see it? So Yeah, because we can't pray. Okay, Sometimes. but you cannot pray because you have your menstruation. But this is not your fault, isn't it? Allah is the one who made you with your menstruation. That's a very good point. And this is stupid, you know, I, uh, because if Allah is the one who made you with the menstruation, then Allah should not punish you, sending you to hell. I know. Yeah, so why you don't leave Islam? Uh, no, because it's only one thing. What one thing he just he, he just sent you to hell and you are saying this is one only one thing? You are already now no, in hell according to maybe him. maybe we don't understand it properly. It's in the front of you. There should be explanation for this. He, he just explain it. I mean this is after the explanation. Do you see that they have the whole conversation, they ask the question, he explained. You can ask someone else, please. Okay, so why, why, you, what, what's wrong? I mean, can't you read because it? Because I can't, un I can't answer this one. You cannot answer this one. Okay. It's not so, very nice. It's not very nice. Mm. Is it nice? Because from you're asking me. Oh, you are the one who's calling me, right? Because you wanted me to. I wanted you to. I said you want to explain to us. So now you, I'm, I'm the. You want to play victim now? Please ask someone else, please. Okay, why well, you don't hang up? Why well, you, you know, almost you're going to uh, play victim now. Hang up, it's you who's calling. Hang I'm up. sorry. Okay, take care. I know. I mean, she is the one who called. And I feel sorry for you, you know? I mean, what kind of religion this religion is? This woman, she is a victim of this garbage of Muhammad. I don't think she is a bad person. But Islam will make you say what you are saying. As simple as that. How in the world anyone will say that women, they have deficiency in their religion because they have period. And he is saying to them, you will go to hell. Like, what the heck? What does this have to do with this? If God, he made her, designed her, to have ministration and you are the one who forbid her from praying when she have ministration and now you claim that she have deficiency in religion because you forbidden her from praying when she have ministration poor women i never heard of a stupidity like this that you have deficiency in your religion because you have ministration. What is this? There's any Muslim would like to call and explain to us? All right. Look like we have another Muslim, maybe. Let us see. <laughs> we will see. Uh, this Muslim is playing Quran for us. <laughs> This Muslim guy, he called me to play Quran for me. <laughs> oh, stupid. You know, he's playing for me Al-Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Have you ever heard of a stupid God saying in the name of Allah when he is the one who's talking? I mean, whatever you say, Muslims, we will laugh. I never heard of a God. He is the one who's talking and then he's saying in the name of Allah. So who is he? Who is the one saying in the name of Allah, Allah? Allah say in the name of Allah, the most gracious, most merciful. And then Allah, he says, praise be to Allah.
What a stupid religion. I mean, this is the best you can get me. And then Allah, he says, most gracious, most merciful. But already you said that. Why are you repeating yourself? You did not even move one step farther. And you are repeating exactly the same phrase. Most gracious, most merciful, according to your translation. And this is the most gracious, most merciful. What's wrong with you? Already you said that. Guys, in the name of Christian Prince, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to Christian Prince. The most gracious, most merciful. He's the most gracious, most merciful. He's the master of debating Muslims. And then Allah, he says, Thee do we worship and thin aid we seek. Allah is saying that. You see, Muhammad, he forgot to add the word say in the beginning. This is the only way to make it make sense. Say, pray like this. Nowhere it says that, as you see. What a stupid religion. So we got this lady, she called us, and I said, okay, if, she, if you call now, the Muslim will be encouraged and they will call us. And here we go, we got a Muslim to call us, but he was not man enough to speak. A lady, she is more brave than you. He's playing Quran for me. Any Abdul? The worship and we seek aid? Are you sure? Why you don't seek aid of Allah and call me? Don't you think that this is a fake phrase because if this is a true, you can call me and you will win. Seek his aid. If the aid of Allah is not working, that's mean your God Allah is not working. Can you, before you call me, seek the aid of Allah and just call? And Allah will aid you if he is real. But obviously, you know, your God Allah, his aid does not exist. <clears throat> Any Muhammadan? May they, may they. Do you see why we laugh at the Quran? It's a stupid book. Fairy tale stories. God have two hands, both of them they are right hand. Allah have a shin. Allah have five fingers. What is that? If I make the simplest challenge to the Muhammadan, they will go dizzy. Okay, let us make it so simple. You're a prophet, he says, Allah have a hand and each hand have five fingers. Each hand has five fingers. So this is the hand of Allah. Okay. This is the hand of Allah. And those are the fingers of Allah. I'm trying to make them not like a human. So you can, don't get upset because Allah is not a human, brother. So Allah have a five fingers. Okay. And those are the fingers of Allah. The beach. Okay. Why he have fingers? Who is the Muslim can help us and tell us why Allah has fingers? Anyone? I don't know. Allah have a shin. Why have a shin? I don't know. Why not six fingers? Why five fingers? Lizard have five fingers. A human have five fingers. Allah have five fingers. And then the Muslim, they say to us, Allah is not like anyone. Are you sure? What is the point of this God with five fingers?
Is that really a finger, my friend? You know the guy, his name is Picasso. He learned drawing from me. What's wrong with you? There's a, there's a person here of between you, imagine, questioning my artistic ability. Can you believe that? I mean, what this world is ending to? We are in the end of the time, brother. To the point, they are questioning if those really are fingers. I mean, how clear I can make it more than this. Look how beautiful it is. I just want hold on. I got a, I got an offer from an uh, uh, organization in Hululu, Lulu. They are saying that if I like to sell my this paint, how much? Oh no, come on. That's. I mean, they think they they think I'm a fool. You know, I just got an offer to sell this drawing. Guess for how much? You will not believe it. They are offering me unlimited lifetime breastfeeding for adult, plus wipe to wipe the nipples before we suckle to be sure they are clean, plus plus unlimited time. Of Muta plus the, the last one I don't want it. No, 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 come on. They want they want to give me Siwak. You know, remember the guy, the story of the Siwak? There's a story, the Muslim they claim it's true that the guy he made fun of the Siwak. The Siwak is a piece of wood they put it in their mouth. So this guy he put it in his anus. And then Allah he punished him. So after a few months. He, his belly is full and he have a baby. Why? Because he put the siwak in his anus. And then he gave a birth to a rat and then he died right away. Brother, this is a true story. This is why I refuse the siwak. You know, I'm not going to do anything with it. I will not insert it anywhere. Any Muhammadan? Why Allah have five fingers? Anyone? Why you have five fingers? It's a question. Why Allah have a leg? No answer. Why Allah have a shin? No answer. Why Allah have two eyes? Why two eyes, not six, not seven? Why Allah have a face? If you have a face, that's me, have a back. No answer. All right. I think we are done for today, guys. I'm getting, uh, I have a little headache. Too much breastfeeding for adult, for one person, which I cannot handle no more. Too much milk will kill you. And by the way, those women, they are old women. They don't have even milk. They were suckling what exactly? The woman whom Muhammad, he ordered her, she is not having a baby like she is giving milk. She's not actually. They are, this guy supposedly they cannot have kids. This woman she cannot have kids. Her and her husband. So when he ordered a man to suckle her, he was suckling for what purpose? What a crazy cult! So I want to say thank you all. Don't forget to download my videos. As you know, we don't keep them. You can cut them pieces. Before you cut them pieces, say Alhamdulillah, Bismillah, to make it halal. Okay. Before, before you slice my video into pieces, because you can make many videos of my video, one video, you know, you do not need to post it all one piece. I don't advise you, it's too long. So make a copy for everything we spoke about. I mean, make a, a part, and then you can post them and you give them a new title as the topic is in the video. So I wanna say thank you all for being here. Uh, it's possible that this coming Monday, this coming Monday, today is Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday. This coming Monday, morning time, in USA time, New York time. It's possible around maybe 7 or 8, I will go live because we are going to gut a bunch of Abdul busted. They are sheikhs and they are going after some Christians who know nothing about Islam. So I will get them busted. They do not know I'm coming. They have no idea I'm coming. 
If they did not retreat and run away, we will see. So if they retreat, well, they retreat. If they are brave, you know, if they did the debate, so Monday morning, if those people, they keep their promise, I will go live on air. I'm just waiting for the confirmation. I cannot, I cannot confirm it, right? But I can confirm that if they show up, I will be here and I will make them shish kebab. All right. So this coming Monday is going to be in the morning. If it happened, if it happened, I cannot confirm it because this is in, in their hand, not in my hand. Until I see you soon again, I say to you, stay in peace, live in peace and obey the Lord of peace. That is our Lord. Be good as your father, be holy like him. Don't follow the devilish Muhammad, who have no ethic, zero. He is below ethic. Nothing in his life or in his death was good. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And the fruits of Muhammad is beyond explanation. It is ugly, it is bad, it is disgusting. You do not know people by their names, my friend, by their fruits. The Bible says to examine to the spirit. This is the spirit. Bad spirit will give nothing but evil. So I advise the Muslims, the man you are following, do you have a good spirit? A man who make verses saying any woman she want to give herself to me, what does have to do with God? How that can be God teaching? God is not a pimp. God is holy. And those who they are holy, they follow the holy one. Flies go to the flowers or to the garbage. The answer is to the garbage. Bees go to the flower and flies go to the garbage. Oh, we have uh, Eliza calling. Maybe she decided to leave Islam? Let us see. Hello? Yes, Eliza, why are you are calling? Because, you know, as you see, nobody. I thought you want to leave Islam. That's why I took your call. You don't want to leave Islam? You want someone to answer your question? I, you are my question. So you are convinced my questions are good, right? Yeah, so you are asking the Muslims, stand up and asking, answering the question, because maybe you will leave Islam. What do you think? I, what I'm saying, why you want them to answer the question if this question is not, you know, hurting you, hurting you? Like somehow you are hurt because this question is really, uh, I mean, uh, hurting the faith of Islam. Don't. It's going to help you to leave Islam or to stay as a Muslim. Okay, but can't you tell they will not answer it because what? That's why they are not calling. So obviously they knew I'm right. Otherwise, they will be calling like crazy, don't you see? Okay, I will wait just for you. All right, five minutes more. But Eliza, what if in five minutes no Muslim call? You will leave Islam? That means they are scared, and that means they cannot answer. And that means Islam is ugly. So if I wait for five minutes, just for your sake, just to help you, are you willing to leave Islam? So why I'm going to wait? Because they will not call anyway. Why you will not? Why you will not leave Islam? I mean, don't you see this is an ugly religion? What is that? It's not one question. We showed you many things. You did not answer. Oh, what you say? Well, no, we allowed it. You know, I said to you, why are you breastfeeding? You said it's allowed. You say, okay. You said because men they can sit with you. How? How breastfeeding is making men able to sit with you. They can sit with you anyway, and they can even sleep with you. So what the point of this breastfeeding? I know, but all of this is a garbage. I mean, nothing makes sense. Does it make sense? It's not nice at all. So if, if I am you, I will leave Islam. What I'm saying?
Uh, the chat says there's no sound. Uh, this is my mistake. Sorry. So, guys, sorry, you could not hear the conversation from the beginning. So, she said she is calling and she is asking the Muslims to call. And uh, she's asking me to stay for more five minutes, correct, Eliza? I'm waiting for some of Muslims to okay. call him and so then, they can and then she's, his she is, uh, Yeah. And then I asked her, uh, what about, okay, the... Uh, uh, she said the, the question I asked, she have no answer, and she is hoping that Muslims will answer about women, they have deficiency in the brain, correct? Yeah. Okay. And then you are saying what I'm saying is not nice. What is that? When you were saying something like rude what? to me. I'm, I'm not talking about you. I'm saying, what to you? you? I don't know you. You are the one who said that muta is okay and breastfeeding is okay for you, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but what is the point of the breastfeeding last time you said? Because this will allow the men to sit with you, correct? Yeah. Okay. But why men cannot sit with you without touching you anyway? I don't know. It's just a, it's just a rule in the religion. Okay, so a man he can. I am a Christian man. I can see a Christian woman. We can sit in a coffee shop and we can drink coffee, and I do not need to hold hand, her hand, and she do not need to give me her breast. So why you need to give your breast to a stranger? But it's more specific. It's what? It's more specific. Oh, it's more specific. This is what it says. Aisha, she because... ordered her nieces. To give her a breast to anyone want to see her because it's a regular regular occurrence what does that mean I'm, i don't understand explain to me when you meet them all the time and you're always going to sit with them what difference is going to make if i met a person once or twice why she have to give me her breast because you get more comfortable what if you ask for more who is the one who will get more but, comfortable now? You are saying to me that if you go to a coffee shop and there's like a hundred men, you are going to give your breast to all of them so they can get comfortable. I don't know. This is what you just said. Why those men, they will not get comfortable unless you, they, they, you, know, you suckle them from your breast? I don't really mind what you're asking me. I'm not asking you to do it. You know, you are saying things I'm not saying. I'm saying why? Why? You see the word why? I'm saying why you are going to feel comfortable if they suckle you. Why you will feel comfortable? What does that mean? Because you only do it once. That's why. No, you have to do it 10 different times in 10 different days. Yeah, but then it's over. Yeah, but uh, do you know how many men in this earth? So each time you want to go to a coffee shop, or in the bus or in the train, you have to suckle everybody there? No, it's the ones that you live with. No, this is not, you know, this is why Aisha, she don't live with them. Anyone want to come, she want to enter, they want to enter upon her. Anyone she will meet, they have to suckle her nieces and her sisters. I'm pretty sure that was a boy that was um, related. No, I can show you the reference. Here we go. I can find the reference. This is not related. It's about men uh, who they are ordered to suckle before they can. But I don't really mind anyway. I know you don't mind. This is what you said before. But you, Why you, don't you just move to the deficiency question? We are moving to the deficiency question. This is both is important. But Because when, I care about that one. Okay, so you care about what the different why why this one is more serious for you from the breast adult feeding? Because it's not very nice to and the, me. And the funny you are saying this is for kids when the hadith says it's a breast feeding for adult. No, I said adults. Adult, yeah. So they are not kids. I know. Okay. So what you say is not true. In the same time you are saying to me uh, the hadith about you have deficiency in the brain and religion is more important. Don't you think that the one who said you have deficiency in your brain because you have menstruation, he himself have deficiency to say so? Well, that's why I want Muslim to explain it for me. Well, Muslim will not explain it because they are ashamed of it. But that's why I said wait for five minutes. Okay, but if I wait for five minutes, 
why and nobody call me obviously they don't dare to answer why you don't leave they might islam? they might call you why you don't leave islam if they don't call what do you think i'm giving you a nice opportunity to be free from this madness because it's just because i don't know the answer so why would i leave? no problem no you will you know you will leave because this is madness why why you will go to hell this is about you going to hell you will go to hell because you have menstruation this is a crazy you have deficiency in the brain and in in the religion both of them based in your how allah he made you supposedly so deficiency mm. in the in the intelligence who is the one who made you allah right if nobody no, if nobody um answers then i'm gonna come back next time and answer okay so you are saying you will and if you don't have an answer do you promise me to leave islam next next time when i call you with the answer you will call me with the answer but what if you don't have an answer that's why someone else might have an answer so if nobody there to answer and you could not answer are you going to leave us now maybe maybe okay well we pray for you i'm not here to make fun of you i feel sorry really for you i believe that you you know you deserve help and uh, this religion is obviously a religion of corruption and you are just uh, saying what you've been told so i feel sorry for you but at the same time i ask the christian to pray for this woman that she will be out of this cult she is saying what she learned and what she learned is really ugly thank you eliza for calling you're welcome now we'll stay just five minutes just for your sake as you requested and i challenge all the muslim as you see, your sister, she might leave Islam if you don't call. So All right, thank you, you so call. much. You're welcome. Take care. Five minutes. Now it is 6.17. <laughs> Any Muslim? Muslim boy saying, CP, God was a baby in need of a milk. Prove it. Your Quran says that Jesus, when he was a baby, he spoke as a prophet of Allah. So obviously, Jesus is not an, a baby you are talking about. When he was in the cradle, he spoke. And he said, I am the prophet of Allah. Your prophet took him 40 years, and yet he could not speak anything about Allah. Jesus is not even just, he's just born a second ago. Let us see, maybe we have a Muhammad. <coughs> Five minutes. I'm trying to call a Muhammadan, you will see if you will answer. No answer. Let's try again. <laughs> he is not answering. It says he is not online. Do we have any Muslim who would like to answer the questions which your sister, she is asking for help? Anyone? Any Mohammedan? Let us see this guy. Hello. Go ahead. You are you are live on air, my friend. What do you like to say to us? Yeah, I just had a question. Is this CP? Yes. Did you hear your sister? She was talking and she was hoping a Muslim would answer the question about women have deficiency in their brain. 
in their religion and wisdom? Uh, so I had a question from CP, if that's okay. You have a question from CP, so you will not answer the question. Your sister, she said she might leave Islam if no Muslim answer. Uh, I think uh, it's a trick you do always. You just uh, bring fake uh, Muslims and you try to prove to your okay, let us say Christian just, followers let, that let us say, uh, let us say, you know, okay, let us say for uh, the sake of argument, this is a fake Muslim. Are you able no, to I'm answer? No, I'm not saying she's fake. I'm not saying she's fake. You okay. always go for the weak people that she clearly said she don't okay, have aren't the knowledge. Okay, aren't you strong? She's weak. Uh, I had, I, like I told you, I have a question. Why are you so scared? Let so me are you, ask are you scared question. to answer what she's asking for help for? Here we go. Your sister, she is asking for help. And you are saying, I am targeting the weak. Are you weak? You always do that. You don't let are people you? talk. Are You're you going weak? No, I, weak. I want you to answer the question. Are you weak? Why don't you, why don't you debate people that she clearly said she don't have knowledge? It's only okay. fair. Do you have a knowledge? Have knowledge don't she... you have a knowledge yourself? You are a Muslim man. Don't you have a knowledge? But you are I, the man. When I called you, wait, when I called you, didn't I say I have a question? Can I test so you? So is that how you prove your knowledge? Is that how you prove your knowledge? By asking question, but not by answering? What? Why are you talking about knowledge when I'm asking? I have a question. Because we have a topic. We are talking about it for the last four because hours. This, I have one question. I have no Christian has been what? able to answer. No problem. I, will an I promise I will answer you after you answer. Okay. Why now, women? No, I called you because I have a question. You cannot do dictate. See, this is what you do. I can always. dictate. I, I can dictate. This is my program. It's not up to you. Oh. No, it's not up to you. Yeah, but your sister, okay, so she is leaving. Okay, okay, good, good. So basically, your what you're sister, saying is that your Muslims sister, she is you. going to leave Muslims Islam if you yeah? don't answer. Why you don't answer? You claim that she have no knowledge. Are you better? If I go and take, if I go and target we Christians, I can do exactly the same thing. It's not okay. something you target me. Here we yeah. go. Target me, and I will target okay. you. Let us see. So, is, so okay. now okay. I'm so asking is, you. Okay, so is I, Jesus I, I, God? I, I will, Jesus God. Who's Jesus? I, I will Who be, is Jesus? I will Jesus? be. I will be fair with you. You ask me a question. Okay. I ask you a Jesus? question. Is that fair? Question. Okay. Question from me. Yes, question sir. from you. Do you accept? Yeah, of course, this is fair. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. So here we go. We have the Muslim lady before you. She called, answer the question about okay. women. They have deficiency because of the administration and because they have Jesus? half a brain. Who is Jesus? Uh, you see, this is uh, answer, and I will answer your question. One question from me, no, one no, question no, no, from no. you. I, I called you. No, I called you because you this is you never answer a question from a Muslim, always you attack you, be, you do it very okay. unfair. Do you, do, you, do you promise me if I answer you, you will, you will, uh, uh, you will answer if my you question? Prove to me God, if you prove to me, God, uh, that Jesus is God from Bible, from Bible, see, it's only fair, then okay. What, if, why, if you, why, okay. from the why not from the Quran? Idiot, I'm asking from the Bible. It's only fair because so are you, it, are you ashamed of the Quran? I can prove it to you from the Quran. I'm asking you a simple question. See, you dodge always tactic. Why well, tactic? Can, uh, Just answer this straight. Oh, okay, so if I if I show you in the Bible, do okay, you agree? From Bible, do you, yes, do you agree? Yes, yes, do you agree with yeah, the Bible? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Okay. Do you okay, agree, let's see. You agree okay. with the Bible show or not? Me, do you agree me, with yeah, the Bible yeah, show, or not? Show me. Show me. Show me. Don't with, dodge. Do you agree don't with the tactic. Bible? Don't play your tactic. Okay. Abdul. Wait, wait. wait. Did, did Jesus do, say he's God? Do you agree with the Bible? Yes. If I show you that Jesus, if I show you that Jesus says I am God, what you will do in front of everybody? I told you if you prove to me, if you prove it, you you're not answering me. First, prove. Okay. How, we can how, talk. Let I'm me ask you how okay. I'm going to prove Where it to is, you. See, but let's, let's, listen, going to let, let again. us make it clear. Hold on. In front of how everyone, I can prove it to you is that by watching. showing see, you. you how I can question. let is me. Is Jesus God? Okay. No. Is Jesus God? I'm asking you now. How I can prove it to you? Is it by showing you that Jesus says I am God, or by showing you Jesus saying I am not God? Your English is very shit. I'm asking you a simple question. Where did Jesus say? My that friend, my right friend, I do not know. I do not know how to write, how to read. I am illiterate like your prophet. Listen, you they see you insult, insult. So I'm just asking. I'm not question, insulting. Insult. It's you who called me. Sister, I, call I did not call you, you any sister, names yet. The I, sister, you are the, the one who says sister. you are the one who called me idiot. The you weak, are the one who the used the word shit. Sister, that just Hold on. She can hear you me are the now, one who ran away from answering. You're not and fair. now, you're not and now, okay, so you see, you are you who is the one insulting? Did I call you shit? Wait, when when I call you, when I called you, didn't I say simple question? Did you answer me? See, you always tactic. Why don't you just you are, ask me you questions? You are a coward. Simple I'm asking question. you. Explain the question for coward. me. When you say to me, prove to okay, me that Jesus listen. is God. Is okay, that by showing you? you wanna, Hold on, potato, you hold, potato, you, potato, you, potatoes. You potato. If potato, I show potato, you, potato. you, if I show you now a verse from the Bible, Jesus saying, "I am God," are you going to accept it? 
بدي اهدو بدي اهدو لا 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 متع بوي اف اي شو يو اف اي شو يو اف اي شو يو جيسس سين اي ام ذا ليفينج جود ار يو جوين تو اكسبت ار يو فير ار يو فير ار يو فير فيرست فيرست ار يو فير از ا بيرسون از ا از ا كريستيان داز جيسس تيل يو ذات يو شود بي فير اف اي هاف ا كويشن از ا مسلم كان يو جست انسر مي جيسس تولد مي جيسس تولد جيسس تولد مي نوت ار يو فير نو سي نوت تو توليريت نوت تو توليريت لايرز اند ديسيفرز از ا كويشن Okay. Let us see who is the potato. So now I'm going to keep my promise. I will answer your question. I want you to read for me okay, in the screen. Okay, okay. Potato, Abdul. Let's go, let's go. This is John. Okay. This is John. This is John. Chapter eight says, Jesus said, "I am the living God." The mic is yours. Okay. Okay, mic is mine. Okay, Mick, very good. Okay, so Jesus said about the hour. I don't know. I don't know. Jesus Abdedo. said, "I am the living God." Do you see it? But when he said, okay, how this contradiction, like ah, you say, uh, this is a contradiction. contradiction. There's a contradiction. Is, okay, okay, tell me about Jesus, that contradiction. If he, uh, okay, very good. Hmm. So, okay, update listen. Uh -huh. So, if, uh, God, does he know the future? That's a good question. Do your God know the future? Does your God know the future? Yes, he knew because I'm the same you. chapter you are going to quote for me, Jesus said, this is will happen, and this is will happen, and this is will happen, and then I will come. So now we prove that Jesus knew the future. Do your God know the future? Do he your said, he Do said, your God? Listen. Okay. Okay. Eh, uh, eh. Do your God know the future? I am asking you. <laughs> Do your God know the future? <laughs> this uh, sister can can see this. The sister can You're, see this. Uh, everybody, everybody Jesus is seeing show. how stupid you are and how trying to run to run away. <laughs> Here we go. One, one, Jesus, he knew the future. Even, even the Quran, even the Quran Christian, says. Please, you have books. Even the Quran, you know, I know even you, the I Quran you. says that from Jesus, he I know knew the future. Abdul, I know you from is it true? Is it true that your God, Allah, said in the Quran that Jesus, he knew the future? Okay, 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 okay. The sister okay, can okay, hear me. Okay, okay, okay. I'm asking this you. Is, you is it you're true? Fair, you see, you are you are going you're against Allah. Is it you're true? Not fair, a is it you're not true? Fair, a uh, just, uh, see? Just potato, kid, little potato. Your God said that Jesus he knew the future. Your God. Are you against your God? When a Muslim, he says, I don't want you to show me from the Quran because the Quran is an embarrassment for their challenge. When I show them from my Bible, they will say we don't accept it anyway. <laughs> this is your stupid God saying that Jesus, he can tell you the future. And the same book says, who knows the future save Allah? Who knows the future, save Allah. Then we find, let me open the Quran. In chapter six, verse number 50, the Quran says that Muhammad said that I do not know the treasure of Allah. I do not know the future. I know nothing about the hiding. This is Muhammad. What about Jesus? Jesus, he told them, I can tell you what you even eat. I can tell you what you are even hiding in your houses. Potato. And this is why they don't want their Quran. Embarrassment. Muhammad, he do not know. Be my witness, the verse in the front of you. Muhammad, he do not know. Why? If Muhammad is a messenger, and Jesus is a messenger. If Muhammad was sent by Allah, and Jesus was sent by Allah. So how one who sent by Allah, he knew the hiding and the hidden, but the other one who is sent by Allah, he have no idea. Huh? 
If you want to say to me, this is by the permission of Allah, that is even make it more horrible. Your prophet, you don't have a permission. My Jesus have a permission. Chapter 3, verse number 49 in the Quran. It says that Jesus saying, I can tell you, I can inform you what you eat. What you store in your houses. Surely, this is a sign for you if you believe. Now, when we ask the Abdul, do your God Allah know the future? The answer, for sure, no. And this is an example. Allah, he told the Muslims, if 100 of you with patient can fight 1,000. The Muhammadan, they want to war and they lost. One hundred can win against one thousand. Ten of you can win against one hundred, which means the ratio is one to ten. The Muhammadan they went to war and they lost. Muhammad, in the same story, he claimed that he saw that the number of these believers even going to be, this is a different story, actually. He says the number of these believers was going to be way little when they went to war. We can show you that reference, too. But here, imagine the God who promised that one of you can fight against ten, and he have the same conditions. Urge the believers to fight. If there is a 20 of you with patience, they will overcome 200. If there is be a hundred of you will overcome a thousand of the unbelievers. Right away, he made a verse saying, Now, now Allah, he lightened your task, knowing that there is a weakness on you. Before you do not know. And the Arabic is so clear. It says, وَعَلِمَ أَنَّ فِيكُمْ وَضَعْفًا And he found out that you have a weakness. Is that a God who knows the future? You do not know that they have weakness? And look what happened. He promised them that one can fight against ten. Ten can fight against one hundred. Look how he changed the number. If there is a hundred of you patient men, they will overcome two hundred. Can you believe it? From one to ten to one to two. Do you see the stupid Muhammad? Here, if a 20 of you can fight 200, which means every 10 can fight 100, 1 to 10. Now Allah, he found that he is a potato. And now he found that he have, they have a weakness. So he decided to fix his numbers. And for sure, we can show you tons of verses proving that Allah do not know either the future or the past. As an example, how the baby is made. As an example, the sun set in a murky water. As an example, even about the judgment day. So when we say to the Muslims, what if I show you that Jesus is God from your Quran? He don't want it. Okay, if I show you from the Bible, you accept? He don't want it. Do you see the hypocrisy of this religion? If we can call it a religion? And you are attacking weak people. Are you a strong one? He's not. He don't dare to answer the question. His sister, she is almost leaving Islam, and yet he don't care. Claiming that I am attacking the weak.
And the second we start answering him, he starts shouting, screaming, making fun, calling names. What a potato. Eliza, the five mate is gone. What do you think, my friend? Are you going to leave Islam? Do you see this is or those are the Muslims? They can't answer anything. All the Quran proved that Allah cannot be God because He do not know the past, He do not know the future. What kind of God? You see, the Bible says, if God is with me, who could be against me? The Bible mentions stories about God stopping time for the Jews to win and have victory. Even their enemy is way more than them. Why the God of Islam, he need to adjust his numbers? If God, he promised you victory, who care if you are one to hundred or one to a million? Why the numbers will care? Or will change anything? Do we agree? If God is a true God, and he said to a child, a child, he is an infant. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can touch you. Not even America, not even Russia, not even China, not even Pakistan, not nobody. This child will win. Even if he's an infant. Not because he's a child, but because God is in his side. So this God, he promised them to win. And now he's adjusting his numbers, and he is admitting that now he found out that they have a weakness. Don't Allah, he knew that they have a weakness before? My friends, none of you dare to debate me. Actually, let me see, there's a Muslim, let me try to call him, even though it's getting late for me, I mean, oh boy. <clears throat> but we cannot resist saving more Muslims out of this madness. Let us see this guy here, he's trying, you can call, because I tried to call him, he did not answer. So maybe now it's going to work, let us see. Give it a, a try. Yes. I had a question why you uh, cut the phone. So you're not fair, very, very unfair, man. Well, we cut the phone. He don't want to answer. He don't want to say anything. But I had a question as a Muslim. Well, Muslim I answered you. Say, I answered Christian. you. I answered you. Hello, excuse me. Christian. I said, I, had your question. I said, I said, Jesus said, I am the living God, correct? I will take this. Can I take this and put it on, on YouTube how you dodge? I have everything. Oh, absolutely. You can download all the video. No problem. All my videos okay. you can download them. I challenge you, actually. Okay. Don't, 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 uh, uh, you know, don't, uh, uh, yeah, I will do that. Actually, I will cut this and, and I will show everyone that you just, you know, you're very unfair. I have a question. You, you start calling, you, 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 you said, you start saying the word shit, did you? You start calling me. No, I, I did you not. called me potato. I did you not. No, I did not. I called you after I hang up. It's, no, I, it's I called dead, you when man. I'm hanging up. You are a, you are a coward. Okay, it's, so, it's recorded. Okay, so I have a question. I have a question now. Don't change Simple the topic. Question. You asked me a question already. Jesus, Don't change okay, the topic. Don't change gone? the topic. You, well, you, I will not. I, I, will not I answered you. I answered you. I will not change. It's, okay, I Jesus answered God. you. How come your God do not know if the Muslim will win or will lose? And he claimed that they will win and they lost. This is not answer. I'm asking you so simpler question. Are you agreeing? Said, so, so, okay. In, so in are you Bible? are you agreeing that your God is not God? <laughs> I am asking you a simple question. No Everyone problem. You're asking me, this. and I'm talking to you. When Allah He said I, to them I they will win. This, I'm showing you a reference. You, I'm showing you. I'm showing you. I'm showing you a reference. It says that Allah He okay. told ten people they can fight against one hundred. Those but Abdul, I'm asking you, wait, those wait, wait, Abdul, I know they this, went to listen, war and listen, they lost. Every every sincere Christian mm. can hear this. Those that you know your cheerleader, they can cheer, no problem. But everyone, they know you're running. 
Simple question. Did Jesus say he's God? You're learned, man. I Answer just, me. I just showed you. Here we go. Jesus says where? I'm God. Here we go. Where, 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 where? John 8, chapter 8, okay. verse number 12. Read wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. John 8, chapter hmm. 8, verse number 12. Okay, so wait. Now, he says, he says, the son does not know about about the hour. How hmm. is he God? Yani he's God that he does not know the future. Did he, did he just say the son? He said, of the hour, no, no he, angels, why you are skipping no, this? not why, even the son. Why you are skipping the son? Did he say the son? He said, not even the son knows, but the father. Okay, so he Didn't is, he say, so did he say, he did, he say that, he did he say that he is the son of the father, which is the God of the world? Did he say that? But it's contradicting for you. No, how is That's that? You see, you. if you just say it, if you just say it, if you just say it, okay, I just, I'm, I'm answering if you, you I'm say, answering you. Did Jesus yeah. there, yes, yes. did Jesus say is speaking about God as his father and he is a son? Yes or no? He's, he's talking about himself that he don't know about the hour. Yes. Okay, I'm asking he you now. Know. Okay, so now he announced first that he is the son of God. Do we agree in that? He said, not even the son, yes. No problem, but he is the son of God. So now, if we go and read together, we will find that Jesus telling you the rest, how it works. So not all, not even the son, which means the son is leaving. But my question is, my, my yeah, friend, exactly, my friend, exactly, exactly. My how friend. is he God? Then CP, listen, listen, you you have to let me, listen, you be fair. You, you did ask the question, I'm answering you. You did ask, but how is you he asked, God? You, if he you said asked the question, you asked the question. I just showed you in the Quran yes. that your prophet and your God do not know the future, <laughs> and now I'm showing you that Jesus, he said, if you read, if you read the holy chapter, okay, hold on. Be fair. Okay, let us see. Did Jesus say, did Jesus says, the following things will happen before I come in the same chapter, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Does that mean he knew the future, could... yes or no? <laughs> but this could be, this could mean, you know what this could mean? A okay. prophet. Okay. You know what prophet means? He prophesies. Okay. So Moses also knew. You okay. know, the other prophets, when they prophesied about the Messiah, mm -hmm. so they, they, does that mean that they are God? No. Okay. So let us, let us focus on this. Let us wait, focus wait, on wait, this. So yes, we will. We will. Christian, okay. uh, Christian prince. No, no, hold on. You just said. A prophet, so he can prophesy. You, You're a prophet, he prophesied too about the judgment day. Can we compare? Why are you talking? I'm talking about Jesus right now. But we're we talking talk about, about Jesus prophet, because, you want. according to you, Jesus is a prophet. You're so, so Jesus, you I just said now, you yeah. just said that Jesus yes. is just making a prophecy, correct? Exactly. Okay. So, so now, he says, yes. Jesus, he prophesied. You're a prophet, he prophesied, and he is getting his knowledge from Allah, correct? Look, you, you come. I know your tactic. You're coming now to Islam. We can come to Islam. There is no problem. Just be fair and answer. We are me. being fair. We have to compare. In okay. the same time, okay. Okay. You, you will wanna, see Jesus. You will see Jesus, my friend. CP. Judgment CP. day. Ask, judgment let day. Let judgment day. Let me. Listen, if you Muslim, read together, let, Muslim, let me let me teach you. Let, let me listen. teach you and okay, clip your nails. Let me clip your nails. Listen. If you if you read, if you read, you will see Jesus. I'm answering you. Shut up. Shut up. Let me answer. Let me talk. So now Jesus, he's saying. That me... Jesus is saying that nation will rise against nation, kingdom will go against kingdom, and yes. uh, and he continue describing what will happen before he is coming. Correct? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And then he says and this, he will say, yes, and then exactly this generation, and then this generation, which is going to witness all those things, is going to witness a judgment day. Correct? See, yes or no? You, Hold on. Yes or no? There's not. Nice don't 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 jump. Don't you. jump. Yes but or no? You're not letting me answer. Kashmar, you're not answering. Answer you're not answering now. But I'm asking not, you, do you agree or not? Do you agree or not? That's what Jesus not, said. We are just talking about what Jesus said. We are just talking about what Jesus said. Yes, he prophesied. Yes, he prophesied. Okay. Yes. Okay, not prophesied. Just hold like on. other prophets. Okay, hold on. Okay. First of all, God is the first this prophet. Is God is the God is the first God is the first prophet, and you are ignorant. Secondly, when Jesus said, when all those things happen, then I will come. And then yes. that hour, that hour, that announcement of the hour is going to be in the hand of my father. So in Christianity, yes. we don't have a predestiny for the day of judgment, yes. not like in Islam. Yes. So when you do yes. all those corruption, when all those things happen, this is why if we go in the Old Testament, we will see that when God, he spoke to, to, to Lot, which is a prophet <coughs> in Islam, he said to him, if there, is ton, if there is 20 believers in my town, are you going to destroy the city? He said, no. What about if there is 10? He said, no. So as long there is a true believers, decent people, God will not bring the judgment day. So Jesus saying, when when all those things start happening, and then the whole world is corrupted to the point even the brother is against his brother, human being is killing, stealing, etc., and there's no good people left, then that moment 
the Son of Man, he will descend from heaven. And you will see, verse number 30 says, and then shall appear the sign of the sign of yeah, the son of you, you, see, hold on. you're answering yourself hold on. This is, this i am is answering you and you are a coward yourself. you don't want let me to talk hold you on let me answer okay, let me finish let me finish so <laughs> when all okay, those things happen who is going to who is going to descend to judge the people in the day of judgment jesus but who is the one who's going to announce the day of judgment that is the father so we christian believe in the trinity so and obviously so shut, shut up so shut up shut up no we don't have to god we believe in the Trinity, and you are ignorant. But you just said. No, but you just, you just I just said. said just I said to no. the Father. You said the Father. But said you the said father. the Father. No one thing, I said the, the son, Father. No so thing. we in Christianity, okay. we believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So the Father is the one who will announce it. The Son, but, He is going to do judge the but flesh. But the Son don't know. So, the Father announced, but the no, Son don't know. Huh? No, you are <laughs> you are you are know. stupid again. Now we go to the Quran. We find <laughs> Allah do not know. Do Allah? So I answer. You know, you're playing like a kid. I, this is my answer. Oh, wait, people wait. are laughing at you. So the father, so announced, the father will announce okay, it. Okay. The son, he will do the judgment in the judgment day. Let me ask you: Is it true that but your prophet? Is it true? Now. Is it true your prophet said that but Jesus will descend? Now, Jesus, Prince, shut up! I, you see, you will not I, let me I, talk I let because you're you afraid. You're not. You're afraid. Is it true that he said that Jesus will descend but I let you and he will now. be the judge? Can you, can you give me? He will be how, the judge. How many minutes I let you talk? How how how, how many not, minutes I let you, are, you talk? You are honest. not answering. Is it true but, that Jesus will be the judge? I'm going to answer you, but listen. How, how many minutes I let you talk? I'm confirming the verses in front of me. How, how let many, us see, how, how because many? because you want to see who is the God. Who is the one will judge? God or man? There is two God. There is two God. No, they have one God. You are stupid. But even you say, even your God, you, even your God you in the Quran said, says, even your God in the Quran says that the Christian said, believe in one God. Are you saying your God you is lying? Said, are you saying your you God? Just said, you just said are you saying your God is lying? You say to me. Are now, you saying your God is lying you because the Christian me, believe listen, in one how, God? How is the Christian? How is the Christian Abdul, going Abdul. to believe you? Are you saying see, that your God is lying? C C P C C P C C P. Abdul, who is the potato here? Who is the potato? Who is the potato? But you, you don't. So, are you saying <laughs> that your God is a liar when he said that the Christian believe in one God? Listen, you who, just say to me. Who of you okay. is? Who announces? Who, of you, who, who, announces, who knows who, the hour? Who, who, of knows you, the hour? who of you? Who knows the hour? Jesus, who he knew the hour. the hour. Your God does not, and that's no, why you're afraid see, of me talking. See, this is your lie. But he said. Jesus, he knew the hour, and he said. This is he Bible. Just, Alasad, this all is Bible. done, potato. Jesus, he okay, announced everything will happen right about the future. 1, and who is the one who told him that? Everybody is looking right at you. Online. And look, this is, this is your God. This is your God, See, he says. He cannot answer. Don't this say Trinity, but you know, the Christian, they say See? Trinity, but one. See? The Christian, See? they say that God is a Trinity is a liar. and he, he is a one. So you he are a liar Muslim. again. Now, the that knows little now bit, Abdul, he doesn't let him talk. do See? your God See? in you the judgment day. Here, the Quran unfair, says the, ju the judgment, very, the judgment very, very day unfair. is near and the moon is split. The Christians, is the moon is split as a sign of the judgment day? Is the moon is split in sign of the judgment day? You're very, very unfair. Potato is, is the judgment day is by splitting the moon. Right now they can see. Wallah, there is Everybody will laugh, will laugh. How God he knew, how God he knew the judgment day, how God he knew the judgment day, and he claimed that the judgment day started when the sun Christians split. Christians, can see him? Can you see what he does now? Hmm. All the Christians, they must see now what he does. He don't let me talk. See, I let him he talk. You don't let me minutes. talk. See, what, I let what, you talk. What, I answered you. It's your time to answer okay, now. I, I, if, Listen, now, if, all, if my God, God if my God is my not God, yeah, potato, hold on. Talk, you see, you potato, muta boy. Listen, muta boy. Listen, but, muta, listen, muta boy. Do your God? You see the fair question. Fair question. Do your God know the judgment day? Do your God? Do your God know the judgment? Stop complaining. Do you, okay, say yes. Say yes or no. Do your God know the judgment day? Yes, but I'm talking okay. about Jesus. So how do you say in Shaq al Qamar, and this is the, the start of the judgment day? But listen, uh, CP. Listen, CP, I want you to answer. When Allah, he predicted the judgment day, and he says that the moon is split. Did he make a mistake? Did he make a mistake? You think, you think the Christians that don't know? Maybe five of them will come become Muslim just because of this. Ah, because you're there. A, a billion, a billion. Here we go. Your God, yes, he claimed, he will, because he be simply the moon is split. The moon is split. He, he claimed Muslim. that the moon is split is a sign of the judgment day. But this is 1400 years ago. So Jesus, he made it clear that I am the son. He is the father. And the father is the one who will be announcing that hour. 
because this is not a predestiny. We don't believe in a predestiny. It is us who control. Stop talking. You are a muta boy, coward. We cannot talk at the same time. I will call you back so you can answer. You are a coward. So Jesus, he said it clearly. My father is the one who is the one who make the decision of the judgment day. I am the son. I am the one who will judge the flesh. And that what is make Jesus God, because the one who judge is God, no one else. And because we believe in the Trinity, and the son is announcing who is the one in the charge of announcing the day of judgment, it is my father. And this is what is hurting your feeling. So when the, when the Lord, he come in the glory of his angels, and he tell you exactly what will happen before his coming, he will judge all mankind and he will send your prophet to hell. as you see in the front of you. The Muslim, they jump, and they refuse to read the first verses, and they jump and says, but only my father. But he just said, my father. So if you are trying to say Jesus is not God, he just said, well, God is my father, and I am his son. <laughs> so how that will not make him God? In the same time, your God is not God from the same reason you are mentioning. Your God do not know the day of judgment. Your God, he gave Muhammad signs of the day of judgment. If we read them, we will die laughing. And not only that. Your prophet Muhammad, your false prophet, he said, the Messiah, he come down to earth as absolute, just and justice. And this is in total agreement with the Bible that the Messiah is the judge of all mankind. Who is the one who judge the world? God. And let me show the hadith and I will call you. And the funny is, even that story here, which Muhammad, he said, proving Muhammad to be false, and we will show him why when he, when I call him back. He do not want me to talk because simply it's embarrassment. The second we go to his Quran, people will laugh. He don't want to hear it. It's not good. Bad news. So now let me call you. And be a man, and as long as you admitted that the Bible and Jesus saying clearly, my father, so this is the duty of the father, and the son have a duty, which is to be the judge. That's all. Now, this is your prophet speaking about Jesus. Let us see if you agree with your prophet, or you are going to make fun of him. Wow. Do you, see, do you see the hate in front of you? <laughs> wow, wow, An unbelievable CP. This is not good. 1,500. You think all of them don't know? You, don't, you think they don't have heart? They know, and they, at least 10 or 20 people, they know this. Do you see the hadith in front of you? Inshallah. Do you see the hadith in front of you? This, is this Christianity? Here we go, complain guys, again. This, I love, I love I call Jesus. you to is let you talk. Guys? Okay, okay, so okay, now, is this do you very, see the hadith? Do you see the hadith in front of you? Yeah, this is fair. Yeah, this is fair. You're a potato. I okay, answer you. Okay. Yeah, you, you okay. might have one. So now answer me. You, so so answer. Who is the one? Who is the because one who will, the one who will judge? Who is the one who will judge? Stop work? complaining. You are in the delivery room and the baby is coming out slowly. So now, yes, do you agree? Or do you agree that the yeah, judge in the judgment day is Allah or Jesus? Okay. Okay. So when I called you. You Who is the fair, judge in the judgment day? You will not okay, answer. Hello, CP, you you will not hello, answer. Hello, you will not look, answer. Look, look, Hashish. People saying, let them talk. You are listen, not answering. Say, Who is talk. the judge in the they, judgment day? You, the CP, verses, it is you who chose coward. Even, you will not, you, you will yes, not talk, yes. right? You will even not answer. You coward, okay, you coward, you will not dare to answer. So I'm asking you. 
CP, CP, uh, so, so answer. answer, I gave you the I answer. An answer. Now it's time for I you have... to talk about what I said, right? Okay. Okay, okay let me so talk then. Let is, me talk who then. Is let me the, talk who is the judge in the judgment day? <coughs> it's it's Allah. Okay, but so read the hadith in front of you. Let me prove. Let read me the hadith. You, read, read the hadith in front of you. It says that the judge in the judgment day is Jesus. I love Jesus. Christians, I love Jesus. Read the, read the hadith. He's not fair. He okay, read the hadith. Talk Christians. Read the hadith. All the Christians. See, Potato, see this guy is not at me. Listen, you listen, did lie. I, I, you say the judge in the judgment day Christian. is Allah. You say it. Christian. You say the, day, the judge in the judgment day is Allah, right? All, read all the hadith. The, all the Christians here, maybe 5% of them, they understand read your text. Read the hadith. Maybe 5%. Okay, you can say whatever Listen, you want. People are laughing. Why you don't want to answer? What's yes, the, what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? Let me talk. You don't let me talk. What is the problem? You keep saying let me talk, okay, but you never answer. Is... Read the hadith. Okay, let me answer now. Let me read... answer. Okay, read it. Read it. Okay. The answer is this. The answer is this. Read it. When I called you, read it. hello. Read when it. I called you, I asked Why you don't want to read it? Why you don't want to read it? Because when I called you, are you ashamed? I had a simple question. Are you ashamed of your God words? Are you ashamed of your prophet words? Why you don't want to read it? I did read for you the verses. I answer you. Are you ashamed? Okay, let me, let me. Uh, okay, liar, son of Muta, potato. Go do Muta, the coward. Do you know why he don't want to read this? Because this is a proof that Allah do not know the future. Neither Muhammad know the future. Do you know why? Muhammad, he said in Arabic, Liushikna, almost the Messiah is descending. And this was 1400 years ago. If Muhammad received the sign of the judgment day, because this is one of the signs of the judgment day. And he claimed that the Messiah is almost here. That means Muhammad is a false prophet. And this is why he didn't want to read. And not only that. Muhammad, he... told a group of people when the day of judgment will happen. You see, this is a topic is going to make everybody laugh at you and at your prophet. Thank you for calling. There was a kid in front of Muhammad with a group of people. A kid. Muhammad, he said to the group of people, this kid will not live until he become old and the judgment day will come. And this is the hadith. And it is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Do Allah knew the judgment day? Huh? Do Allah knew the judgment day? This is why he didn't want to read. For us, what you see in the Bible is no problem because we Christian we believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Father is the one who will announce the day of judgment. The Son, he have a duty. He is the judge. And this is mentioned in many places in the Bible. So I am the judge. He will announce it. And Jesus always says that the Father sent me. The word Father presents authority. He is not called Father for no reason. The word Son provides certain authority. When Muhammad he said that the Messiah is soon coming down, and then he say that this is a child between you. He will not grow old. He will not even be like old, really. You know, harem is like it can be 30, it can be 40, it can be 50. Before he grow old, and the Muslim, look what they do between two brackets. He says, you, he would see you dying. It says, asa. last hour.
Muslim, they try to fix it. The trace says this is the hour of death. But the hadith in Arabic is so clear. Allah, he knew the future. He knew where the sun set. Allah, he knew the future. He knew how the baby is made. The sperm is coming from the backbone of the man or ribs of the women. 1,500, 2,000 people watching and they are laughing. This child will not grow old until the last hour would come. And then the Muslim, they try to fix it by putting two bracket as usual. What kind of a prophet he says stupid things like this? And then if I want to show you the tones of a prophecy is Muhammad he mentioned about the judgment day, you will die laughing. As an example, Gog and Magog. Muhammad he claimed that Gog and Magog they are exist in his time and they open the hole. And they are coming to the point he got scared and terrified false prophecy and the hadith in the front of your eyes and this is Sahih al-Bukhari Sahih Muslim false prophet when Muhammad he claimed that the people of Gog and Magog they will attack the Muslims and the Muslims they will have arrows thrown at them enough to make fire for seven years Read and love. The Muslim will use the bows and arrows and shield of Gog and Magog as firewood for seven years. Somebody tell Muhammad that Saudi Arabia is buying F-21 from America. They are buying Patriot. Somebody tell Muhammad that there is no more arrows so in order for Gog and Magog to practice their sign of day of judgment, they are coming in the wrong time. See, this is not like metaphorical. Muhammad is saying they will use it as a firewood. Was that a prophecy given from his God? Was it? Do you see why he will not read? It's an embarrassment. Our Bible is saying what we believe. We believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Finished. A Muslim might say to you, okay, Jesus is praying to the Father. Yes, that's why we have a Trinity. But when Allah, he pray on Muhammad, he pray to who? No answer. And I challenge you to download the video and post it in your channel so everybody will love. And then Muslim, they will see why I hang up in such a boy like you. You are just a kid. You don't want people to see what your prophet said. So Jesus, he tell what you hide. Your God do not know what is hidden. He sent the army, promised them victory, they lose. Not to forget to mention that Muhammad, when he claimed that Zul Qurnayn, he found the people of Gog and Magog, he proved to us again that he is a fraud because Gog and Magog, if they are exist, and the guy he built the dam, and now we have images of everything in the world. Yeah, hello?
Are you going to read or no? When I called you, I said. Are you going to read or no? Are you going to read or no? I said I have. I answered you. I'm gonna answer you. We made an agreement. We made an agreement. Okay, what's the agreement? Tell me. The agreement is I. You ask me a question. I ask you a question. But don't hang up at me again. It's very unfair. The agreement is I. You ask me a question. I answer you, and you ask me. I ask you a question. You answer me. Correct. Very good, but I okay. answered you about Christianity. No, you did, you did not answer. You, you know. did not answer. I answer you about my Bible. But, but I, I I'm you, done. I called you. You called me. I am done. I called you. Yes. I am. I am done. When I called you, I said I, I answered you about my question. Bible. I'm done. I am Muslim. My question is done. I'm Muslim. I will answer ten questions from Abdul, you. Just okay. answer me one. Did you ask me a question and I answer you already or not? No, you didn't. That's what I'm saying. What do you I'm mean I did not? For you okay, let me, okay, let me repeat fair, the answer. Let me repeat fair, the answer. Let me repeat the answer. Can, okay, you, can okay, I repeat the answer? Good, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, of course. Jesus, he speak of his father, that the father is the one who knows the day of judgment. For the son, he have a duty, and his duty is to be the judge. The father is the one who announces. This is why there's a father and there's a son. Okay. The son, he is sent by the father to do a certain job, and the job is to be the judge okay, over all the flesh. Okay. The father is the one okay. who decides the day of judgment. So we as a Christian, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and this is what okay. we believe. So three God. Now we don't have so three, three God. God. You are a liar again. Don't but make, you just don't say, make things you, up. Don't make listen, things I'm up. Just stop, stop, stop. Say, no, you are not question. <laughs> I'm just asking you. Not, you are not. You okay. are not question. Okay. You are making things now. You are making things up. Okay. 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 You know, okay. I, I will Finish go. With, I will okay. go okay. with you. Can you show me one verse okay. in the Bible that says we believe in three gods? No, because this is you. So this you are a liar. So you are a liar making things up. Okay. Let me let me help but, you more. Okay. No, wait, let wait, me wait, help wait, you wait, more. Let me help you. Answer. Let me help you more. I'm not finished. Can you show me I'm one verse finished. in the Quran no, saying no, that the Christian believe in three gods? Why are you going to Quran? Because I'm we are we talking so about the Bible. So you are a liar yes, again. So neither the Quran, neither the Bible support what? your claim. That's mean you are a liar. What? Let me ask you again. Read, 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 is it read, true read that the whole Bible read, says we have one God? By your Christians, so your you see why I hang up on you? You are a coward. You are a little boy. And you don't want to just shut up, son of Muta. I just go. You don't want to let me talk. <laughs> yeah, what? We laugh at you. Thank you for calling. You believe in three God. Okay, can you show me one verse in the Bible that says we believe in three God? Hey, no. Okay. What about your Quran? No. So? Are you a liar? They have no dignity. And he will never accept to talk about his religion because it's an embarrassment. For us, we have no problem. God the Son, God the Father. Very simple. The Son have a duty. And he is going to fulfill his duty. The Father, he is the one who will announce the day of judgment. That's all. So when Jesus was on earth, God the Father was sleeping? You are just a stupid fool. There is no logic. It's a mockery. You cannot do mockery with me. I will mock your prophet with the floor. When the Quran says that Jesus, he can tell you what you hide, and Muhammad, the Quran says that Muhammad cannot tell you what you hide, then we need to ask ourselves, why Muhammad he mentioned that Jesus he can tell you what you eat, what you store in your houses, yet Muhammad, who is a prophet supposedly, and according to Muslim, he is the most beloved, favorite prophet of Allah, yet he cannot tell you when they ask him a question and said, Okay, listen, listen, don't ask me questions. I tell you that I do not know the treasure of Allah, nor I know what is hidden, nor I do I tell you I am an angel. So what are you? What are you exactly? How come Jesus did not say the same? How come Jesus did not say in the Quran? Listen carefully. I do not have the treasure of Allah. Nor I have the knowledge of the hiding. Nor I can tell you any, why, why Jesus did not say the same. Muhammad himself did not dare to say that Jesus do not know. So he come to us with verses in the Quran saying, yes, Jesus, he can tell you what you hide. He can tell you what nobody knows. That is Jesus, my friend. So when a Muhammad and he says, so you have three gods, and we say to him, can you prove it? 
He said, no, so you are saying? No, I do not saying that. This is our belief. Our belief, we have one God. One God. You are the one who have many gods. And let me prove it to you that Allah have gods. Allah has many gods. I hang up on people only if they don't want to. I, I answer my question. Now it's time for you to answer me. You don't want to answer. <laughs> Coward. They never keep a promise. Muslims never keep a promise. They are following Muhammad. They never keep a promise. Answer. He's not answering. Potato. <clears throat> Allah do not know the day of judgment. He have no idea. And notice that Muhammad, he claimed that the Messiah is the one who will come in the day of judgment and he is coming back. That is telling us the whole story. If Jesus is not God, why he is alive until now and all human being is dead? Muslims cannot answer. They cannot. Can you believe Abdul? Let us see this guy here. <clears throat> He's not answering. See the Muslim the Muslim game is it doesn't matter what you say as an answer. Still, you did not answer. So he want to keep talking about the same topic for the coming century. Because he's terrified we will go and speak about his books. Because his books proving him to be a liar. Neither in Islam, neither in Christianity, says that the Christian believe in three gods. Let us call him this guy again. Hello? Yes. Can you stop uh, hanging on me? Why are you not fair? Why are you scared? Well, you are not answering. You see who's scared. Are you going to read what I showed you or not? But I'm asking you one question. Why not are answering? You, I answered you. Why are you going to answer or not? Yes, I'm going to answer. So my okay. question is: So okay, I, when I, you I, I, don't knows, don't repeat the question because I answered it already. Now I'm asking you: When Jesus, no, when when when, when, the Quran, said, when the Quran says that Jesus he knew the future and what you hide in your houses, did Allah make a mistake? No, but you have not answered me when you I say that. You. It's not up to you. It's not up to you. Son, don't waste my time. Wait, don't waste my time, this, please. You see, I'm trying to talk to you as an adult. I answered you. That's okay. my answer. You don't need to accept it. Okay. I answered you. Yes. Now, okay, I'm, so you answer now it's my turn. It's my me, turn. Me, me, I answered me, you, and you do not have to accept. Is. You lied. You okay. said we believe in three gods. And I asked you, does the Bible anywhere says we believe in three gods? You said no. So you are lying. You are making things up. So now I'm asking no. you, please, after okay, I answer you, you, are, you willing, say, are you willing to so answer me? Did your Didn't prophet? You did your? Can we finish this? Did your prophet lie? When he said that Jesus is coming down as a judge. You lie, you lie, you lie. You never answer me. But can you answer me first? I did not answer him yet. I did not. Don't try. You did not answer me yet. That's it. <laughs> Coward. The whole idea is don't put my prophet in the box. Don't. I'm terrified to read my stupid prophet words.
I'm terrified to read the stupid Allah words. You did not answer me. So what I did, so you will call me again and they will ask me the same question and I will repeat the same answer and you keep saying you did not answer me. <laughs> what, a, what a joker you are. Look at this potato who call himself prophet of Allah. He admit that he have no idea about the hidden things. And the one who is saying that to him is Allah. Allah told Muhammad, tell them that you are Muhammad, you are an idiot, you know nothing. So why you call him prophet? In the same time, the same God, he says, that Jesus can tell you what you hide in your houses. He can tell you what you eat. He can tell you what you did and what you did not do. Or you were going to do. How? He don't want to read it. It's an embarrassment. And when Allah he speak about the day of judgment and then the day of judgment never come. He don't want to talk about it because this is the same reason he's trying to say that Jesus is not God. The reason what? Well, Jesus do not know the day of judgment. This is his reason. But Allah do not know the day of judgment too. And there's tons of prophecies in the Quran coming from Allah supposedly proving to, to us that Allah is a false God. Every verse in the Quran actually proving to us that Muhammad is a false prophet and Allah is a false God. You see, I don't want to give Allah a hard question. Allah do not even know what the Christians believe. To the point he think that we Christian, our Trinity is Mary and Allah and Jesus. How does God will know the future anyway? He did not even know the past. He did not even know the present. This is the stupid Quran. Saying that Allah, he said to Jesus, did you say to your people to worship me? And my mother, instead of Allah, which a Christian church worship Mary as God, and Allah as God, and Jesus as a son, and Mary is his wife. This is book of God? If this is a book of God, so what is the book of the tomato and potato? The God of Islam, even he mentioned wrong information about both Christianity and Judaism. You see, we're not talking about the, about the future now. Even in the present, this guy, he do not know what the Christian believe. He claimed that the Jews believe that Uzair is a son of Allah. We cannot find one single book, one single Jewish book, say such a thing, that there is a group of people or even one person. He believe in God, his name is Uzair, and he is a son of Allah. And the Jews, they don't believe in Allah anyway. That's why we find them in the Quran, making fun of Allah, saying Allah, his hand is sealed, or, you know, like he's tied up. A person who believes in Allah will not make fun of Allah, obviously. Chapter 5, verse number 64. The same is stupid Allah, in one verse he says, the Christian believe in the Trinity, in other verse he says, the Christian believe that the Messiah is Allah. But this is not true. We don't believe that the Messiah, if I, if I take the word Allah here, the stupid Muhammad, we don't believe in Allah anyway. 
A Muslim, he might say to you, do you know in the Arabic translation, they use the word Allah. This is a translation, and this is a false translation. This is why I'm laughing at Allah. If Allah is my God, I will not make fun of it. You see, the Jehovah's Witnesses, I don't make fun of the word Jehovah they use or Allah Elohim, because this is what, what I mentioned in my book. But we don't believe in Jehovah's Witnesses believe. In the stupid Quran, the God of Islam, he says, in one verse, chapter 5, verse 17, they disbelieve those who say that the Messiah, son of Maryam, is Allah. In Arabic, it doesn't say God is the Messiah. It says Allah is the Messiah. Change the translator, you will see how stupid this Quran is. Christians don't believe that the Messiah is the Father. And if the Messiah in the Quran is Allah, so who is the second person? Who is the third person? And who is the first? Surely in disbelief are those who say Allah is the Messiah. So take a note. If the Christian believe that the Messiah is Allah, and Allah is saying them don't believe in the Trinity, so where is the Trinity now? They just said the Messiah is Allah. There is not a single Christian believe that the Messiah is the Father. We believe he is a son. And that is additional error, proving that the one who wrote the Quran, not only he do not know the day of judgment, he do not even know people who live at that time what they believe. Not a single Christian believe in such a thing. And then if we ask the Muhammadan, and this is the topic today, where is Jesus now? They say to you that Jesus is alive. Question, why Jesus is alive, Muhammad is dead? Why Allah did not save Muhammad the same as he saved Jesus, as you claim? No answer. They will talk about anything but they will not love anyone to talk about their cult. You mentioned something about our Bible, we answered you. We Christian, we know very well what is written in our book, and we love our book, and people are laughing at your claim. When Jesus says, I am God's son, clear word. When Jesus says, I am the living God, clear word. When Jesus asked the Jews, who you, what, you, what you say of a Christ? They said, he's a son of David. He said to them, well, if he's a son of David, then how David called him God? Clear word. False Islam. If we ask the Muslims, who is the one who can forgive sin? They will say Allah. A lie. Allah, he could not forgive sin of Muhammad. And this is the proof. Allah was asking other Allah to forgive sin of Muhammad. While in the Bible, Jesus says, which one is easier? To say to him, your sin, go and your sin is forgiven. Or to say, go and walk up and carry your bed. A person who cannot walk. This is the stupid Quran, chapter 48, verse number 2. Allah saying, may Allah forgive you, forgive you a sin. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? Why Allah is asking another God, his name is Allah, saying, may Allah forgive your sin. Who is the one who is talking? They say to you, Allah. Okay. If the one is talking, he is Allah. Why he say, may Allah forgive your sin? He's making a wish in the birthday cake.
when somebody is a Muslim, he says, it's kind of sad, it's impossible for a Christian to prove a Christianity. And why? Because Jesus says, I am God's son. But it is very easy to prove Islam because Allah, he promised you endless penis. Very easy. It's not hard to prove Islam. Only through God, they promise endless penis and endless vagina. Only through God, they promise you 80,000 little boys in heaven around you. It's impossible for the Christian to prove a Christianity, but it's easy to Muslim because we found the sun set in a muddy water. And we found the, where the sun rising from. It's impossible for the Christian to prove a Christianity. But Jesus is the one who made the blind see. He walked in the water. Even you have a, a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of Al-Ma'idah, where Jesus fitted thousands of people from nothing. And he made the blind see, and even he resurrected people from death. And even the Quran says that Jesus, he created it from the mother bird, and he breathed into it. So Jesus in the Quran is a creator. But it's impossible for the Christian to prove a Christianity. It's very sad. But it's very easy to prove that sperm coming from the backbone, brother, of the man. Yes. Let me touch my backbone. Okay, I got some sperm there. Proven to be true. It's a proven that women, they have a sperm coming from their ribs, brother. Christians cannot bring such a thing. And this is why the Quran says, who can make Quran like this? Nobody. Have you ever heard of a scientist saying that the sperm became a congealed blood? Have you ever heard of anyone, any crazy person saying that congealed blood, which is dead blood, will grow and become a baby? It's very sad. Christians cannot prove their God. Muslims, they can. They can, brother. A Muhammad is saying, you worship a human, well, this is a proving that you are an idiot again. Why? Because if Jesus is just a human, why he can resurrect people from death? Guys, look at this stupidity. If we ask the Muslims, why the Muslim Christian believe in Jesus as God? They say to you, because uh, Jesus, he did many miracles, so they think he is God. Okay. Okay, Abdul, who is the one who gave Jesus those miracles. Allah, Allah gave him miracles. Okay, hold on. So now Muhammad, he did not have any of the miracle of Jesus. That's why nobody confused that Muhammad is God. Actually, he don't even fit to be in the post office. He's a thief. But because Jesus was so good and his life is full of miracle, now the Christians are confused. Yes, yes, brother. So when Jesus here is wrecked people from death, who gave him that power? Allah! Why he did that? To make people believe. Believe in what? That he's a prophet. Really? Okay, what about, who is the one who gave Jesus the power to create from the mother bird? Allah! Okay, why Allah he did this? So they believe. Believe in what? That he's a prophet. But now he became a creator. The one who can create from the mother bird, that is not a miracle of a human. That is God. And if the purpose of this is to make a Christian believe in Jesus as prophet, Allah fail which are proven to us again that Allah is a stupid. Don't Allah knew that when Jesus have all this power, that will make the Christian think he's God? Are we following people? Why do we believe that Jesus is God? If Jesus just make a speech, we will not believe him anyway, right? So what? He can say, I'm son of God. 
But Jesus, he can do what nobody can do. And if this power was given by Allah as Muhammad and they claim, that's mean the one who made us believe in Jesus as God is a stupid Allah. He gave him more power than he should. Are we following with me? If the reason to believe in Jesus is the extreme power he has, which no man has ever, and if the one who gave this power to Jesus is Allah, as the Quran claim, that means the stupid Allah do not know the future. Bingo. Because if he knew the future, he knew that he, this is too much. Bingo. And if Allah do not know that this is too much, bingo. And he do not know that this is will make the Christians believe in Jesus as God, bingo. That means Allah is a donkey, bingo. Or we did not believe in Jesus as God just because he said, I am God's son. We believe in Jesus as God for he did what God do. Number one, he was holy. And the stupid Quran confirmed that in chapter 19, verse 19. The angels came to Mary and said, actually the Muslim, they say it's an angel. In different verses says our spirit came to Mary and says to her, I am here to give you the glad tidings of a holy son. He's holy. Son. How he is holy. And why only Jesus is born, but he have no father? They can't answer. What is the point of this miracle? Nothing really in Islam doesn't make any sense. Because no way to prove it or disapprove it. My mother, she can claim that she gave birth to me and she was a virgin too. Your mother, she can make the same claim. What the point of this miracle? This miracle only will make a sense only if it is in Christianity. For this man is the son of no man. And for he is holy, he is not coming from sexual relationship due to his holiness. So when the stupid Muhammad, he take a story from the Bible and he insert it in the Quran, he got himself busted. If there is any reason that Jesus do not have a father, a Muhammadan, he will say to you, the Quran says, well, Jesus is the same as Adam. Allah said to him, be, and he was. But this will prove again that the stupid Quran is a stupid Quran. Because neither, Allah, neither Adam, neither Jesus, according to the Quran, was created by saying, be, and he was. In the case of Adam, Allah, he made mud. He mixed dust with water. And he made Adam by his two hands. He used his two hands. He did not say be and he was. Read and love. How Allah created Adam, the one who made the Quran, is a certified idiot. In one verse saying, well, Jesus is the same as Adam. Allah, he said to him, be, and he was. In different verse, he says, I made him by my hands. And then after I made him by my hands, I breathed into him. By my two hands, by the way. Do you see the word here, both my hands? Do you see it? They say to us, Allah is not a human. Right? And this is why the Muslims don't want to talk about Allah knowledge versus Jesus knowledge. 
Jesus have a knowledge and the Quran confirm that he knew what you are hiding in your houses. He can read your mind. And this is confirmed in the Bible. Quran confirmed that Allah has zero knowledge. In one hand, the Muslim, they say to us, you worship a man. And then we find that Allah have two hands. He have five fingers in each. He have a shin, he have a face, and he is a monkey. And this is why those cowards, when they call, they think by flooding you by talking and repeating the same thing forever, they can avoid us from exposing their garbage. Do we have any Muslim? He is a growing adult. He would like to call us. Anyone? And where are you, my uh, Eliza? As you see, here we go. The five minutes became one hour, two hours, and no Muslim dare to answer. Are you going to leave Islam, Eliza? No Muslim show up for rescue. Muslims never keep their promises. I said one question from me, one question from you. You accept? Okay, okay. Once a Muslim, he called me and he agreed that we will speak about for about Christianity for, I don't know, one hour or half hour, and then I talk about Islam. He hang up after I finished. Any Mohammedan? Yeah, pray for this lady, Eliza. Obviously, she is being deceived by this stupid cult. You know, I don't think she is a bad person. I mean, what she is saying is not good for me, for sure. But there is reasons. She is being deceived. She's been told that this is good. Do we have any Mohammedan? Any Muhammadan? Do Allah knew the future? No. Do Allah even knew how Muhammad will die? You see, our topic is about how Muhammad he died, right? And we showed you that Muhammad, he said it clearly, he died by poison. But look, Allah, because he is, there's no Allah. I mean, this is Muhammad making Quran. Because he was not sure how he will die, he said. Read and laugh. Please read and laugh. Have you ever heard of a God who do not know how his prophet will die? Jesus, he mentioned how he will die. He mentioned who is going to give him up, who will betray him. He mentioned even the timing when they come. Is that true, Christians? He mentioned all those things before they happen. This is Muhammad speaking that Allah told him this. If he dies or killed, have you ever heard of such a prophecy? Imagine I claim to be a prophet and now my God is going to tell me how I will die in the future. Then I say to you, if I die or get killed, is there a third option? If there is any third option, but because the coward Muhammad, he do not know the answer. So he decided to cover his ass. So he said, if I die or get killed, because he do not know how he will die. Listen. Shouldn't Allah here say is if he got killed? As long as we confirm that he got killed by poison? Why he is saying if he die or get killed?
because simply he do not know how he will, what his end will be. He might die from normal death, he might get killed. You have no idea. What kind of religion this religion is? Any Mohammedan would like to call us? Last last call, in case you like to get some versions. I have connection. I am an Arab. I can speak to Allah, and He can increase the size of your private part too, depending on how much you fight me. Anyone? Actually, we should make a video by itself. Do Allah and you the judgment day? And then you will see what will happen to the Muhammadan. You don't. And we, are, we showed you already many examples. Allah do not know the judgment day. He do not know how the baby is made. They do not know where the sun set. Gog and Magog, you know, Allah, he knew, uh, Allah is a very good historian, and we showed you that many times. Like as, as an example, Allah, he knew the story of how Solomon, he went to school, and he learned the language of the birds. This is God? God who created the heaven and the earth and the galaxies. He is telling us about the prophet he went to school of Hori Buter and he taught him the language of the birds. This is God. This is a very cute God. And there were gathered before Solomon, his host of jinn and men and birds. How God he knew this unless he is God. He discovered that Solomon, he have an army of chickens. You tell me. If Allah is not God, how he learned that Solomon, he learned the language of the birds. I am Solomon. I, I speak the language of the birds. And what make it more funny, that Solomon, he speak the language of the birds, and then two meters after, he understand the language of the ants. How Allah knew this if he is not God? In case you do not know, ants don't talk. They communicate, yes, by vibration or chemical. So no matter what language Suleiman he learned, language of birds or learned of a chicken, ants are mute and they are deaf. In Arabic it says قالت نملة قالت means she said O oh, ants enter your dwelling lest Suleiman destroy you and what is driving me crazy about this Quran is how she knew that the name of the king is Solomon I mean she is an ant at the end of the day See, listen, the ant, she saw an army. She is warning her friends about this army. I got it. But the ant, she knew the name of the king. That is driving me crazy. Muslims, do you think this ant, she watch Fox News? How she knew the name of the king? To be fair, Christian does not support science, but when it's come to morality, it's better than what Islam. Thank you, Mr. My friend, to be fair. But who, first of all, who said to you that we believe in God based on science? Your science is a joke, and I can prove it to you. A little virus is making you do poo poo in your pen. 
So don't talk about your science. You don't have none. Science. What science? A little mosquito make you do poo poo. And when they make a medicine for you, they say to you, and they speak about it fast. This medicine can cause heart attack, bleeding. So this medicine will kill you, is made to heal you. And they call it science. If you go right now and watch the commercial on YouTube about any medicine you wish, any anything, you will see, okay, you have, you have, uh, you have a heart, uh, you have a headache, take this medicine, will stop the headache immediately. You have migraine, but be careful. This medicine can cause heart attack, liver bleeding, stomach bleeding, serious, uh, or cancer. I mean, all of this to stop headache. I will get all those illness because of this science. I didn't see science. We don't believe in God because of science. Which science says that a woman, she can give birth and she is a virgin? We believe this is not science. That's why it's called miracle. And you yourself, your science can't explain anything. You have theories. Science. Even when you go to the clinic of, uh, of a dentist, he make you sign 10 papers and he make you feel that you are going to die in his chair. Because obviously he is so sure from his science. But no, no, you have to sign here before you go. I mean, what I would do, I would take off my teeth, right? Yeah, exactly. You have to sign here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there it says, read it. It says you might die. You are not responsible. So we don't believe in God because of science, and science proves nothing really. Science is subjective of knowledge, which is temporary. However, we have verses in the Bible speaking about the globe of the earth hang on nothing thousands of years ago. It took those scientists thousands of years after to figure it out. But we never say our book is a book of science. It's not. When somebody says to you, the Big Bang, and then what is the Big Bang? They say to you, something explode. But how something explode if there was nothing? I mean, this is a very stupid theory. If was, there was nothing, how nothing explode? You say, no, there's energy. Okay, you just say this is what created everything. And do you have a proof? It's a theory. Here we have maybe some atheists, and I find atheists, by the way, they are cute. The, the problem in my town, they don't allow us to grow atheists in the backyard. An atheist, he come to argue and debate with you that he used to be an ape. My friend, you won, you are a monkey, what I can say? I give up. The only bad thing, I don't have bananas. So thanks to Joe Biden, there's no banana in the shelves. Even the one who want to speak about science, he's trying to convince you that he is an, he's an animal. And he used to be a monkey. Okay, you are a monkey. Once I was debating an atheist, he got me busted. He said to me, Christian Prince, do you like bananas? You know, for me, with good heart, I did not think about it. I said, yes. He said, see, you used to be a monkey before. Can you believe it? He got me busted. And not only that, he said to me, Christian Prince, where are you from? I said, from the Middle East. He said, aren't you very hairy? He said, extremely hairy. Even once they kicked me out from the swimming pool because they thought I'm wearing a fur. But it was just my hair. He said, see, this is the proof that originally you are a monkey. Atheist. The funny is, the Muslim, they tried to prove to you that Jews, Allah made them monkeys. Atheist, they tried to prove to you that a human they used to be monkeys. Two opposite direction. But obviously, both are lost their mind. 
if those he used to be a monkey, they become a human. Why do we still have monkeys? Shouldn't we all be out of them? All of them became a human now? Huh? Do we have any Abdul? Mayday, Mayday. Any last Abdul? Last call. We will take one more call. For a snack. I'm hungry. Allah, he knew the future, brother. Allah, he knew. And then Allah, he tell us what nobody knows, brother. Do you know that the first school opened in the earth for teaching her reporter? It was made by Allah. Do you know that? And now if a Muslim call me, I said to him, read. He said, I will not read. I call you to ask, to ask question. I cannot believe it that there is a God. He claimed that he sent two angels down to earth to open her reporter school. The same guy will call again, and he will tell me, I, you did not answer me. I didn't. Are you sure? Let us see. We will try with this Abdul. Yeah, Har Har Harut, what do you mean? Who is Harut? I said, yeah, hello. Hello, how are you, my friend? I'm good, how are you? I'm fine. What do you think about the story of Harut and Marut? You lied about me. You cut the phone on, on me. You cut the phone, and then you tell everyone oh. you I cut the phone, I a liar. I, I cut have, everyone I, to I, cut the fire, I a liar. What does that mean? So are you going to read? I answered you. Are you going to answer or not? Do you think, what do you think of Harut and Marut? <laughs> See, so now you jump to Harut If you Marut, don't huh? answer me, I will ask Harut Marut to make a spell on you and will make you divorce your wife. Do you understand? I don't have a wife, but if you have okay, a Okay, in the future, that will happen to you. Is it true that must... Allah, is it true that Allah, he sent two angels to teach, open a school, to teach magic, and the purpose is to make the husband and the wife fight? Yes or no? Uh, yes, I can answer that. But okay, go ahead. Answer... Okay, you answered me first. Is I answered you already. God? I answered you already. Are you are you are you, are you going to stay? Are you going to stay as a kid? Okay, let me let me use my black magic now. Uh, is it true that your prophet, by the way, was infected by black magic, and he imagined himself having sex with the wife, but in fact it was the pillow? Jump from one thing. Okay, CCP, you jump from one I thing answered, to another. I answered you, and you don't want to answer about anything. Okay, you know what? I will change the topic for you. You are the one who no. said, you are the one who said, but, you are going to talk about knowing the future. Do your God, Allah, know the future? Uh, yes, he knows the future, but Jesus okay. did not. So, okay, no, okay, no problem. I answer you about that. It's up to you, no problem. I answer about that. So let us go and see if Allah knows the future. Is that okay? No, but, but first tell so me So you don't how, want to talk about uh, it. So you, so yes, you, I do. So you break your, you break I, your promise. I answered you already. No. And I have nothing more to I, say. That's it. I, I'm done. I answer you. Who cares if you accept or not? I answered you. Are you going to listen? Be a man. You promise me. You promise me. Are you going to keep your promise or not? But are you going to keep your promise? I answered you already. I'm done. No, but are you are you going to keep your promise? I answered you. Yes, I keep my promise. Did I answer you? How? But you said you answered me three three God. Now I'm confused. Even more confused. Okay, so here we go. You are more confused because you are a donkey. It's not my fault. We never said here three is God. You know, you're just a donkey. Get lost. Potato, go do muta, go. And now let me use the authority of Harut and Marut on you. You don't, they don't want to talk about Islam because Islam is an embarrassment. And if the problem is Jesus do not know the day of judgment, this is a problem for you. Well, Jesus, he is the judge in the judgment day. That make him God alone. Because only God can judge. Because only God can know what you are hiding from him. So when your stupid prophet agreed that Jesus will judge people, Hakam al he said. Absolute just and justice. 
Who can do that except Jesus? Who is God? You see, when you come in the front of judge, you can lie to the judge. You can even fool the judge. If you get him two false witnesses, he will believe you. If you kill somebody and two people witness that you were with them, even they are lying, they're out. But you cannot do that with God, for he knew everything. So when the Quran says, and when the stupid Muhammad in the Hadith says, Jesus will judge in the judgment day, that confirm who is Jesus. When the Quran says that Jesus knew what you are hiding in your houses, that confirm who is Jesus. And when your God says that Harut and Marut are sent by Allah to open a school in the Babylon Tower, Allah is being Hori Booter. This Abdul is worried about Jesus, if he is God or not. But he is not worried about his prophet being a child molester. Not worry about the prophet says any believing woman she want to give her vagina to me so I can boom boom her. He's not. He's not worried about God. He went to the tower of Babylon. And he sent two angels. But listen carefully. Those angels will not teach you magic unless you sign a disclaimer. I'm serious. They say to you, before they teach you, when they teach anyone, those angels, they will not teach you unless they say to you, we are only for a trial to disbelieve not by learning magic from us. Like, what the heck? So learning magic from them, make them disbelieve? So why you are teaching them magic? And then they give them the reason for them to be sent by Allah. They said, and the people learn from them by which they cause separation between the man and his wife. Allah, he sent two angels to open a school to teach us magic so we can increase the number of divorce. This is the reason of divorce. Somebody put a spell on you. I will put a spell on all of you and you will get divorced even if you are a single. What the heck? That is God. Hmm. All right, I think we are done for today. Do we have a good time, guys? Eliza, did you do you want to call to leave Islam? Are you feeling like you want to leave Islam? If you like to call and announce that you are out of Islam, I will be happy for you. And don't worry about people, you know. We will pray for you anyway. No, I wasn't speaking in tongue. I was making, I was making the spell on you. You know. Okay, if you don't believe me now, go to the uh, okay, go to the living room. Try to speak to your wife. She will shout at you. And let, guess what? She will say to you, "Are you happy now? You spend the night listening to this guy, this Arab guy who don't even speak good English. I cannot take it no more. I'm leaving. Just wait. My spell will work. Hello." Hello. Yes, Eliza, how are you? I'm okay. So what do you think? Your brothers, you know, they could not answer me. What we can do? I do have an answer. You have the answer? Yeah, if you go to chapter 3. Okay. Chapter 3, where in the Quran? Verse, yep. Okay, what verse? Verse 195. 195. Okay. Tell me about it, what it says. It says, male or female. You're both equal in reward. What does that mean? What does this have to do with our topic? You said that we had less rewards because of menstruation. 
No, you don't have a reward at all. You will go to hell. But in the Quran it says, we're both equal. You are not equal. First of all, God, he promised men a lot of women in heaven. Did God promise you a lot of men in heaven? But he's not going to say everything. No, he said that already. He said that Allah, he promised men, women, who nobody touched their private part and trying to be not to be rude using the faithy language he used. So he said, Yatmuthahun, which means nobody made them ble bleed in their vagina. Correct? I don't know. Well, I know. This is the Quran, chapter 55, verse number 56. Chapter 55, but, verse number 74. Now you mentioned to me chapter 3, not what, what verse? 195. Okay, 195, this is a contradiction. Because if women and men, they are equal, then you should have the same as the men have, correct? But we do. No, you don't. The, the, the man will have versions, you will not have versions, do you? We can ask for it. No, you cannot. Allah, he decide. You How yourself, you, know? you yourself, you will be in the lap of a Muslim man. And not only that, he have 72 versions and he will spend 70 years with each one of them. So if we calculate the numbers, do you have a phone to calculate with me? Okay. Okay. So when Muhammad, he said, every woman, let us open the calculator. The people, they can help us in the chat. So if every, every woman, uh, she will, if every, every, every time a, a Muslim, he will have sex with his wife, uh, he will spend 70 years just for the orgasm. So let us do this. Uh, calculator, let me open it. Why are you telling me about this? To show you that this is not what, uh, you know, this is not, uh, not what you just said. Because the man, he is spending his time with a lot of women, and you don't have, you have only one man. And the Quran saying clearly that you will be jailed in the tent of your husband, which he have a lot of women, correct? Not me. You are a Muslim, aren't you? Not me, the, um, the Hural Ain. No, you and them, and that's the Quran, is it clear? No. What do you mean, no? That was the Huris. Well, my, my friend, no, it says with them, there will be women who they are jailed in their tents. This verse doesn't say Huris or anything. If we read, we will say that all the wives of a Muslim man, they will be re in restrained, jailed inside their tents. The verse in the front of you, chapter 37, verse number 48. Mm. Wait. And do you know anywhere where the Quran says you will have men to sleep with? No. You will be sleeping with one man, and this man, he will have a lot of women beside you. Let me see one second. They're talking about maidens, not me. No, this is you included. Let us explain it. Here we go. We know, you know, you know that Muhammad, he can explain the Quran better than you and me, right? Yeah. Okay. We go and see what Muhammad, he said. And by the way, the number, the number of uh, females, this is depend in how how good how bad the Muslim is. The lowest, the lowest Muslim, he will have seventy two. The lowest. Uh, let us see here. Um, here we go. Muhammad he said. Swearing by Allah, the lowest of the people of paradise in position is the one with 80,000 servants and 72 wives. He shall have a tent of pearls. Do you see it? And then different no. hadith says, different hadith says, 
that 72 wives, 70 is the virgins, and two wives of his wives in earth. But what has that got to do with deficiency in this planet? Well, what this, what you gave me have to do with deficiency in the planet too. Because if your prophet said the majority of people of hellfire, there will be women, that's mean you might be included. Those no, because our sins, our deeds are equal. How you are equal? Okay, if you are equal, then it should not be the majority of the people of hell are women. Because the Quran comes first, not the What hadith. comes first? The Quran. Okay, let us let us go by the Quran. So when the Quran says, according to you, the Quran comes first, not the Hadith. But isn't it the Quran says the Quran is a Hadith? Yeah, but it's the most reliable. But it's a Hadith anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to look at that one first. Okay, so according to, uh, you know, in Islam today, the man, he can marry four wives, right? Yeah. Okay, you said the Quran says we are equal. Okay. So how you are equal, but he can have four, you can have only one. Because back in the day, the women weren't working that much. But, so they couldn't but, provide but, uh, for their families. This is not a reason. Muhammad himself, he used to work for Khadija. Which means Muhammad himself, he is making his income from a woman. That is not an excuse. That's mean Khadija, she can have four husbands because as you see, Muhammad, he cannot make money. He have to work for Khadija. So now Khadija, she can afford it. So she can have four Muhammad. Was she rich? She was very rich. That's why Muhammad is working for her. How do you know she was rich? You Muslim says that. The hadith and stories. She was the most rich woman in Quraysh. So if the woman she is, if the man, because he have money, he can have four wives. Well, that's mean if a woman she have money, then she have she can have four wives, four husbands. What is the fair? If Islam making you, treating you equally, then you should have four husbands too. Don't you like to have four husbands? But they were allowed because it was a long time ago. Is it the Quran is for every time? You are the one who mentioned to me that Quran says you are equal. It was at that time. No, like they couldn't provide for their families because they didn't. Who, work. who said so? I just gave you an example of Khadija. Can Khadija have four Muhammad? Yeah, but he was prophet. So what? A, a, a prophet should God provide to him, not his wife. But he did make Khadija so. He did provide her. He provided her with what? He could not even have uh, give her babies. No, he provided Prophet Muhammad what with pro Khadija. So his job is to be a prophet and she is the one who spent his, her money on him. But Allah created her. Okay, so what if Allah created her? Look, the Quran says, because men they spend in their property on women, therefore... The women, they have to be obedient, and even the man, he can beat them, correct? No, because in a hadith, it says, the best of you are those who are best to the wives. By beating them, the best of you is the one who is good to his wife. How? You force her to obey you. You give her food. That's it. Isn't it Muhammad who ordered you in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34, to beat their wives if you fear their rebellion? No, he said that those who beat the wives are not the best among you. No, actually, he said the opposite. Those who complain about their husband beating them is not the best of you. You are getting the hadith wrong. Wait, show me. Okay, give me the hadith you are talking about so be sure we are talking about the same thing. Because I want to put the hadith you are choosing in the screen, not mine. Um... Can I send you the link? Send me the text, not the link. I don't open link.
Go ahead. I sent to you. Okay. And now you will see that the hadith what is not what you are saying. I did not get anything. Um Do you see? Let us see. Okay, hang up. Maybe if you hang up, it's going to come. Hang up. Let us see. I think you are sending it to the wrong person. I receive nothing. Try again. Are you posting it in the in Skype or in the chat? Guys, is she posting it in the chat? Because I was looking in Skype. Okay, for some reason I get nothing from you. Uh, can you post it in the chat? I don't see anything. <clears throat> Pause the hadith in the chat. So everybody can see it. Guys, did she post anything? You see it? Okay, let me go. Oh, Riyadh al-Salihin, Hadith number 279. Okay. But you did not post the text, right? Okay, let us see. Hold on. Let me search for this book. Let me void the screen and everybody will start laughing in a second. Let me call you back. See, the reason they are deceived because Muslims, they add things is not in the text. Hello. Okay, I want you to read for me. Mm. This is the Sahih version of the Hadith. This is, you see in the screen, it says Sahih. Do you see it? Okay. Okay. Read for me. Those who do so, that is, those who take beating to their wives are not the best among you. Many women have gone around Muhammad family, complain against their husbands. They are not the best amongst you. Do you see it? No, it says those who take beating to their wives are not the best. This is a false translation. I'm showing you this is your Islamic website, the same website you are asking me to read from. And this is where he is copying from. This guy, this translation you see, the hadith you gave me from Riyadh al-Salihin, it says Abu Dawood was Sahih chain, correct? Mm. So, so this is a guy copying Abu Dawood. 
the hadith you gave me. But this is Abu Dawood. This is the original one. And it's Sahih. It says many women have gone around Muhammad family complain against their husbands. Those women, they are not the best amongst you. <laughs> so they lie. It's the opposite. Hi. So what those women, they are doing? They are complaining. Muhammad saying that those women who they are complaining, they are not the best amongst you. I know. So the hadith you gave me is the opposite from what they told you, and this is a false translation, the one you are reading. It's not the men who they are beating their wives are the, not the best, because the Quran gave them permission to, to beat their wives. And you will see here, Omar, read carefully. Okay. Omar here, it says, uh, Omar is saying that those women are doing, etc. Omar himself is the one who said, that a man should not be asked why he is beating his wife. لا يسأل الرجل Amar he said to confirm the hadith here and this is again from the same book you are asking me to read from Abi Dawood Omar reported the messenger of Allah saying a man will not be asked about why he beat his wife. Do you see it? Hmm... My is loading. Delays. No problem. It's going to open. Omar reported that the Prophet is saying a man will not be asked about why he beat. But it's not Bukhari. Okay, but the hadith you gave me is not Bukhari too. But it's Sahib Muslim. I, the hadith I gave you is Sahih. No, the hadith you say you gave me is not Sahih Muslim. It's Riyad al Salihin. But it's, it says it is you sahih. who no, it says Sahih in chain. This is not Sahih Muslim. The name of the book is Riyad al Salihin. Hadith number 279. This is the one you post in the chat, correct? I know, but it says Sahih. So. The, okay, and the, and the one I'm showing you is Sahih. And this is coming from Abu Dawood. The hadith you asked me to say. read, the hadith you asked me to read is from Abu Dawood book. This guy is just copying. And I just showed you what Abu Dawood he said. He said exactly the meaning. And now here, when Omar he says, uh, uh, a man will not be asked about why he is beating his wife. Uh, this is present to us what Islam teach. A man, he can beat his wife and nobody can question. Can anyone a question? Can anyone question a man for beating his wife in Islam? Why is your chat making fun of me? It's like one in the morning. Who is making fun of you? And they're saying I'm sleepy robot voice. Okay, I guess be easy. You know, let's finish the conversation with her. So anyway, uh, I, I cannot really tell you more than this. I mean, first of all, do you respect a man who beat you? No. Why not? Because it's not good. Why it's not good? I thought you, you you trust the Quran. No, it doesn't say that in the Quran. It says that in the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. Wait, let me check. One second. What number? Chapter 4, verse number 34. Mm. Well, it says lightly. Huh? It says lightly. Nowhere in the Quran says lightly. If the Quran saying the word lightly, I will shave my 25 meter beard. Can you show me the word lightly in the verse? Yeah, in Yusuf Ali. This is a false translation. Is it between two brackets? Yeah. Okay, this is why it's it's false. That's why it's between two brackets. Nowhere it says lightly. And secondly, so if I beat you lightly, is okay for you? But that's the last thing to do. Doesn't matter, last thing, or, and I am the one who decides that. The, the Quran never says first and second and third. This is false. 
I can jail you in your room. I can force you not to have sex with me as a penalty. I have four wives. I will sleep with the rest of them and they will throw you like a rat in your room, jail you. That's and not then, very nice. Well, this is what it says. Mm. Did anyone ever did beat you? Any man did beat you before? Maybe. How would you feel? Do you like it? No. Did you call the police for him? Yeah. Why you call the police? Because you're not allowed to do that. But if he's a Muslim, he's allowed. Aren't you a Muslim too? Yeah, but it wasn't lightly. Well, nowhere in the Quran it says lightly. Here we go. A woman, she came to Muhammad and her husband did beat her until he made her skin greener. Muhammad, he took the side of the man. And this is the hadith in front of you. They're telling me like I'm a child, but I can read the surahs if they want me to. Okay, listen. This is a woman. She came to Muhammad and he did beat her. You read with me. Aisha, she said. Uh, she showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. Is that a light beating? If somebody calls you green spots in your skin? No. Okay, so no, where the, why, they, why they lie to you and it says this is a green a light beating? Here we go. The man he did beat his wife until he made her skin greener than her clothing. Did Muhammad say to him, shame on you? Read the story. He took his side. Mm. I can give you the link. I will send it to you in your Skype. You take your time and read it. I don't want you to be in, in this, um, you know, false religion, Eliza. This is garbage. There's no God will teach such, such a thing. Jesus in the Bible, he taught us that the man, he should love his wife. The woman, she obey her husband, yes. But the man, he should sacrifice himself the same as a Christ. He give himself to the church. So the Messiah, he taught the Christian man, you are the Lord of your house. The women she obey you, but you should be as a Christ was for the church. He gave himself, he sacrificed himself. He is not your slave. You cannot harm her. Here, a woman she come to Muhammad seeking rescue, that her husband he did beat her, until her skin is greener than her clothes. Muhammad he took the side of the man against the women. And he said to her, if you think you can go back to your previous husband, you better know that you cannot go back until he tastes your juice and you taste his juice. Do you see how filthy is that? What do you think of a prophet of God telling the women that this man, he have to sleep with you and he have to taste your orgasm and you have to taste his orgasm. And then if he divorces you, you go back to your previous husband. Is that a good... Uh, Mm, that is to avoid divorce in the first place. What avoid divorce? The Muslim, they still divorce anyway. Here we go. The woman, she is divorced. Muhammad, he said to them, if you divorce three times, she can't go back to your previous husband, right? And this, you sleep with a different guy. So now, Muhammad, he did not save the marriage. And now the poor woman, she marry a new husband just to go back to her children. And now the new husband is beating her. There's a guy in the Egyptian TV, I showed you in the in the other day. He married 33 or 34 women. I forgot the exact number. And he is trying to fix the relationship with their husband. That's why he married them. Supposedly, he is a good guy. They pay him money to sleep with the divorced wife for a day or two or three. And then she can go back to her previous husband. I can actually I can show I can search for it right now in Google. Here we go. Yeah, but it's part of the religion. This is the religion. The religion says you cannot go back. You cannot go back to your previous husband. This. Huh? I already know about this. Okay, but isn't it your prophet? He says that you cannot back, go back to your husband unless you sleep with a different guy. Yeah. Okay. What about Muhammad? He punished the man for divorcing three three times. Why is why he's punishing the women? 
It's the woman now she have to find a new guy. And she is the one who have to take off her clothes and sleep with a stranger. And as you see, this woman, she is sleeping with a guy she don't like, she don't want to sleep with. He's forcing her for sex. So, if the man should be punished, because he is the one who divorced, then Muhammad should say to him, you know what, if you divorce three, three, three times, you can't even marry her again, or I will beat you. I will beat you 100 lashes. What, what in the world the wisdom of forcing the woman now to marry a new husband so she can go to the previous husband? What is fair about that? Here we yeah, go. I, even... I found it in the news. I found it in the news. Okay. I will show it to everybody. But even in the Bible, you have to stay. The woman has to stay at home to look after her family. What does have to do with our topic? Does the Bible says you beat your wife? No, but I'm just telling you how it was well, uh, Where she will go at that time? That she will work in Amazon? Women, they have to have only one job. It's their children. If they are farmers, they work in the field too. So while, while you are mixing things up, we are talking about women beating. So if, if, if you are against beating, the Quran allowed beating, and then you say to me that your husband or wherever you married from, he was your husband, the one who did beat you? No. Who was he? I don't want to talk about Okay. Him. You called the police for him. Yeah. Obviously, because you're against it, right? Yeah. Okay. But if you are married and you are an Islamic family, Islamic country, according to Islam, as we showed you, a man should not be asked why he is beating his wife. So if you call the police and you live, let us say, in Saudi Arabia, the police will say to you, well, a man should not be asked why he is beating his wife. Where does it say that? It's in, in the front of you. Oh, sorry, there's delays. Omar reported that the Prophet saying, which means the one who's saying that is Muhammad, a man should not be questioned why he is beating his wife. Hmm. But it doesn't say so he. Ah, here we go. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for calling. It doesn't say so he. That's it. The Quran says that, and now it doesn't say so he. It doesn't say so he. What we can do? A Muslim saying, uh, Arwa. أروى سين كلمة أضرب في الأرض أي إمشوا وسافروا وابتعدوا وعملوا. The Arwa is being smart, saying the word أضرب does not mean uh, beat them. So it look like your prophet and his companion, they are a bunch of idiots, do not know Arabic. So if it means stay away from them, why the Quran saying already stay away from them? Jail them in their room. And if the word أضرب هنا means stay, go away, it says أضربو هنا not أضربو في الأرض the potatoes and if we go and read all the interpretation of the Muhammadan are we going to find one of them agreeing with what you say? No so are they those people they are people who speak Arabic? Yes is the cousin of Muhammad who live in the time of Muhammad no Arabic? Yes is he a cousin of Muhammad? Yes is he the one who Muhammad, he prayed that Allah will make him the ink of the nation to explain the Quran? Yes. So all those yes, they were wrong, including your prophet. This is Ibn Abbas. I can show you Al-Jalalain, Al-Khurtubi, Al-Tabari, Ibn Kathir. So all of them now, they are wrong. And you are the one who knows what the word means. This guy is copying from a book of a woman, uh, she converted to Islam and she said, the Quran never says beat them, it says go away, travel from them. <laughs> no, my friend, I'm losing my patient. You see, I have, I, am a, I have a limited patient and almost I'm out of it. I cannot give a brain to someone who don't want to have a brain. Maybe you have more patient than me, you can go live. And Muslim, they will call you and you speak to them for, I'm here speaking now for the last, what? 
four hours and 24 minutes screaming and shouting and you are sitting drinking your coffee and tea and then you tell me to have more patience Hmm? I don't know what more patient I can do. So all Muslims agree. Muhammad the Hadith. I just showed you the Hadith is Sahih. The man he did beat his wife. Did Muhammad say to him even once, "Why in the world you are beating her"? Haru was saying, "Why you are speaking to people who don't have good knowledge? Call me. Show me your knowledge. Prove it." Instead of complaining. Taking hair from my beard, playing with it, saying, why your beard is so long? Call me and show me your beard. They, she have no beard. You are the man. Call. So you complain that she is calling, and I, you are complaining because I'm listening to her, but you yourself don't dare to call me because you're a potato. And this is the interpretation. And what make it more funny that those women, they did not do anything yet. In Arabic, it says, You fear they will do nushud. They did not do anything. Beat them. Strike them. And if they obey you, stop beating them. So Muslims these days who try to defend Islam, they fabricate tons of stories. It says in first, it says first, it says second, where is first? Where is second? Show me. I want to learn. Islam is man-made religion made by the man for the man. All of us, we knew that. Even heaven is the heaven of the man. There's a video. It's called The Description of Paradise. Made by the Dean Show. If you watch it, you will die laughing. Actually, once I played this video in a church seminar. Literally, especially with my comment, and you know how my comment is. You know, you know the thing. People did fall in the floor from laughing. When you go to heaven, brother, before you enter the heaven, there's two angels waiting for you. The first one, brother, will say to you, brother, welcome, brother. And they will give you a drink of water to drink. One will make you have diarrhea and all your guilt will come out. The other one will make you tall and will make you 33 years old like Jesus and 30 meters tall like Adam. And the funny in the video, the sheikh, he said to this other sheikh, nobody can describe for you the heaven. And let me describe it for you. I mean, a second ago, he said, nobody can describe the heaven. A second after, he says, let me describe it for you. And then when you enter the heaven, you do not need GPS. An angel will take you. I mean, if you if you watch the video, you will die laughing. This is a sheikh from Lazar University. Later, he was begging for money to stay in America, trying all the trick he can so he can stay in the country. Brother, brother, Allah every Friday will send you a card. Salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. It is a beautiful question actually because all of us longing for Jannah, the paradise. Some people call it paradise in English, some people call it garden in English. Um, we say Jannah. Now, the meaning of Jannah, something unseen, you cannot see. Hmm. Unseen. And then he will say, I cannot describe it for you. And then a second after, he will say, Let me describe it for you. The world, for example, the baby in the womb of the mother, we call it Janine. This means you cannot see the baby. The paradise, the paradise, because you cannot see the paradise, it's called a Jannah also. Okay, now we got it, we got it. Okay, tell us about the Jannah. 
you cannot see evil. You cannot see the word jinn. So the word jannah from something we cannot see right now, surrounded by something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us. Huh. And the Jannah, Allah prepared the Jannah Himself by His own hands. By His own hand. Take, take a note, not by His tail, by His own hand. Which hand? How do we get to Jannah? Because... Yeah, how we go to Jannah, go and kill some Christians, some Jews, and some Hindus. And lie to your wife, and lie to your friend, and lie to the enemy. And do some child molestation, like the Prophet. Will of Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He give us... A lot of ways to a lot of ways to go to heaven, brother. A lot, a lot of ways. Okay, describe for the Jannah. Can you describe it, please? More into detail on how to get to Jannah, but why don't you start to paint more of a vivid picture for our audience so they can really like start to see it because they see the dollar and now, they compare their Jannah to dollar. I mean, this is a good description. Dollar. Paint us a picture of Jannah. Let me tell you something here. Uh, in the Jannah, there's a hadith the Prophet وسلم, and that's why I mentioned this hadith in the beginning. So whatever you can imagine or speak uh, or describe the Jannah, you're not going to describe the Jannah the way is the Jannah is. Because the Prophet وسلم, say in an authentic, authentic uh, hadith, he say, في الجنة, in the paradise, ما لا عين رأت. There is no such eyes can even see. And this is copying, this is from the Old Testament. Continue. Something like the Jannah. وَلَا أُدْنٌ سَمِعَتْ Not even the ears, you cannot even hear about the true Jannah. But for sure in, in the Old Testament don't speak about Jannah. Anyway, continue. Because the Jannah is beyond what you are hearing. وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ You can't imagine, you can't see, you can't think about it. And now let, let Rawi, he will say, let me describe it for you. You cannot even imagine, you cannot even describe or... or you cannot even describe, brother. You cannot even describe. And a second after you said, let me describe it for you. Think what is the Jannah. Uh, before, let me describe something beautiful about your cat. He just said, I can't describe it for you. He just said that. And now he will describe for you how your castle look like. Tell me about the castle. Castle. Your castle in the Jannah. It's something so beautiful. Your castle in the Jannah has four doors. Four doors, brother. Your castle in the Jannah have four doors. What do you want more? Come on. Don't you want to have a, a castle with four doors? Okay, why we have four doors? You enter from one door. No way. I will enter from one door. I cannot enter from the four doors at the same time. That's amazing. And one door or one gate, your servants from... All kind of servants would come and enter to help you. You have 70,000 servants. 70,000 servants. All of them, they are boys. This is Islam. 70,000 little boy in the heaven to serve you. Slavery of boys in heaven. Abuse of children. Did he say boys? It's not me who said the word boys. 70,000 little boys. What a sick cult. So this is what they are dreaming of. Penis, boys, wine. And this is heaven. When I was doing the seminar in the church, and those people start laughing, especially with my comment, and I say, stop. <laughs> I remember once there was a guy, he's really big, he's kind of heavy, heavy duty. So he, you know, he starts sweating like crazy and then he failed. The chairs are made from plastic. All the chairs are plastic. It was a stadium, you know, for basketball because a lot of people came. So uh, he failed. When he, when he failed, he opened his hands to balance himself. And then all those who they are in the left and the right, they fell down with him. There was a guy, he was a principal in a school, and they told me before I before he showed up, we invited him to come today, and he, you know, uh, I, I, we hope that he will, he will listen to you because he is thinking to convert to Islam. Imagine he is a principal of a school, 
And then when he when when he come, I told them give me a sign which one is he. You know I do not know. So one of the brothers he he walk behind him and he point his finger at his head to tell me this is the guy. So when I was talking, uh, I start asking him a question. You know to see what his response for what he say. And then he said, but this is not what they told me about Islam. I said, well, I'm, as you see, I'm showing you videos. It's not me who's saying that. This is the sheikhs. This is their TV. And I'm just playing the video for you. And then the more videos we play, the more the guy, he said, I can't believe I was going to convert to this religion. They lied to me. When he saw the story of Solomon and the ant and the hood and the women who have no hair in her legs and all the madness, the guy, he could not believe that he was going to convert to such a garbage cult. We can explain to you, we can share with you, but we cannot give you brain. The brain is yours. I cannot give you a brain. If a person decides to be a stupid, this is his business. Anyway, guys, it's time for me to go. It's already five hours, 29 minutes. It's really, uh, there's two things I need to go. First, I need to go to meet Allah in the in, in a room, you know it. And uh, because I'm the only one is talking, I can't even take a break to, to make some tea or anything. And uh, I think we have more than enough. Feel free to download my videos, cut them pieces, share them with your friends. And now notice what the Muslims, they will make comment. The Muslims, they never answer the question we are posting in every video we make. Why Allah did kill Muhammad? The Quran says that every human being die only by the permission of Allah. So why Muhammad, Allah did not save him. Yet, Jesus, according to Quran, was saved by Allah. Why Allah killed Muhammad? Because as long as the Muslims believe that everyone who die is a decree from Allah. That means Muhammad he die by the decree of Allah. Which means Allah is the one who ordered the death of Muhammad. It's a decree. No human will die. Unless it's Allah decree. How you die, it's Allah who decide. When you die, it's Allah who decide. So when Muhammad he died by poison, it was Allah who decide that Muhammad will be killed by poison. But this woman who killed him by poison, she said to Muhammad, I am putting poison for you to examine if you are a prophet. If you are a prophet, your God, Allah, will save you. A Muslim guy, he just texted me, and he gave me some Quran. Obviously, you are practicing too much muta. And that's why your mouth is very filthy, like your prophet. We don't want to hear you anyway, with your filthy mouth. Coward. When Muhammad, he says, I find that I am dying and my altar is being cut off. And then we find the Quran saying, if Muhammad is lying, Allah will cut his artery. That confirmed that Muhammad again is a fraud. So the death of Muhammad proving to us that Muhammad is absolutely a fraud. 
and then watch. You will see the Muslims when they post in the comment. They will not talk about how Muhammad died. They will not answer why the Quran says something about if Muhammad is lying, Allah will cut his artery. And the hadith confirmed that this is how he died. And as long as the Quran confirmed that the, everyone is dying because it's a destiny by Allah, it's a decree by Allah, that's mean Muhammad, he died as a decree from Allah. And Allah is the one who killed him. The question why? Not only that, the Quran, when the Quran decree says the decree of death, not only about Muhammad, Muslims, they claim that Muhammad kids, they killed too, or died by poison. And the poison here, some Shia, they say that Aisha, she is the one who poisoned her kids. However, the general population of the Muslim, they say that they die in a normal death. Either way, it was Allah who decided their destiny to die. Why? Why? So Muhammad's death is destiny from Allah. The woman she put in poison for Muhammad, it was destiny from Allah. The woman she is quoting the death of Muhammad and the suffering of Muhammad was destiny from Allah. Why Allah is doing this to Muhammad? I challenge any Muslim to tell me, what is the reason? When somebody die by cancer or anything, the Muslim, they start making mockery of him, as what happened to our brother, ex-Muslim, Nabil Qurashi. If death is a penalty in Islam, and you make mockery of the one who die by cause of illness or anything, Muhammad, his kids, even his own family, his grandchildren, all they were slaughtered. And as long all death happened by the permission of Allah, why Allah ordered the death of Muhammad family, Muhammad himself, children of Muhammad, his grandsons? A question no Muslim can answer. In the same time, the Abdul, they flood us saying, that Jesus was saved by Allah. So Jesus was saved by Allah. Muhammad, his children, his grandsons, all die by the order of Allah. The one who killed Muhammad is Allah. How much Allah he hate Muhammad. And not to forget to mention that this woman, when she said, if your God save you, that's mean you're a prophet. And then Muhammad, he says, Allah will not allow you. And then we find that Muhammad himself, he confess that he is dying because of the poison. Islam is a mockery. And Muhammad, he died in a death he deserve. But we are happy for him. He will be routing in hellfire. And judgment they will come and the messiah he will be the judge and muhammad will get more of what he deserve this is just the beginning this is just the beginning thank you all for being here may the lord bless you all and i hope more muslims will leave islam and we prayed for this lady poor lady to leave this cult and trust me, a tsunami is coming. And more and more Muhammadan are going to leave like tsunami. God bless you and see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. We prove it every day. Oh, that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Our youth are full of doubt. And there is Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Your child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate.
in America, this is the last thing, 23% are becoming apostates of Muslims, American born That's Muslims. Right. Yeah. Well, one of the more shocking things that I have experienced over the course of those years is are the number of young boys and girls aged between 13 to 18 who have openly declared their apostasy to me. Do you know how many Muslims became atheists today? Polls conducted in the Muslim world reveal that up to 5% of Muslims in some of the most conservative Muslim countries in the world are closet atheists. Addressing their parents, their family, and telling them, I don't believe in Allah. I don't believe that Muhammad وسلم, was a messenger of Allah. I don't believe that the Quran is a book of revelation. It is happening. It is happening continuously. It is going to become an avalanche, a tsunami that is going to hit our community in such a way that we will have very difficult time standing it will knock us over